Long time no chat. Wait. Huh? Yeah. Oh, yeah, she's got her claws stretched out. There's her paws stretched out. No, oh, I didn't mean to do that. Oops. Let's go a little harder. Oh, back uh, hey, Wasim. Sick Fox, Chris, Ryoko, Virulence. Spilo, yell the devs to not touch Tracer. We'll see. Barashi, hello. Did you get a new camera? Yes. I can see how tired I am. Shut up. Friendless. You're so in focus. Thanks, Mice. You can really see just how beautiful of a person I am. Wait. Where the new ste aiming set up? Tongue. I don't think they quite had the same impression that I had in my mind. Uh, Vrashi, where the new streaming setup? We're working on it. I've got a new camera. Uh, I have a stream deck. Bro, Vrashi, I actually set up the stream deck. Finally. He's, uh, Spilo is locked in, yeah. Kiss this man. Yeah. Exactly. Wait, no, I didn't mean, uh, what the heck, dude? Going and going and going and going and go, go. Yes. We're getting it done. And then, and then also we're going to be doing some soundproofing and then we're going to be doing uh, some mic adjustments and then we're going to be doing maybe some green screening and there's some website work being done as well and there's some subscriber motivation stuff being done as well and we worked on Project Amari as well. There's so many things, guys. So many things. You guys have no idea. We made our announcement here. Maybe I should do an announcement on YouTube today because I actually think today's discussion will be fun. Maybe I'll do a, a YouTube stream announcement. I don't usually do this, but every now and then something saucy comes up. You know what I'm saying? You guys get what I'm saying? What? Ah, uh, no, because the temperature last time was perfect. Can you do it fresh? Yeah, it was perfect. No, you didn't. That was not a compliment. It was an accident. Wait, Rick. Solving tank discussion. Discussion happening today. At twitch.tv slash spilo. Um, help me solve tank. You're the reason Overwatch lost. I don't give a rip. <clears throat> do, do I look like I care about Team Overwatch? Although I do have, we do have to prepare a, a VOD review for them. Maybe we'll prep our VOD review at some point in the stream. Because they, they, we, we have to figure out how we need to be playing versus Winston. I think there's some confusion there. Hey, Paul. Raking dirt in a garden at work, but I'm going to listen and stream. That sounds actually so nice. I'm not going to lie. I'm jealous. Raking garden. He's raking dirt in a garden at work. That sounds so nice. Seriously. From a little surgery for teeth. Nice. Hope it went okay. Did he get a new webcam? Yes. Is this in relation to Flat's tweet? Kind of, sort of. Bro, I've, been, I've spent the last three showers thinking about this and more. Let's put it that way. Because I, I realized there's like some discussion about like 
I want to put this like to bed. You know what I'm saying? Hey, tap. Shower thoughts. Yes. What flat tweet? It was the one about tanks or whatever. But yeah, I, I think there needs to be some thought about like how we do things. What happens when it gets eight hours of sleep? When what gets eight hours of sleep? Just give every tank a jump in a bubble. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to get into the discussion just yet, but there's, there, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna dig pretty juicy. You know what I'm saying? Thanks, Manila. I appreciate it. I told you guys like with the whole Patreon drive, we're like, I'm not just buying like a second house. You know what I'm saying? I'm still poor as dirt, especially after stuff. But we're like we're we're investing. You're not allowed to eat. Sorry. No. 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 No food. Sorry. No. 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 Man up. Man up. No. 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 Gonna have to keep riding the horse. Wait. Okay. We have a replay review. Bob review first. Yes. Okay. We are about to get started. Uh, take me out to the park game. Hey, hey, the crowd. We get the form pulled up here too as well. Wait, guys, I watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. You guys see this? Yeah! 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 Yeah, 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 yeah. Look, 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 look. It's magic. <laughs> anyway. So, yeah, that's uh, that's what we're doing today. Okay. Uh, I don't know what rank this is. Taro, what rank are you? What rank are you at currently? I would like to know what rank we're at. We'll get our replay code pulled up here. I've had, to be clear, I've had that stream deck since literally August. <laughs> I got it for, I got it for Chris, or uh, Christmas. <laughs> my birthday from my, pa- my very generous Patreon. So they got like this big box and I just, you know, wait, that's not the right also. Uh, Panther, thank you for the sub. To let streamer know way too dank. Absolutely. Way too dank is the most sincere compliment. You guys got it. So, it's, it's you fuel my anger. Like something you watch your video, serious coaching video. Didn't expect you could be so crazy. Always crazy. The default is crazy around here. Whiskey Jack, thank you for the sub. I like the name. Um, yeah, we're currently okay. So the rank is bronze two. Let's take a look at this form here, and uh, we'll get we'll get the work here. Christopher's watching it currently on his three stream streak. That's the most client thing I've ever read in my Twitch chat ever. Um, okay, and, that, and, that, and that's saying something. Uh, what do you hope to get out of the session? Do you want to set basics in stone? Do you get faster and smart thinking in and out of thinking the enemy? Mindset, what is risk? And what is the safe play? I want to make a frag video for fun. Nice. Okay, sounds good. Um, we play Sojourn, uh, Bastion, Reaper, Widow, May. So it sounds like a mostly hit scan, kind of different, a lot of different hit scan characters. How often, how long do you play Overwatch? Around 35 games per week. Okay, so around an hour and a half per week or per day. Um, uh, and then I topped my season, season two performance in Overwatch 1. In Overwatch 1, I peaked in gold two. Uh, I might want to step it up after that. What do you feel is holding you back from improving risky heroes mechanics? Too often not playing safe and risking situations un- unnecessarily. Um, okay, sounds good, sounds good. Okay, so... Uh, Tara, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to just drop them in, in, in Discord DMs or, or go over. We're going to take a quick look. So I think it's really important when we when we talk about a low rank player. There's like three things that we got to talk about. We got to talk about your peripherals. We got to talk about your in game feedback, right? And then we got to talk about your approach to practice. And I think that that's definitely the case for everybody, but it's especially important for bronze. So let's let's pull up a bronze checklist. All right, maybe we'll make this into a separate video. I'll put a little bit more effort into it. Um, but for re- really quick right now, let's just take a quick bronze checklist here. Okay, let me use my uh, uh, thing here. There. Okay, bronze checklist, okay? And you guys might learn something from this, even if you're plat, you know, gold, silver, whatever. Bronze checklist, all right? First things first, peripherals. Peripherals. This is the setup, 
what you're playing with. You want to aim for 60 frames per second plus on your monitor. You want to aim for under 150 latency, whatever your internet situation is. Okay. Um, you want to aim for, let's actually make, uh, let's, let's do this. This will be cleaner here. You want to aim for 60 plus FES. You want to aim for under 150 latency. Uh, you want to aim for, and by the way, with this, check your monitor slash Overwatch settings. Check YouTube. So there's a lot of great videos out there on optimal Overwatch 2 settings on YouTube. They're going to do a much better job than anything I can do in the same amount of time. Highly recommend checking those out. Very, very easy. Uh, aim for 100, under 150 latency. That's going to be exclusively like internet. And then the last one is going to be your sensitivity. And I would say aim for anywhere, aim for, let's say, 3 to 8K EDPI. Now, EDPI is DPI, this, DPI, mouse DPI times in-game sensitivity. And what that means is essentially, if I pull up my Logitech really quick here, Logitech G Hub here. Danny Boo, thank you for the sub. That's very generous of you. Uh, okay, so let me let me pull up. So I have like all these fancy new mouses have like mouse software, right? My mouse software and I have my sensitivity set to 1600, and, and yours will likely have some sort of software or at least some way to check it. You can you can Google online how to find your sensitivity. And what this means is that when I'm not in Overwatch, my mouse moves like this, right? If I were to lower this way down, it would be really hard to move my mouse. If I were to move it way up, I would just sneeze and my mouse would just go flying across the thing. So you multiply that by your in-game sensitivity. You're going to go into options, you're going to go into controls, and you're going to multiply that by this. So it's 2% here. So two, just don't for about, for disregard the percent, just two times the 1600, which means we have 3200 eDPI. Cheers, freaking tasty. That's, I would say, on the lower end of eDPI, which means it takes more, I move, I aim way more with my arm. A little bit more precise, but it's hard to turn around. Some people might have less mouse pad space. You see, I have a mouse pad space like yay big, right? That's, that's really, really good, right? If you only have a mouse pad space, like let's say this big, you might have to go with a higher sensitivity. So like, let's say I have 1600 D DPI or a DPI in my mouse. Maybe I need to go like five sensitivity, which means I can move around a lot easier. Maybe I'm playing a character like Genji where I want to be able to turn around faster. And so I, I play closer to the 8,000, but I really encourage you to not be higher than 8,000. Uh, because you're going to lose a lot of precision. You're going to lose a little bit of consistency. And crucially, uh, there's a lot of like mixed information. I don't think we have the full hard facts just yet, but there's a lot of uh, questions about whether having a really high sensitivity and exclusively wrist aiming, if that's healthy for your wrist or not. Uh, we don't know for sure. We could probably guess it's probably not super healthy. There's not a lot of science, full concrete science out there right now, but I would, it's better generally to aim for something a little bit lower. And yeah, the average sensitivity is going to be, I would say the optimal sensitivity would probably be anywhere from around four to 5K uh, eDPI. So I would do my research on that. Uh, don't worry about like, oh, what's the best sensitivity for this here? What's the best sensitivity for that here? It, it, if it's somewhere in this range, it's good enough. There are pro players that play on this full spectrum. It doesn't really matter all that much. Uh, thoughts on multiple senses, not a fan. I don't like it. I, I think it's, there are a couple of players that have done well with that, but the, the average, most pro, the average non-pro player is going to do better from having the same sensitivity for every character. Now, I understand that like, you might want a lower sensitivity for something like a Zenyatta and Ana where you don't have to move your mouse as much and you might want a higher sensitivity for a Genji. But even then, I would still probably try to keep the same sensitivity. Uh, but yeah, that's that. this is our peripherals, right? This is your surrounding, like your in game. Okay, so bronze checklist right there. Okay, next thing here is practice structure, all right? I actually had a really great question from Commander X just, was it? I think it was two days ago. Yeah. He was like, dude, where's your video on practice structure? Uh, I have a lot of videos that kind of surround practice structure, but here's the TLDR. Okay. First things first, warm up, warm up. You need to warm up. The reason why you warm up is so that you don't go into game and think, oh no, I'm not mechanically ready. All you need to do to warm up. It has never been easier in the year of our Lord, 2024 to warm up. Because all you have to freaking do is either go into unranked deathmatch, right? You're going to go into your unranked deathmatch. You're going to go into custom games. You're going to search all games and you're going to go try hard free for all if you're a European server, right? Very, very good here. You might get your butt smoked though. So that might be something to, to aim towards when you're closer to platter diamond. Um, 
And, or you're going to go into import code and you're going to type Vaxta. And you're going to go to Vaxta. You're going to pick the character that you're playing or one of the characters that you're playing. And you're going to go, and like let's say it's Cassidy, and you're going to go start. And then you're going to make sure that the movement is at a level that's okay for you. So for you, um, Tar, uh, or Tara, excuse me, I don't know why I said Tar. I would probably start with very easy. And you're going to interact key while looking at very easy. And you're just going to go... And you're gonna go up, uh, okay. And you're gonna go, and that's all you're gonna do, okay? You're gonna do this, and you know how long you're gonna do this? I have so many people that are like, "Oh, I hate warming up." But you're, by the way, crank it up as you go. And I have so many people that are like, "I don't warm up." And the first reason why people don't warm up is it takes too long and they get bored. Guys, this is boring, okay? This is boring. You could turn this audio down. You can listen to a podcast. You could put lipstick on a pig all you want, but it's still a pig. It's still boring, okay? It's boring. So all you need to do, though, is if you're warming up, is you only need three or four minutes. If I shoot a couple hundred times, that's going to be so much more than I would do in a quick play game. And then when I get into my ranked game, I'm actually warm. I also like to change up the hitboxes I'm going for. Like, like that was a lot of Iliari. There's some Baptiste. There's some Sojourn. Always aim for the head, even if you're bad like me, because it's good practice. You want to, you and you want to try and aim with your mouse. Not so. I'm, I'm strafing kind of back and forth, but I, I was, I don't want to get lazy with my aim. Heck, you could even practice uh, flicks. So I go here and I'm like, oop, no. Oop, no. Oop, no. I'm going for the widow. Oop, no. And this is really hard, especially because they're strafing. Right? There it is. There's one, right? Practice that. Do a couple of those. Base of the TLDR is be in here until that timer in the top left says around 240 or 300 seconds. And then you're done. Then you're done. You're warmed up. You're warmed up. Some people will need longer. Some people don't need as much time, but you're warmed up, okay? So then we're going to go back to our thing here. You're going to get into game, all right? You're going to get into game. You're going to warm up three to five minutes in Vaxta or an unranked deathmatch or deathmatch. We'll just say deathmatch because it could be uh, the tryhard deathmatch as well. Uh, and then you're going to play ranked. Ranked with a specific goal. Now, you notice I said goal. You're going to go into that game with one goal in mind, a very specific goal, whether it's playing more cover or adjusting your cooldown usage or scouting or checking your team's positioning or, or, or whatever. And you're going to work at that. You're going to tunnel vision. You ready for this one? I'm going to use some key phrases here. You're going to tunnel vision on that goal and autopilot the other aspects of your gameplay. Okay? You got you know what I'm saying? Tunnel vision, good. Autopilot, also good. But you got to make sure that you're using it appropriately. So I'm gonna tunnel vision on my cover usage and autopilot everything else, okay? You're gonna do that. Then you're gonna finish the ranked game. Then take a break during cues. One minute, walk around. One minute, cues over, game's over, you're mad, you're excited, whatever. Or you're, okay, whatever, get up, walk around. One minute, 30 seconds. Jump into queue, 30 seconds. Don't don't jump into Vaxta again. Don't do your replay code again until you've walked on for a minute to go back and do it again. Aim for, I don't know, if you're bronze, aim for one hour of focused practice. Two to four games. Do this three to five days per week with One to two heroes to start. And there you go. There's your, there's your, there's your two bronze checklists. We've actually combined two in the, uh, into one here. Now, there's one more thing I want to talk about, okay? A lot of you guys are probably like only one to two heroes. Yes. But if your career profile doesn't have look at my career profile let's just let's go all modes uh time plate okay i want you guys to look at this six hours six hours eight hours nine hours nine hours right there's not there's there's like a decent amount of hours all the way through here right now the key thing here is if your career profile has heroes that have zero hours on them 
you need to get that number up to three, four, or five. Here's why. I don't think you can have a complete understanding of a game if you don't at least have a surface level understanding of what every character does. You get what I'm saying? So I'm not, I don't think that you should play a lot of characters, but I do think it is helpful to be familiar with a little bit of everything, at least initially. You could play those characters in quick play. It doesn't really matter. But I do think it's a good for a player new to the game, or even, if, even not new to the game, to have a general surface level understanding of all characters. Then... When you're actually training and ranked, you're not playing a lot of characters. You're playing one or two. Now, this is the last thing I'll say. It doesn't have to stay the same characters all the time. You could change these characters depending every week, every month, whatever. I would generally prefer you guys to play the same one or two characters every month until you started to improve. Uh, But if you get bored, if a character has a patch and you don't like what they did with the character, it's fine. It's called a dynamic curable. You could change it depending on the situation. So like uh, maybe you didn't, you wanted to play Winston, but when Malga was released, it was impossible to play Winston. Okay, practice your Sigma. Then Malga's nerfed. Okay, practice your Winston. I think it's good to aim for a smaller hero pool. And this is even applicable to higher ranks as well, though I think in higher ranks, you want to expand this a little bit bigger. Um, but yeah, this is a good general idea. Would you recommend playing solo? Yes, yes. I actually have a video in the works right now discussing about whether you should solo queue or stack. Uh, But generally, yes, solo queue. Here's the deal there is that solo queue is generally the the, the safer play. What is a friend's (laughs) nice spoody? Okay, but this is the bronze checklist. You need to to check these things off. Like you need to make sure that you're doing these things. If this is a little bit too much to ask, that's okay. I don't, you don't necessarily need to do all these things to be successful, but you should try once, maybe one per week. Like for you, uh, Tara, you might be like, okay, I need to fix my sensitivity this week. And then maybe in a couple of weeks, I'll make sure that I'm warming up consistently. And then a couple of weeks, I forgot the T here. Uh, in a couple of weeks, I'm going to make sure that I'm, you know, taking my breaks during cues. Just build your uh, skills one at a time. But this is really, really important. I know we spend a lot of time in this, but most of the time with low to mid rank players, and even higher rank players, a lot of the problems are not necessarily in-game. I think that's just, it's good etiquette, no matter what you're doing, to always check to see uh, how are my how is my ranked training? Could I improve the way that I'm training the game? Most people that I work with, even the mistakes that they're making in-game are a result of something that they're doing outside of the game or the way that they're approaching the game. Is a 1v1 custom game mode good for warmps? It's okay. Uh, obviously, you know, you are playing, like, kind of playing the rainbow in there. Like, you're not really playing one character. But what makes the uh, 1v1 arena a good warm-up is that it's fun, and so it makes you want to do it. So it's not optimal, but it, it is more optimal than it should be because it's fun. And because it's fun, it makes you want to do it, right? So it's not bad. It's not bad. Okay. Your practice methods apply to other games? Yes, I, I 100%. 100%. This, is a, this kind of stuff matters, you know? I played Osu to learn mouse mechanics. Yeah, that could work as well. I think especially if you're new to first-person shooters, then doing aim trainers, Osu's, uh, I think uh, Kovacs, things like that, aim labs can be, can be definitely helpful. I just wouldn't too put too much time into it. Okay, so let's take a look at our gameplay here. So with Sojourn, the, the fun... The fundamentals of DPS is play cover, shoot enemies from an off angle, and make sure that you're fighting as five, as a close to a group of as a team as possible. So we need to be using our weapon here. This is okay, but there's only one small error here. I like the fact that we're on an off angle here. You see, my t- some of my teammates are here, and I'm here. I like this. This is not a bad, this is a little bit aggressive, but I think this is pretty good. But we're a little too far from cover. And because of that, when we get shot, we actually don't have time to get back to cover before we die. Now, I will also say as well, we're standing perfectly still, which is not always a good idea in Overwatch. You generally want to be strafing at least a little bit most of the time. Uh, This is bronze too. Uh, But I think the big thing here is just be a little bit close to cover. Am I proud of the Overwatched games? Overwatched, you mean? Yeah, I think the guy's definitely improved. 
in such a short period of time as well. It was it was honestly very impressive. Good shots. Good try with the rail. You almost got it. Now the question you have to ask yourself every single time, I don't care what DPS character that you're playing, is let me make sure I got my chat pulled up here. Okay, is where can I play? What off angle can I play with cover? Oh, cheers, Palto. Good to see you, mate. Right now, we don't have cover. So should we go here? Should I go here? Should I have slid up to this off angle here, right? Should you rotate to here? Should I rotate to here? It's kind of a trick question because the answer is any of them. Honestly, I think any of them would have been fine. I think this would have been okay. I think this off angle over here would have been okay. I think taking this high ground here would have also been okay. It's really up to you. Just make that choice and find cover. Take an off angle and find cover. Because right now, we're kind of on an off angle, not really, sort of. Like, our Doomfist is on the back line, so this is kind of... But but we're standing in the open here, which means there's a higher chance of us taking unnecessary damage or maybe even dying. Nice shots. Good angle here and great use of cover here. So we slid to cover. Really, really good. Just don't walk forward when you're shooting. You kind of notice that that is an issue? There's a lot of walking forward while we're shooting. Okay. That's pretty good mouse control. You guys see that right there? That's pretty darn good tracking for a bronze player. Check this out. So we're on an off angle. We are, again, leaving our cover to walk forward. We noticed that a lot. But check this out. I mean, this looks like better than my tracking. Um, I think we have a little bit of a habit as well. I'm not sure if it's console, honestly. I mean, but still, it's, it's still good. It's still good. It's still good aim here, you know, whether it's console or not. Um, one thing you got to be keeping in mind in is I've seen twice now our railgun into this disruptor shot. Railgun into disruptor shot. That's a good combo sometimes, but you got to be you got to be obviously careful that you don't build up the habit of just disruptor shotting every single railgun because obviously then stuff like this happens. Like I actually see this. I've seen this from GM players before, uh, where they have that muscle memory of just immediately uh, disruptor shotting after rail, and, and you got to be really careful with it. A little bit of chaos going on here. We got to find cover. You see, again, you're pressing forward. Hit, hit teach. This right here is a great angle to play. Just don't walk forward. You walking forward walks you into the mine, which is kind of funny. But even if the mine wasn't there, it still would be a bad position to be. Disruptor shot there was good. Uh, let's take a look at this here. Again, don't necessarily find that corner. Find that cover. Tuck this way. You might die either way. You certainly could have slid out the safety, but at, at least you would be near cover. Okay, rolling back. One of the things that makes Sojourn great is that you can play those off angles, and then as fights get messy, you can just run away. Good use of cover here. Really good use of cover. Good ult. Careful about pressing W again. You notice that? So, like, that's kind of what forced your slide. Is you walked forward here, but you don't need to walk forward. You could do the exact same thing here. Then you have to slide out. Right? Close. No, we're going to do director's take after this. I assume that was a misclick. Find cover, find cover. Yeah, we need to do a better job finding cover here. Yeah, no spoilers, no spoilers. Okay, so let's stick with our Sojourn. I think we played Bastion and then Reaper, and I think that's it. Yeah, so let's let's take some notes with Sojourn. So Sojourn, big thing. Find cover and an off angle. And then be careful about pressing W or pressing forward when we're shooting when you're shooting and then practice placing disruptor shot exactly where you want it. It's a very important point. Okay. 
What do you got to think about listening to music while playing? I don't think it's, I don't, I, I, it's not good. It's just, it's not good. It's, 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 it, it will make you miss sound cues. It will turn your attention away from other things. I, I did it. I used to do it a lot when I was warming up or practicing my mechanics. But yeah, aside from that, that's about it. Yeah. I mean, I know players that have done it and gotten away with it, but it's, it's objectively a disadvantage. I like the soft angle here. I also like the cover that we have here. You could use that grenade, though. That grenade is really powerful. Find a squishy and let it go. Ooh, ca careful. Good use of cover. Not so good use of cover. Be careful. Gonna go back to high. That's fine. Be decisive. You know, take the angle that you want here. It's the same thing with Sojourn. You're kind of being indecisive here. You could have stayed here and peeked out of here, or you could have taken the time to go back top. You need to make the decision, though. With zero sound on listening to anime openings, I believe it. Good. Yeah, this does look a little bit like uh, the console aim assist. Press your turret. Good. Good. Good use of cover right here. This cover is brilliant. This is what saved you, right? Like this is what saved you. It allowed you to push back and force the soldier to chase you further. You don't do less damage with cover. You do the exact same amount of damage. Nice grenade as well. This is good. This is good. This is good. I like the angle that we were on. We had cover. We turned, we did a good job with our cooldowns. This was, this was good. Tara, do you have any questions so far? Good. Good stuff. Again, be a little bit careful about your cover usage here. I appreciate you pushing forward there, but just be very careful. Not yet? Okay. Hey, Salty. All right, let's take a look at our ultimate here. Yeah, Tara, are you console? I believe, I believe I'm pretty sure this is console here. Um, this is okay. I, I think this is a little bit unfortunate. I'll say one thing here. I, by the way, nice use of the grenade tech. Don't use your turret when people are super far away. Uh, your turret is is really not very high damage. Okay, on glass pad. No, no, we're he's on. We're on. We're on PC here. Yeah, on glass pad as well. Okay. Uh, so actually, the track is pretty impressive. Uh, okay. Yeah. Turret is really bad at long range. Turret is really, really bad at long range. It's a lot of bullets, but not a lot of damage. So I think that's your problem here, is then you use turret, and then obviously the nade, whatever, right? And then now you kind of want your turret, because I see this, and I'm like, oh, frick, we need turret right now. Not just because of the damage here, but remember your turret also gives you uh, damage reduction as well. And this is where you need the damage reduction. So maybe that's a point to kind of to take a look at here. Um, I don't really like this ultimate here because it's just your Doomfist right now. I, 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 well, is it? Yeah, it is just your Doomfist. I think one thing that one of the really important skills for you is to try and do a little bit of math check before you fight here. Um, like right now, it's like if I see my Doomfist by himself, I'm not using my ultimate. I'm waiting for more of my team to come back. I think in bronze, it's really normal for people to kind of stagger in one at a time. But like if most of your team is in spawn, wait for your team. I agree, Jay. And then again here, this turret might be fine, but you haven't really seen anybody and you've seen people far away. So it might not also be fine. Yeah, this was just a little bit of a lack of cover, turning from too far away and then honestly wasting your ultimate when people were too far away or when there weren't enough teammates there. Okay, so let's make some Bastion notes. I wanted to slow down their movement. Okay, makes sense. I, I, but turret is too important of a cooldown to use to slow down people. Turret is everything for Bastion. So using it to kind of slow them down is like a, a good idea, but it's too valuable. It's like using a $100 bill to start a fire, right? So let, let's take some notes with Bastion. Bastion, make sure you use turret in medium close ranges. Don't waste it. And that's mostly it. Same thing with Sojourn. Uh, cover off angle. 
Yeah, exactly. Okay, let's uh, move on to some Reaper here. Now, Reaper is the same thing. The difference between Bastion, Sojourn, and Reaper is Bastion, Sojourn have more range. They can threaten people from further away. Reaper, you need to be taking off angles, but you, you need to get close off angles. So like, let's say your team is ready to fight and they will be soon. You'd want to TP here. This would be way too close for a Sojourn, not too close for a Reaper. You might want to sneak up and flank here. This would be way too close for a Sojourn or a Bastion, but it's not too close for a Reaper. Nice shots, nice shots. Wow, like, th like, this is PC, guys. This is bronze PC. This, this, check out this flick. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. All right, we could use our teleport if we want to here. So this is okay, but I want you to, I want you to think sneakier. You have teleport here, teleport to here. If you're gonna walk forward, walk forward with your tank and then split off late here. Because what Reaper does is Reaper will, it will do something aggressive and then he will wraith to safety. I want you to use your teleport in your feet <laughs> to walk to a flank and then use your wraith form, your shift, to go back to safety. So you go in with your feet and teleport out with your wraith. That's kind of the cycle that you want here. Whereas you're going in aggressively here with your wraith, and so now you're probably just going to be dead. Right? Bam. <laughs> Cheers, Bolden Treaty. You guys help me out with the uh, the love letter to Spyro. Or, oh, Spy <laughs> love letter to Spyro. Love letter to Overwatch. All right, so think sneaky. What angle am I going to take here? Yeah, it's good. Get him. You're better. Your mechanics are way better. Nice. Hey, look the way. Yo, we'll look at the director's take in like five-ish minutes. Okay. This fight's getting a little messy. I was going to skip forward, but it all sounds like we're fighting here. So what are we wraithing here? I don't think you realized that you had the sound barrier. I think you were nervous about the mines, but you had sound barrier. You were okay. And this is too far away. You can't play Reaper at this range. Oh, he's hiding. I mean, you're just better. That's okay. Good use of Wraith. Maybe finish him off. Well, that was close. That was close. The only thing there is just maybe kind of mismanaging your Wraith there when you didn't need it. These fights are messy. All right, we're here. Let's go. Stay on her. Stay on her. See, so right now, you need to just shoot what's close. You just need to shoot what's close. Like right now, she's close. Shoot shoot what's close. I think you're trying too hard to find the right target, but with Reaper, the right target is the closest target. You could shoot tanks, you could shoot DPS, you could shoot supports. As long as you're on an off angle or on a flank and you're close, that's all that matters. That's all that matters. Here it comes. Risky, risky. I, I agree. Good. Sneaky, sneaky, sneaky. Get up close to be sneaky. Get up close to be sneaky. If I could tell two things to Reaper players, that would be it. Close, sneak. And then if I had one more, I'd say Wraith out. Revan with socks. Thanks for the sub. I like the name. You had Wraith. You didn't Wraith. You missed the shots. That's it. That's just a, that's just a mechanics check. Don't worry about it. Don't avoid Moyers. You just beat Moyers. Okay, here we go. We're going to pop off. Risky, risky, but good. Get him. You're better. We've seen you. Okay. Overtime push, guys. I don't know, guys. This looks like a, we might have a successful overtime push here. I'm not going to lie. So it's tricky with overtime here. But remember, the goal is still to set up an off angle. And right now, you're stacked with your team. This might be where you teleport underneath here. This might be where you teleport up top and hide here. And if there's somebody already on cart, you know, go for it. Because you are close here, but you're, you're standing with the rest of your team, which means there's no element of surprise here. Terra might have the Reaper gene. Yes. Yeah, that's true, Aodine. Ooh, we we're going. 
Now you're a little by yourself, so I'd be careful, but I like that idea. That was good. That was good. Sure. All right, be sneaky again. Where do you want to go? Be sneaky, be sneaky, be sneaky, be sneaky. Come on, come on. Be sneaky, be sneaky, be sneaky, be sneaky. You have four people on cart. You don't need you here. Be set up. Set up. Come on, come on. Come on, I know you're thinking about it. You're thinking about it. Don't, you tend to wraith. That's the weird. It's the second time you've wraithed during sound barrier. It's odd. You have a lot of HP. I'm not sure, but first thing you need to be setting up here. You really need to be setting up here. So take the time to set up that flank. You know, come up through here, walk up through here, wrap, teleport over here and sneak up behind them this way. You know, you want to get up close with this Reaper and you want to be sneaky. This is fine. Probably didn't need to wraith that, but that's okay. Got to stay in. Now, now we have to do have to stay in cart because we're the only ones here. Nice. Good. Good mechanics. Wraith was good there. You definitely needed that. Find your squishy. Find him. Find him. Find him. Yeah. Yeah, maybe too scared of a C9. I mean, it, it's understandable. I think being scared of a C9 is, you know, an understandable fear. Okay. Clearing mines, it's okay. Can be a little bit risky, but it's okay. Good shots. He's getting double pocketed. No! Oh, that's so unfortunate. Okay. That's okay. We, we got time to come back. We got time to come back. We got time to come back. Teleport, teleport, teleport. Nice. Good, 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 good. I might even wraith here again just to get back faster. Good, good, good. This is the right way to go too. All right, chat. Do we win? I feel like we win here because knowing bronze, the enemy team is just going to continue to stagger. Oh, but we have to kill ball and, and we've not done a very good job at that. Huge shots. Never mind. Ball just killed himself. Ball just killed himself. I was concerned about ball, but ball just killed himself. So we're good. <laughs> oh, man. Nice. Yeah, I did not consider that. Okay, Reaper. Set up. Be sneaky. And. And. Set up. Short angles. Wraith out when you need to. And that's it. Any questions, Tara? Sweaty buttocks? What? Yes. That was nice. Mechanics were good. Not so good was general awareness of what's happening around you. And I think your understanding of the, some of the characters that you're playing, cover usage, stuff like that. I, I'm eating buns, so I, I'll be ready for matcha soonish. All right. What? Oh, I guess so, yeah. Um, yeah, I like having game audio on really quietly just for like the overtime sound, but I don't think it's that big of a deal. I think if I would have been stronger in the beginning, there would not have been room for comeback. I mean, yeah, yeah, for sure. I think every game, there's going to be something that you could have done better for sure. That goes without saying. Every player. But just again, worry about practicing one of these things at a time, maybe one per day, whatever. Uh, don't even worry about mastering the skill. Just improve it, right? I think it's easy to feel like I need to improve and fix the problem before I move on, but that's not how problems are fixed. You know, it's not like you fill one bucket and you fill the next. Like the buckets leak, there's different challenges, there are different skills, people get bored. You need to try and develop the skills one at a time, but you don't ever, you develop, you don't fix the skill, right? Just a little bit at a time. I think people had disabled the music because of the, uh, I mean, I, I disabled it because I was getting copyright stuff from the Cowboy Bebop. <clears throat> and yeah, if it puts pressure on you for last fight, then yeah, you can disable it. It never really bothers me, but if you're, you know, a fragile, you know, whatever, I get it. Not everyone can be as mentally tough and wise and perfect as myself. The game was kind of fair, but I have issues too to beat Widow Smurfs. Yeah, for sure.
it will always be difficult uh, to 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 play um, into a widow smurf. But you know, you got to worry about what you got to worry about. Okay, that was all. Tara, if you have any questions, you can always message me anytime. Good luck with your practice, mate. And uh, yeah, make sure that you check off that bronze checklist thing. All right, chat. I'm gonna eat, and then we'll take a look at this director's take. I guess we can just do some just some chat time, and then we'll take a look at this director's take, and then we will uh, do the the tank solving tank discussion, which I'm really excited for. I, I've been taking notes and everything. You're very welcome, Tara. Watch the love letter video. I mean, you guys haven't watched that 17 times already. My ad revenue, boys. If you're not falling asleep, my video is on repeat from seven different devices. You're not a real fan. We've had this conversation before. What do you think about AI? I'm not educated enough to have an opinion, to be honest. Trying to book a coaching session, but it says the time conflicts. I'm not sure why it would be doing that. There might not be a slot available. That, that's odd, Matt, after dark. If you keep having any issue, just message me in Discord or send me a screenshot. Little Alex Dawson's watch the solving tank video. I don't know. He did follow me on Twitter, though. That was exciting. Uh, when is next meeting with Ryan? You'll have to add me to the call. Uh, I don't know. Ask Ryan. Hey, Mari. What tweet, Teach? I didn't see it. Link it. Mm. Favorite mythic skim? I don't know. I mean, Genji's pretty good, obviously. I think Hanzo's a little underrated. I think Junker Queen's also pretty good. Oh. Probably Eclipse. I don't know. I didn't I didn't I don't always check the responses to my tweets, honestly. Do you think your Overwatch mechanics will finally be good now that your eyesight won't be in your way? Hashtag comedy. Thank you, Teach. You are you are not a real human being. This guy says hashtag comedy to you at LAN. What do you do? What do you do? Did they win? Did they win? Did the Hawks win or did they lose? Oh, the Kir yeah, the Kiriko one is really good too. Actually, the skim. Um, question, do you... What, seven hours of sleep a day and no Overwatch? Or, honestly, no Overwatch. I hate to be that guy, but probably no Overwatch. Yeah, directors take after food. Yeah, I'm halfway done. Sorry, guys. I haven't, I haven't eaten for like six, seven hours. No, six hours. What's up, number blue? You lost? Well, there you go. Never do it again. You were on a date? That's unfortunate. I don't know, Ri Ryoko. I don't know. He was a bad mojo. Oh, for the losing the game. That's smart. Here's the real Sigma male move. Go out on a date with a girl. Buy a lottery ticket. If you don't win $5 million, don't, go out, don't ask her out again. Rinse and repeat. Then, if you go out and date with a girl, and you do win $5 million from the lottery ticket, 
You don't want to split the money. You don't want the whole marriage thing. Yeah. Let, dump her anyway. The key thing is just to keep dating girls and dumping them. That's, that's the life strategy. I don't really know what the end goal is, but it's good. Is that how I got married? No. The whole point is to not get married. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Or, 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 here's the other thing. Don't go on a date, just buy the lottery ticket. Rinse and repeat. We call that the Alabama degenerate strategy. The end goal is $5 million, yep. Why are both, why is both Gabe and Ryan in my Twitch chat? That is concerning. And why did Apollify donate one bit? Thank you for the bit, Apollify. What? What do you want? What do you want? What do you guys want? Gabe, Ryan, what do you want? What do you mean, what's wrong with your left eye? There's nothing wrong with your left eye. Oh yeah, my camera does look nice. <clears throat> no, you don't, you don't want butt pics. Nope. Pepper, they're asking for butt pics. Pepper's on the phone. Oh no. Whoops. <clears throat> Imagine calling your mother and then your mother in the background hearing or your mother-in-law hearing in the background. But they're asking for butt pics. <clears throat> That's kind of where we're at right now. <clears throat> Let's see them cheeks. Uh, you'll have to wait. <clears throat> you'll have to wait. The closest thing I have to like butt pics would be would be the rap video. Oh, oh, you guys, okay, you guys want butt pics? You guys want butt pics? <clears throat> the only reason I'm showing you guys this is because this is this is something that so many of you guys probably have missed out on. First off, can we just admire this thumbnail? This is not intentional butt pics, but it's the closest thing I have to it. Have you guys seen this? Oh, you guys have no idea. Then we'll do the director's take. <clears throat> you guys have no idea. Hey guys, it's your boy Spyla. I am indeed the greatest rapper of all time. And this is the greatest rap of all time. Let me know what you think in the comments, although I really don't care, and enjoy. Roadhog mains, man, they all insane. No aim, no brain, yeah, you're all the same. Speaking the brainless, if you know what I'm saying, you know the bastion folks. They never stop playing around on my team. Don't do nothing but feed. Don't you ever ask for nothing, cause you're nothing to me. I thought bots like Bastion were supposed to be smart. So how come every time I look, I see you stuck in the car? Well, you may be dumb, but at least you're not evil. Like some crackhead witch with orbs too lethal. Every time she makes a poor flank or a split, all your moya remains. Yeah, you ain't it. Thinking the trash, yeah, matter of fact. Man, the worst type of people, they always play rap. And they junk and they play, and they junk inside. You'll need to touch some grass, dudes, man. Go outside. Mercy players, oh gosh. Big mouth hog wash. If wanting was a game, they'd win every contest. That sweet supports was very old and kind. And I see you, Ryan, standing way in the back. Chuck them to yourself and whisper in facts Yeah, you think you're great, yeah, you think you're swag But everybody knows you're just a pin Like you're punching bag and nobody's safe The dick smiling when now to play Some are just gonna hack a waste It's been through when Jack and Nomus is bad It's back in the back, just keep missing Crap and the widow means go away You'll make my star decay Oh dear I got a mate on me, I'm begging you to swap Please, please, no please. 
fear yeah, life's a breeze when you cannot freeze yeah. Shut up, Winston, smart ain't from Princeton But the only thing I wanna see is the cage it fits in No, oh, so wise, what a great logician All that brain died, but you're still the position Now some of y'all may be thinking that you're winning Cause I haven't brought your hero up while I'm spitting Some of y'all's heroes just aren't with shucks Because River, Arusa, Doofus, suck Another follow one trick on my team Well, that's just great, please pardon the scream Ash will snap a trash and bridge it, cast on love for that. The kid you love to stay from me and even to your filthy whips. Your junker queen, you think your top your head is empty. The muscles fuck the sigma fans, you think you're nuts, but your big men's a geezer clutch. Here we go with a delightful quirk. Your entire personality is that you're a jerk. Hansa would like to have a word with you if he could form a sentence beyond him. <laughs> If you think it's smooth, then you're wrong. A gaze upon a waste of turns baggy pants, you but pop don't got a chance. So weak, a single peak brings on doom. Find your inner peace in the spawn room. Lucy, oh, oh, oh. Lucy, oh, oh, blows. Only thing you know is losing, oh, oh, no. And not could we forget your grumpy remind you're only a fool. Cares even remotely about you. Uh huh. Torben Sim, what a delightful pair. With a degenerate mind that eats their hair. And while we're on the topic of people not worth much, hey, echo players, your heroes are crutch. Hey, the tracer with balls, standing pretty tall, moving pretty fast, don't do nothing at all. Just sit here looking at y'all, looking pretty quick, but you don't get a pass. In a race for a pick, you're finishing last. last. So, did for the longest time you gave free SR. Now you're not OP, nobody cares who you are. On the topic of strength, how's a Russian friend? So you may be top, but I can't see past her regardless. Yes, Russ is already sick, time for 76. But man, he's just not, he's just, he's just not worth the effort. It, you're simultaneously the hero of choice for support means who can't aim and switch. Sweaty Call of Duty morons with the IQ of room temperature mold. If you look up boring, boomer, and bore in the dictionary, you're the first thing that comes up in every single one. I'm out. <clears throat> no, boor, boor, boor. Boor. Let me spell it. Boor. Boor. And there you go. Boring, boomer, and boor. Yeah. Anyway. There's a record. <laughs> okay. Directors, take time. Um... Take a look. And then we'll do our uh, our overwatching. Crying real tears. Well, yeah, you guys asked for it. I guess you guys did not ask for it. But I'm going to pretend that you asked for it. Wait, I remembered last time. Wait, what was it? We don't do full screen. We do this. Also, you guys have problems. You guys, every single one of you individually, do you know how many direct messages? I took one week off from streaming. Do you know how many direct messages I answered yesterday? Guess. I, I, I don't know why I'm going to guess and just tell you. I, I, I'm, I answered, I think, 72 or 73. Actually unreal. Like individual people, not not like, oh, you know, like there were 72 different messages. No, 72, 73 people, people. Why do you think I counted them? Because I'm like, ah, you know? And so obviously, like, if I'm going to suffer, at least I'm going to get, you know, some trivia out of it. I think I got to start hating my fans more. Yeah. Okay, let's take a look at this. Been a while since my last blog. Uh, let's get right into it. First off, I'm thrilled that you have welcomed our new hero to the lineup. Well, I'm unsure if they like to munch on rocks. <laughs> uh, the top pick here in quick play, shocker. Uh, uh, Valeria Rodriguez. Um, we're pretty much pretty happy where Venture Lena from a balanced perspective during the trial and it gave us confidence that we could release early into competitive. Nice. I, nice. Okay. Mm. We're citing how early we're feeling they're in a suitable state. Obviously, we need to make changes to the kit. We're going to listen closely to your thoughts on how Ventures doing the game. Um, 
needing to make many changes. We've heard a lot of feedback like tempo, momentum, venture brings, being able to engage and disengage in fights. Look at a few things for sure. First, slightly shifting some of the burst damage from the drill dash and clobber into damage over time. Ooh. So that's interesting. So they're, they're basically, so now we keep in mind, this is the same development team that did the whole season nine thing around reducing burst damage, right? Through one shots and rails and so on. This seems to be, uh, this seems to be in consistency with that. So the combos will still be important. Hey, Fi, it's going well, man. Um, but it's not going to be quite as instantaneous. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. It's hard to really know exactly like how potent the character is going to be when because the problem right now is that basically we had a lot of like pros and quick play, and pros and quick play are always going to dominate. So we'll have to wait and see how much of a nerf this is because this is going to be a nerf. All right. Next, we're looking to reduce the vertical knockback of tectonic shock. So that would be the ultimate, I believe. Alongside these minor changes of virtue, we have a number of heroes to continue this. Uh, okay, so that's pretty much it. Interesting, interesting. Um, I, I still wish that like some of the things that I asked for in my venture video in terms of like some of the quality of life stuff, like with the ultimate, the timer of the burrow, I think I would have loved that to have happened, but I, I'm willing to, I think these are these are all relatively fair, I guess. Uh, I think the ultimates really aren't a function. Well, like it feels really awkward. Uh, but yeah, we'll, we'll have to see. Yeah, the ultimate is odd. It it's thematic, but it doesn't. It's I think the weakest part of the kit. Um, prolonged DPS passive with DOTs. I don't think the DPS pat the DOT is going to be long enough. I'm expecting a DOT of like anywhere from like half a second to one second would be my guess. It's just giving more time for the counter the burst is my ex uh, expectation. Okay. Starting with our tanks, we're upping the impact of Junker Queen's Carnage and Reinhardt's Earth Shatter. Nice. We've been asking for this since before, since the Season 9 leaked notes. Since the Season 9 leaked notes, before Season 9 even went live, we've been asking for this. Nice. Uh, good stuff. Both abilities cut through better in Season 9 world. The biggest tank changes come in Season 10 over Wrecking Ball. The great improvements to Wrecking Ball's grappling hook, including a reduced cooldown, when not entering ramming speed and the ability to retract himself. Okay, so including a reduced cooldown when not entering fireball is basically what this is. So li listen carefully, listen carefully. This is what this means. If you mess up your grapple, you're going to get it back faster, right? But there's something even more important happening here. There's something even more important happening here. Check this out. If I'm playing Wrecking Ball and I go to grapple and I get slept or I go to grapple and I get hacked, do you understand what I'm saying? Do you understand what I'm saying? Because this crowd control is not as useful or as important when you were got fireball speed, right? But if I'm not fireballed yet, it, you get, like right there, if I got slept or hacked or hooked or whatever, I get my grapple uh, back faster. So we've introduced an indirect form of counterplay into crowd control. Especially chained crowd control. Interesting. Interesting. Uh, okay. Uh, ability to retract himself where grapple is attached by holding down primary fire or jump. So pulling yourself in, I don't know if that means that you can fireball with that or if you just pull yourself up for easier staging. It'll be interesting to toy with that. That's, that's, that's interesting. There are also some changes to adaptive shields. Now after using adaptive shields, you can reactivate the transfer up to 300 over health, cap at 75 over health per ally. That could be really strong, especially with flankers, but that's interesting. Um, this change to give Ragnarok more capable of protecting his allies and initiating engagements to find creatures of what we see in tanks. Sure. I, I'm willing to suspend my disbelief. This is definitely an interesting change. Basically, it means that whatever Wrecking Ball presses the adaptive shields, you can press it again to transfer some of this health to allies around him. So you could peel with Wrecking Ball, but also you could you can go in with Wrecking Ball. You can, like, if you're in aggressively with a DPS, like, that DPS getting 75 health is huge. So we'll have to wait and see. There's dynamics with this. Like that's the key thing. Is like is, the question is always: Is there two ways of using this? 
And the answer is yes, then I'm okay with it. At least I'm okay with testing it. The difference between this and shout, though, is that it takes away the H, uh, HP. Because it says transfer. So you t- it hurts the wrecking ball. Right? Might be broken. Might still be, you, you might be right. Still might be too strong, but it takes the HP away from ball. It makes the ball weaker. So you have to decide about what you're going to use it or not. Like if you're going with the wrecking ball and they're all hard focusing you, you use it as normal. But if you're using, if you're, if you're like uh, going in with somebody else, like, I don't know, like, this is interesting. This is interesting. Yes, Spoonie. Really interesting. Really interesting. Could be really strong, could be really broken. uh, But I think it's from a fundamental strategy standpoint is probably not fundamentally flawed. Again, just because it's dynamic. Because you can always tweak this more or make Wrecking Ball weaker elsewhere, right? Because you have choice here. Exactly, Red Knight. Yep. Yeah, it's a lot. It's very interesting. Okay, for our damage heroes, there'll be some light adjustments for Summer and Tracer. Summer's virus is taking a small hint of damage over time amount since the ability now has more upfront burst. I'm okay with this. I'm okay with this. This is also relevant, more relevant since the DPS passive as well, because that meant that means a little bit. Um, well, maybe not. Maybe it's maybe it's just the amount of time, to, amount of damage total. Maybe it's not the time. Um, but yeah, this is this is this is fine. Um, I wish they'd done more tweaks to EMP instead of the Sombra virus, but uh, it's fine. Um, Trish has been quite strong since season nine. She's one of the least surgeons, but her gift flows right. With some slight changes for her right now to make her slightly more punishable, acquire more precision. Uh, that's that's fine. That's fine. This is fine. I, the, the fact that they specifically said light changes, I'm okay with. I have been quietly fighting tooth and nail for some unnamed content creators that were that were complaining about Tracer constantly, uh, pick rate, win rate, whatever. And I and, and and there was a lot of complaining. And I I am basically saying, hey, you're yeah, Tracer probably a little bit overtuned right now. But name a DPS character that is more punishable in the wrong hands. You know, like they name a DPS that you'd rather be meta. I don't even think I'd rather Genji to be meta, to be honest with you. Um, I think she has the most counterplay options. She is also the easy, most catable, has the high, healthiest skill curve. She's the healthiest for lower ranks. Um, I mean, what what else if not Tracer? So I think that I think that they're having more variety is not necessarily a bad thing if the pick rate is too high. And, and light changes to mix things up are fine. Um, but I will always be at least an extent to a Tracer apologist. So uh, some of the the complaining and some of the content creator thing was like a little bit too much. And I'm like, yo, chill, guys, like chill. So I'm I'm okay with this. Like light changes is, is not bad. She's probably a little bit overtuned. Yeah. Okay. Moving on to support, we're looking at shifts in power from Moira, Lucio, and Idiari. That means taking power from one part of the kit and funneling it into another to somewhat maintain the overall power of the hero. Idiari, for example, is receiving a slight nerf to her primary tire recover time, um, giving more power back to her secondary fire heal. I, I, uh, uh, I don't like this. I don't like this. I, I, this is odd. This is the least fun aspect of Idiari is the heal. And it's already like the highest healing per second in the game. I think non-ultimate, right? I don't, I don't understand this change. And also this is what made EDRE feel a little bit better is the fact that you can actually fire more often. Odd, very odd, very odd change here. Very odd change. I don't agree with this one at all. I don't agree with this one at all. I, I, I don't, I don't think this is like it's not like, oh, we need her primary fire to be fun. Like, I, I get it. She's a very spammy hero. I coached Idiari today for the first time in a long time. And it was so boring. Like, it's just, it's the same crap. She's such a boring character. But I think, like, doing tweaks like these are kind of meaningless, right? This isn't even a good tweak, right? Uh, I don't know what would be a good tweak, but this isn't, uh, definitely not the the right click heal here. Um, this encourages weave a little bit more, but the thing with Iliari is he she doesn't weave. Like all this does, it makes it a lot harder to punish an Iliari pocketing another DPS, which was already hard to do with the 105 healing per second. I, I don't, I don't. When do you play with your tank and weave in damage and healing? That's not what Iliari does really well. 
That's not Pylon's biggest value. And the damage output is too bad in the tank trade. Yeah, Zenyatta is just a better Iliari, like Iliari. Like it's, it's honestly hard to compare Iliari to anybody. She feels more like a weird soldier, a slow soldier 76, if that makes any sense. Like you have self-sustain and like range pressure, and that's pretty much your job. But unlike soldier 76, she doesn't really have the burst or the ability to rotate. She's she's bad. Like I I I think she's a pretty rough, and I would honestly be okay with them just leaving her for now and and then tweaking her later. Um, this is uh, to be clear, by the way, this is a nerf. This is a nerf. So I'm actually protect protecting Idiari here by complaining about this. This is a nerf. This is this is going to be this is way more important than this, and it's also a much bigger percentage nerf as well. So, as an Idiari hater a bias towards hating Iliari. I'm like, yay, Iliari is worse. But she's, this is a nerf. This is a significant nerf. Um, so, and this is huge. I mean, that's 0.2 to 0.25. That's a 25% increase in recovery time. Uh, video why I don't like Iliari? I mean, it's pretty much just, all she does is hold an angle and shoot. That's literally all she does. There's no real dynamic with her movement. Her pylon is one of the most basic support cooldowns in the game. And it's relatively easy to manage. Her ultimate is a really cool, I, I like her ultimate, but that's about the only cool part. There's not a lot of playmaking. She's relatively static. Uh, and she's one of the first Overwatch 2 characters where her mobility feels really bad. Like, I don't like Malga and Ramatra, but there's their mobility is okay. Like, like the whole concept of like Nemesis form speed and Malga's slam is like at least the char- other problems of the character, but the mobility functions, right? Sojourn, Kiriko, Jungle Queen all have functional mobility. Maybe Life Hero, not as much. Uh, but she feels clunky. Like, she feels slow and, and, and her shift doesn't move you very fast or very quickly. She doesn't go very high. Um, so, uh, yeah, I, I'm not a big fan. Um, she kind of just does one thing, which is hold an off angle and poke out. She, does, she doesn't have that sort of dynamic and movement that a lot of the other supports have. Uh, okay, there's some light buffs to life weavers can evaluate where healthy power can be injected into his kit. And this is a great sentence. Love that, love that. Healthy power can be injected into his kit. I respect that a lot. That's a great way of phrasing it. Um, I'm curious to see what they have to do with Moira, uh, but uh, we don't really know. So we'll, we'll wait and see. Yeah, the shift booping is is interesting. That's true. Okay, developer update this morning. Here's no one to be locked. Okay, yeah. So it's, it's an interesting battle pass thing. I think the, the whole ball stuff was really cool. Uh, the venture stuff was reasonable. The Reinhardt Junker Queen stuff was good. Was good. The Tracer Sombra stuff was reasonable. Uh, also, I guess we didn't really learn about Moira Lucio either, so we'll have to wait and see about those. Um, yeah. Yeah, we'll have to see. Another update tomorrow? Wait, really? Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. To, to, we're talking about the competitive and updates, making a safe and inclusive. Okay, cool. Cool. So maybe we'll have a video, uh, a YouTube video on it later in the week. So let me actually make a note of that. Dev update. a video on it kind of going breaking down this stuff so this is like i would say overall positive i guess the thing that kind of concerns me a little bit is the um i would have liked to have seen a little bit more with the quality of life adventure maybe just a little bit more and i'm a little bit concerned about like the edre stuff but i don't think it's like that big of a deal it's more about me this kind of stuff i'm always getting hung up on it because it's the spirit of the change it's not the impact of the change the impact of this change is going to be an overall net nerf to a character i don't like and a relatively meaningless healing buff um it's just the concept of them doing that is like annoying to me, but uh, it's not like the end of the world here. Are we fixing tank bozo? Yes. Yes. Yeah, I don't know what they're going to do with Lucio, honestly. I-, I would imagine probably something to do with maybe his damage or something. Um, it-, it does feel like he's benefited still a lot from the projectile changes. But I hope they don't do too much. It's it's been nice to actually see Lucio being played and ranked. You know, I'm not, I honestly don't know what they'll do with Lucio. I honestly don't know. No, I I think it's I think it's more about like they'll probably do more to make it. Um, I, this could be uh, reporting, improving the reporting experience. It could be the endorsement. It could be streamer mode. It could be. I mean, there's so many things that they could be doing here. Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, let's fix Hank. 
I'm going to share with you guys my notepad here. Just for a brief second. I've got some mad notes I've been taking, y'all. Reduce speed. I, I don't think they're going to be able to reduce speed without killing the character. Because I think in Overwatch 2, there's a lot more movement demanded. Okay, so I've got all these notes here. And yeah, we're about to yap. But the reason I want to do this on stream is not just because ha ha funny stream content, but because whenever I have these discussions, I feel a lot more confident when I have feedback. So I want you guys to like give me your thoughts on these things. Let me know if you disagree, where you agree. Because we, I don't, we have a problem. I don't think it's like the end of the world problem. Let me move this over. But it's something that we've been struggling with. And, and if any of you guys say, oh, it's been struggling with since 5v5, uh, yes and no. Yes and no. And I'll give you my thoughts here. So let's fix tank. Let me actually change my... I'm getting smart, guys. I'm changing my stream title. There you go. Okay. So let's start with this. What is a tank? What do you guys think a tank is? What is a tank? What does it mean to tank? Now, some of you guys are like, oh yeah, we're spiral viewers. We know what a tank is. Like you create space and you do threat and stuff. But like, what, seriously, what makes a tank unique compared to the, because that's the real question is like, don't tell me what tank does. Tell me what tank does that's unique compared to other characters in the Overwatch cast. Frontline, initiator and spear of the push, suffering to juice out the wazoo and bust. Okay, we're, I should have answered and read that one. Tempo controller, space. We have a higher IQ, initiator, fat health part. Yeah. It, but do you see how, like, this is not a, not a super easy question to answer, especially in Overwatch 2. Back in Overwatch 1, it was you created space, or at least that was our current understanding. But not only as the game has changed, but also as our understanding as the game has changed, we kind of understand that, like, really every character has a responsibility to create space. In other words, every character needs to be a threat or supporting threats to control and create space. And what does space mean? It means getting, like, let's say I want to take this high ground here. How do I take this high ground when there's a soldier on it? Well, I'm going to jump onto the soldier, force him to back up, so that now that my soldier can take the high ground. But also, why am I relying on my tank? What if I'm the soldier? What if I'm the soldier? Can I take a flank to contest this guy and maybe win the duel and force him out so that he's not shooting my team, right? What if I'm Kiriko? Well, I have freaking wall climb, right? I should be looking to help heal my team and then shoot the soldier myself or make him look at me so at least he's not shooting my my uh, vulnerable people on me, right? So to me, okay, this is where I think the definition of tank is. Let me get my notes here. This is where I think the, tank, the definition of, of tank is I think the definition of a tank is somebody that creates space for longer and does so generally in closer ranges. So what's the difference between a tracer on your backline and a wrecking ball on a backline? Tank just generally has longer pressure cycles. Well, there are some exceptions, but for the most part, like an Arissa can flank, but an Arissa is going to live and she's going to live and she's going to live. So what ends up happening is you create space, you create pressure, but you do so for longer cycles. You guys get what I'm saying? And there's one other thing that we talked about, right? What, how many poke heroes do we have in the tank role? Seriously, think about it. Compared to Widowmaker and Ana and Zenyatta and freaking Symmetra, right? Not, not You guys are saying one, but really think about it even from Cygnus' perspective. I can't even hit that second robot. Look at that. I can't even reach him. I can't even reach him. Bro, I can reach this guy easier with a freaking mercy pistol than I can with Sigma. So you have like Malga who can kind of do some work here, but the, obviously it's awkward. You have Arissa, which has no fall off, but she has such a massive hitbox you get smoked, so it's situationally, right? Ram kind of, but he's obviously a slower moving projectile. There's no hit scan here. Where am I looking for, right? But really, we don't have a lot of tanks that, that, that do very well. And even the tanks that do, Malga, Orisa, and Ram, the irony is these are all brawl tanks. These are more effective in closer ranges. So we really don't have a raw, hard poke tank. The closest thing we ever had to it was our Overwatch 1 Orisa because she could shield, then shoot. But even then, she was significantly weaker at range. They're all, they're all stronger up close. So why is that the case? Why is that the case? And there's some psychology behind this, all right? I want you guys to ride with me here, all right? 
It's a really important psychology here. When we talk about psychology, we are attracted either in a negative or a positive. We are, our tension is taken by proximity, all right? That's one of the reasons why Widowmaker is such a problem because she's so lethal, but she doesn't get close to you. So she doesn't feel lethal. I mean, it's, it's hardwired in us as human beings outside of the video game. Proximity is threat. Proximity is threat. We look at proxim, uh, things that are close, right? So Tank's job is to create space, bait attention, and to do so for long periods of time. And why tanks are so good at it in comparison to DPS is that in general, tanks get close to you. And this is loud. And this has your attention. And the hard part that I sometimes have as a coach is training people to sometimes know when a tank isn't a threat, even when the tank is close. So what ends up happening is tanks exploit the psychology of things that are close are more threatening. And so what ends up happening is this is this is let me give you guys an example. A Winston jumps your backline and a tracer's on the flank. What is easier to look at? The Winston that jumps you as a support or the tracer that's also shooting you in the back at the same time? It's way easier. And and even even unless you're you specifically trained yourself to mark tracer, right? You're looking at Winston. Yeah, no, I, I, you're, you're giving me the smart answer, but people are gonna look at they're gonna look at Winston, right? Why? Because he's close, he's up in your face, he's loud, he's big, and so that's how tanks work. Is tanks create threat like DPS, but they're louder about it, and they can do it for longer. And so what ends up happening is they create space more effectively and more consistently than DPS because of that psychology. You understand what I'm saying? Now the reason why this is important. The reason why this is important is because that psychology is a double-edged sword. Do you understand? Because what, when's the last time that you guys have played Winston? How did that situation go? What did the enemy team do? What did they swap to? What did they do when you jumped in? Bastion, Reaper, Malga. And even if they don't counter swap you, everybody looks at you. Everybody looks at you. And that's great for your team, but it can feel not super rewarding for you, especially if you're not going into it with the right mindset. So the problem is, and what makes tanks effective in Overwatch 2 is the fact that they're big, loud, and generally shorter range. What makes tanks not super fun is their effectiveness. So chat, the irony here is that tanks are very powerful in Overwatch 2. The tank role, is the, the, the single tank is probably the most powerful position in professional Overwatch in, any, in your rank game, probably. But it doesn't feel like it because your value is not through necessarily being the hot, flashy guy. It's about securing as many, uh, much attention and as many resources and living to tell the tale. You understand? How many of you guys have heard that tank is super weak in Overwatch 2? Tank is super weak. No, it's not. It's, if anything, even more important and powerful than it was in Overwatch 1. It just doesn't feel like it. And so our problem is, is how much of that tank identity are we willing to, to not compromise, but tune down, make tanks less big, less up in front of your face, more flexible with how they can play around that attention versus do we want to leave tank versus without destroying the what makes tank unique, which is the ability to close distances and be able to stay in your face for long periods of time. You see, the thing is, is if you guys have, how many of you guys ever played an MMO? How many of you guys ever played an MMO before? All right. Or, 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 right? All right. So what does a tank do in an MMO, in a PVE environment? What does a tank do? Right. Meat shield, right? Just stand there. And how do you make, how, how do they do that? They have taunts, shouts, uh, different ways of forcing the, the enemies to shoot them. Right, uh, the 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 the, enemy, the robot enemies are too stupid to really understand who the real threat is. So you have taunts to force the enemies to attack you. Right, that's that's how it works. Right, you you hold aggro. A lot of tanks in MMO, a lot of MMOs that I played anyway, don't really do any damage at all. So they force because they can force uh, attention um, through abilities. Like they force you to shoot them. The problem in PvP though is that there's no such thing as a taunt. You can't force people to shoot you. People are smart. You're gonna be like ah. So what you have to do is you actually have to have tanks that are actually lethal. 
Like you actually have to have tanks that actually do real significant damage because you can't force a real person to shoot you. So how do they do that? And again, that goes back to my point earlier is they have to be threatening. Kokuja, thank you for the sub. They have to be threatening and they have to get close. I, you guys ready for you, this? This shouldn't be a hot take, but this might be food for thought. There should never, ever be a spam tank. Never. It should not happen. This should never, ever, in the future of Overwatch 2, there, will, there should never be a poke tank, a truly poke tank. Sigma, Orisa, Brawl, Pokey, mid-range hybrids, that's fine, but there should never be a poke tank. What's a spam tank? Great idea. Seriously, think about it. What is a poke tank? Sigma's not a poke tank. Sigma works in poke comps because he has slightly more range. But again, this is the limit of my range, guys. Compare that to the entire DPS cast. The entire DPS cast, besides Reaper, and every single one of these characters has more potential to do damage at range than Sigma. You, how do you make a poke tank? It would just be a DPS. So there should never be any attempt to make a poke tank because it's a, it's a, it's an, uh, it's a oxymoron. You can't have a poke tank. You can have a tank that functions more in the mid range, but you can't have a long range tank. It's not possible. It's not possible. So what we need to do is we need to ask ourselves how much of our tanking experience do we want to be direct threat and the ability to counterplay things? And how much of it do we want to be smoke and mirrors where we, you leverage the psychology of being big and in your face and learn to absorb? Now, we know that the Overwatch 2 developers have a tankiness and damage spectrum, all right? That's what the, uh, they said to me in person, where they're trying to find the balance between the tankiness and damage spectrum. Generally, higher damage tanks, generally not quite as tanky. Um, and I think that's something that we can kind of keep in mind. What about May? So let's let's go through our notes here. Um, let's talk about six v six and five v five. All right. Let's just let's just let's talk about that really quickly, and we're, we're in the, and so we can actually shelve that conversation. Okay. Because the the problem with tanking in Overwatch two is that it used to be that you could you had two people that pulled the attention to space creators so that not every cooldown, not every DPS and support could look at you. And so that took a little bit of mutual attention away from the other tank, right? You put all the attention on the Orisa, the Roadhog is going to punish you. So you look at the Roadhog a little bit and then those cooldowns are split here, okay? The problem with Overwatch 2 is now that all of those cooldowns, even if there are, is a little bit less CC in Overwatch 2, is now going on the one tank because it's psychologically attractive, okay? Here's the thing, though, that, that, that is not discussed near enough is that curse comes with a blessing. This is how Overwatch 1 used to function. You had your main tank, you had your off tank controlling an off angle, and then you maybe had a DPS and a support, and this is kind of like how it looked here, right? The problem with this is if your team blew here and you're... You know, your tank isn't controlling the space or whatever, and you want to, you're a support or a DPS looking to take proactivity, you got completely stuffed by the enemy off tank constantly. Off tanks in Overwatch 2 denied your ability to take space. They controlled a lane, and because they were a tank and you were a DPS, you couldn't poke it out. Now, you because the tank pools were a little bit lower. You could poke them out and eventually win that lane, but it was difficult and it took time. The advantage of one tank is that these lanes are more clear because wherever the tank is, even if it's not on main, if they're there, this lane is not clear. There's more flexibility for both DPS and support players, and there's more responsibility to be able to take space. And that's why I like 5v5. But we do need to solve the fact that there are now two tanks worth of cooldowns going on one tank. You are not forced to frontline in 5v5. That is a complete myth. I've heard that from a lot of uh, high-ranked players. Those high-ranked players are idiots, and they do not understand the game of Overwatch. I'm being a little facetious here, but it's true. That is a complete myth. Um, so you have to, as a tank in solo, you have to choose what lane do you want to shut down? 
what angle, what space do you want to shut down? Do I want to control space on main? Do I want to control space on left? Where's my matchup? And so on. So what we have to do here is we have to go, okay, so now there's two tanks worth of cooldowns going into one tank, all right? How do we allow this tank to survive this attention without this person being an unstoppable wall of absolute murder? Because one of the criticisms that I've been hearing, and it's a fair criticism, is I've been pushing for more counterplay for the tank options. The problem is, is how do you give a tank counterplay options, mitigation options, without making it unstoppable? And I think that the answer has to be skill play. Like, you have to have skill play. The problem right now is that we have too many tanks that don't have any way of outplaying CC or crowd control. See, here's a hot take. I actually don't think a hero like Winston, I don't think his problem is crowd control. Why? Because he has the capability of outplaying it. It's a skill play. I don't think D.Va has a problem with crowd control either. There's skill play available. Zarya, not really. Skill play, right? Even Ryan, to an extent. The problem with the characters like Winston are more things like Bastion and, and, and characters where there's more easy direct value available. And the more there's more problem for characters like Roadhog, they don't have any counterplay at all. Right? So if you give Doom a way to get rid of CC, would that be a good idea? Yes. So if we gave, okay, hear me out, guys. If we gave Doomfist the capability of outplaying crowd control with skill, not just flat out invulnerability. We're not talking Ram Block. We're not talking Malga Cardiac. We're not talking Arisa Fortify. We'll talk about that in a little bit, all right? But if you gave Doomfist the ability to counterplay crowd control so that he was able to pose a threat without being immediately punished, you would take the edge off of the bad tank experience. So what would you do? So you give Doomfist the ability to counterplay crowd control. What do you do then now? What do you do then? I think you either need to make him less lethal or you need to turn down his raw survivability. You understand? We don't... The problem with Overwatch 2 tanks right now is that a lot of their survivability comes through their health pool. And not enough survivability comes through their ability to counterplay CC and burst damage. You understand what I'm saying? Ryan is a great example. I mean, guys, this guy has, how much does he HP does he have? On, I'm in the practice range, but how much, does he have like 700 HP? How much armor? I mean, half his HP in armor? It's, un, it's ridiculous. He has so much HP. But yeah, he could still die quickly. It's not an HP problem. It's he just doesn't have a consistent way of, and we'll talk about Ryan and my suggestions, but, but the thing, same thing with Doom. Like, do, do you think if we gave Doomfist the ability to outplay crowd control with skill, do you think that he, he could lose 25 HP? Do you think that he could lose some of the shields that he gets from using his abilities? Because he'd actually be able to allow to use his abilities. Do you think... Do you think Ryan's bigness is psychologically causing him to get focused? Yes, I do. Like with Hog, if he could cleanse himself, but he won't have 50% damage mitigation. Yeah, so the reason why we're talking about this is that even though tank does provide a lot of value right now, the problem is not the value, it's how the value feels. You guys have to like, one thing that I've learned the more I've coached and taught is you have to consider psychology. Again, I, 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 Tank is just as impactful, if, if certainly probably more impactful than it was in Overwatch 1. I, I don't care what anybody says. They're, they don't understand. Tank is extremely impactful. Being a solo tank means that you have the capability of pulling everybody's attention onto you and living if you play it well. It's just not always very fun. So we have to, ironically, take a little bit away potentially of Tank's impact and shift it to other roles, but make Tank feel more fun. So, with a character like Doomfist, or Wrecking Ball, or Roadhog, they need less raw survivability, indiscriminate survivability, that is 
super helpful. Like, let's think about Roadhog. You can't kill a Roadhog if you don't have CC. You, you, you can't do it. You don't, you're playing Moira and Lucio and Tra you can't kill them. You can't kill them. It doesn't happen, right? But all of a sudden you got a nade or a discord and they're dead. And then that's the problem is those extremes where if you don't have crowd control, you feel the HP that Roadhog has. But if you do have crowd control, you don't even feel the HP if you're playing the Roadhog. And that's the extremes that we have to address. And I, Samito, I saw somebody linked me something where he said something like, oh, well, we don't want all tanks to be homogenous. I, I, I respect Samito a lot, but I find that to be a lazy argument. I find that to be a lazy argument. Samito's idea is that in 6v6, we could have more extreme designs, just like there are in the DPS cast, because the second tank that you pick would help cover those weaknesses. For example, if I'm picking Roadhog, I'm very vulnerable to CC. But if I play Roadhog with Orisa, I now have a tank that's going to capitalize off of a lot of the cooldowns that are being saved for the Roadhog. Right? Right? You can have, have this uh, dynamic uh, hedged bet, essentially, where you can't all counterpick me as Winston because my D.Va will farm you. You get what I'm saying? And so Samito says that you're allowed to have more extreme designs when there's two of that design. Problem with that is that doesn't work in psychology. It might work at Samito's level. It definitely works in pro play. Although I, I think Jake makes a good argument that maybe some of those tank synergies leave no counterplay options available like Winston Zarya. Um, but... The problem is, is that's not realistic. The problem is that's not realistic. Let me give you guys an analogy. How many of you guys in, have done maybe some light work in investment? Nothing crazy, but if you, you guys familiar with investment? Are you guys familiar with diversification of your portfolio? You guys familiar with that term? What Diversification is essentially, essentially where you invest your money in something, but if that goes poorly, you have like a, a balance so that overall you're writing the market going up in theory, but you're not leaving yourself vulnerable to chance. A non-diversified portfolio is a gamble. It's just a gamble is what it is. If something goes badly, you lose all your money. If something goes great, you win all your money. And 66 tanking was a non-diversified portfolio because you were reliant off of the enemy team or your team making that investment decision with you. You guys ever played Age of Empires 2? In Age of Empires 2, Elephant, you could pick characters like this. This thing. It was really strong. Elephant, right? But it was really counterable, right? It was really counterable. You could, you'd have halberds and, and there were like monks and stuff countered it and so on. And it was a meat shield that forced people to counter it. That, this is Roadhog, okay? This is Roadhog. This is Roadhog, right? The problem is, is that if I'm playing the, the, <laughs> the elephant, when you're playing Rage of Empires 2, you're not playing the elephant. You're playing everybody. You're playing the entire cast. And so if they counter your elephant, it doesn't hurt your feelings to diversify your battlefield with some archers, let's say, to counter the halberdiers, or maybe some scouts to counter the monks, right? The problem is, is if you are the one playing the, the, the elephant, you're not happy about being the one that's taking the enemy team's attention. And going back to our diversification of our portfolio, you are trusting your teammates to hedge your bets for you. You understand? You're giving up your financial management of your portfolio and hoping that your teammates hedge their bets properly. You understand? Know like if I go Winston, I need somebody to hedge my bet with a Diva or a Zarya. Heck, even a Sigma, right? But what happens if they don't do what you need them to do? And that's the problem. That's the problem. Now you do benefit from having the attention split, but this is why 6v6 tanking was always a bit of a crapshoot. And the other problem is, is that saying that, oh, uh, extreme designs are more okay. What happens in Overwatch 2 when you have both Malga and Roadhog as your tanks? You have two extreme designs that are vulnerable to the same things. What happens if you have Zarya 
and Roadhog on Watchpoint and Gibraltar, you have two tanks that are vulnerable to the same things. What happens if you have Reinhardt and Orisa on Dorado? What happens if you have Winston and Wrecking Ball on Circuit Royale? And the list goes on. Now, I am bringing up worst case scenario here. My point being is that 66 is not, again, a magic pill. The difference between having that with one tank is that in our optimal 5v5 world with tanks that have been scaled to Overwatch 2 is that you have tank designs that have tools and the capability to bend and mold to what the map provides. And that you, you as a tank, you are responsible for your own performance. And don't give me the, all. oh, they're all homogenized. They're all homogenized. Sojourn is freaking fun to play. She's prop, she's, she's, her rail is probably too strong. Uh, and, and she's way better skilled than a lot of the other ones, but she's fun to play. Jungle Queen with her shout and her poke and her range is freaking fun to play. There are characters like Tracer who are flexible and fun to play. Genji, flexible, fun to play. Echo, flexible, fun to play, right? Um... And that's the thing. I would say the DPS is more difficult time as a result of five because they're forced to take more risky mechanical to do as in order to control space. Yes, but that's but see that's because that's because in sixty six in sixty six there was so much attention put on just shooting out the enemy tank from main or the off angle that you wanted to control. It was more maybe more re and rewarding in terms of ticky 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 but you didn't actually have as much impact. You just shot. Now you actually have the capability to make real plays. And I, and I, and I don't even know that there's always consistently, I understand what you're saying, Caffeine. I 100% I I understand, but there aren't always even necessarily three lanes. Um, so, Basically, my, my thought was 6v6, I don't want to get too sexy into 6v6 5v5 argument, is that 5v5, you have more uh, freedom as a support and DPS player to play make. Tank, 6v6 also had the problem of the incorrect tank synergy meant that you did not, you were trusting your teammates to hedge your bets appropriately. And then also having extreme tank designs. I just don't think extreme designs are healthy for the game, period. I don't think take extreme designs are healthy for the game, period. I just don't. I've never been an extreme design fan. Um, extreme designs are hard to balance and they don't function as well. I think if you look through a lot of Overwatch 1's problematic characters, and this is where I think I really disagree with Sumito, is that I think that like there's a lot of emphasis on like, oh, the extreme designs were okay because they split the attention, but extreme designs were really bad. Arissa extreme design, not very healthy for the game, right? Uh, Roadhog, extreme design, not very healthy for the game. Reaper, not healthy. Bastion, not healthy. Um, we could keep going down the list. Junkrat, not healthy. Uh, Symmetra, initial design, also not healthy. A lot of these short range, limited mobility characters, really, really not great for the game. Moira, limited design, not healthy. Mercy, in release brick, the anti-dive character, killed the game, right? Um, yeah. Okay, can we, can, we, can we stop about the D.Va soldier? There's no way that even in Overwatch 1, a D.Va win sta like stage anywhere near a soldier. Soldier gets destroyed. Um, that, that's not even an argument. But I also don't... So, regardless. Um, so, let's, let's talk about fixing... So, th th okay, this is my final thing, though. The reason why I'm so focused on 5v5 is because we're not going back. What we mean by extreme design here... Okay. So extreme design is a character that does one thing and does one thing really, really, really well. Right? One, two, you guys know what I'm talking about. Release, Brig, right? Mercy, Pocket, right? Widowmaker, Sniper, got it, right? You guys understand what I'm saying, right? So yeah, the attack defense heroes, right? And they learned pretty darn quickly that having that whole like extreme design character was fun because it was novel, but it did not age well the more and more and more the game was played.
right? And if you counter that, then it's no good. And we need to move past this whole idea of like, oh, well, if they counter and you wouldn't make or you just swap. That just is, that's just rough, man. What if you don't have the capability to swap? What if you're, you have a one trick? Like we, we're in a game where people are just not always going to want to swap. And don't tell me that we have to have homogenized characters. Genji, Tracer, Sojourn, Echo, Ash, I think, are all examples of characters that are not at all homogenous, but feel very different, very unique, and, and do have different strengths and weaknesses, but also have the diff capability of outplaying and working in different scenarios. Ash can work versus Brawl and dive and spam. Is she the best? No, but she can work. In what way is Sojourn? Sojourn is one dimensional. You guys have to understand when we talk about one dimensional, we're talking about like what is the character's range strengths, right? Is she close or is she long? Right? And it, it, she's kind of somewhere in between. Same thing with Ash. Same thing with Genji. Genji can hard flank, Genji can hold a soft angle. There's choices with how you can position and how you do things. It doesn't mean that there's the character is perfect in design at all, but the general play style, there's, there's the, how you position specifically. Okay? So, I don't agree with extremes in play style in that regard. Um, more decisions to make, right? I think venture, ventures, I think venture is great. Venture has a lot of choices. Uh, they're obviously relatively short to medium range, but you have to make constant choices about which offing. Like Venture is a great example of a healthy uh, short to mid-range character because of the amount of decisions that you have to do with how you position, with how you can have, how there's different ways to use your abilities. Like Venture gets screwed by crowd control, probably, but Venture also has ways of playing around the crowd control and baiting the crowd control. Um, uh, hey, to you guys, I would drop that and ask Spilo. Um, right now, we're kind of on a topic, man. I'm sorry. Would I define Doomfist in extreme design? Doomfist has... Doomfist, I would say no. I'd say Doomfist has aspects that are a little bit too one-dimensional. Like, for example, Power Block is really, really weak in certain situations and really strong in others. No worries, mate. No worries. Uh... But because he can function okay in brawl comps and spam comps and dive comps. He's okay. He's got enough mobility, short range potential, flanking potential. He can, he can function. I think Widow is an extreme DPS as well. And I think, um, yeah, Bara, for example, was an extreme DPS, but now she's less so. Iliari, yes, extreme. Iliari is one of my least favorite Overwatch 2 characters. <laughs> something better. You guys are harsh today. Caricatures. I mean, I feel like extreme describes it fairly well. Not polarizing. It's not emotional. It's not emotional. It's just, that's what they do. Niche. Yeah. Niche is a good one. Specialized. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. So the problem that I think a lot of people have when we talk about like 5v5 is that they will say, you know, we don't want to give tanks the ability to counterplay CC mitigation too much because we have things like this. And we have things like this. And we have things like this. But this is a little bit of an unintentional straw, straw man. Because this is not counterplay in any sort of strategic sense. And no, 5v5 does not force these things. Otherwise, characters like Junker Queen and Winston would not be able to function. Or Zarya would not be able to function. Now, you could argue in ranked, they're problematic here and there. Yeah, yeah, but they're, they're, they've had their moments, they're fine, and they do very well. So, the problem, niche is said niche. It's niche or niche. You could say it either way. Artifice, thank you for the sub. Yeah. The problem is, is that when you compare this counterplay... To this counterplay and this counterplay with, you know, this counterplay, it's leagues apart. There's vulnerability. And not only is there vulnerability, but you notice as well with what can Ramacha do while he's blocking? 
Nothing. It's not fun. There's no, there's no risk versus reward. It's not enjoyable. It's boring. Whereas a character like Sigma, every single cooldown requires choice. You only have so much shield and it goes on a cooldown. And you can use it for yourself. You can use it for on an off angle. You can use it to cut off healing. Even your shift has counterplay. And it's on a relatively, not I wouldn't say a long one, but it's on, like, it, 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 it can be used offensively to close the distance and to build HP for yourself. Even your accretion is something that you can use and can be very important to use to protect yourself. But you might be missing out on opportunities to use it offensively. The difference between Ram Block and Rhine Shield is that Rhine actually, like flashing shield is something that's actually worth doing. Flashing block is only about blocking damage. There's no actual nuance with how you use Ram Block. You're low, you use your Ram Block. Whereas Rhine Shield, you have to block a, cool, a crucial cooldown, right? You can block a cooldown with Rhine Shield. Oh no, there's burst damage coming in. I can react to that, right? Oh, I'm getting a little bit low. I want to keep my armor up, right? And, I, and you can actually move while you're doing it. Ram can do it as well, but Chad, is it my, maybe I'm smoking, but I think Ryan can move faster, maybe? If anything, that's my one complaint with Ryan. I think he should be able to move faster with shielding. Gives vision as well, right? So you can protect your teammates. Um, yeah, so it's a good question. Yeah, this is too slow. This is too slow for playmaking. Way too slow for playmaking, and you can't even block any cooldowns with it. It's exclusively used when you're low. Would you say Arissa's spin is better than... Yeah, because Arissa's spin does damage. It does, does damage, and it speeds you up. It's not, it's not, Arissa has a problem, but Javelin Spin is not one of them. So, my point is that, like, you need thoughtful mitigation. And Sigma is a great example of this. Joker Queens bleed, right? Shout, speed, plus the fact that she, she requires, you have to hit your abilities to keep yourself alive, is a very thoughtful and challenging. Zarya. You can use, you need your bubbles. They give you energy, but also they, you need them to take space. Very thoughtful. Diva has her issues, but even Matrix, you can't just Matrix anytime. You, you lose damage, right? Winston Bubble, great example. You need Winston Bubble to do damage, but you got to be very careful with how, how and when you place it. I think we need thoughtful mitigation. We need thoughtful mitigation. This is just, what is this? Like, what is this? Like, what is this, guys? What What is this? Even Arissa's Fortify, where it has, like, the cooldown mechanic, right? It's never actually relevant. Almost never relevant, right? What is this? What is this? I will have Olympus at any cost. And see, that what happens is then you there's this impression that, like, oh, all Overwatch 2 tanks have to have this sort of mitigation. But that's not true. These are just the tanks that we... These are some of the tanks that we have. What is it specifically thought about Mal Malgus Cardiac? What does Malgus Cardiac Arrest do? Or <laughs> Cardiac Overdrive. <laughs> what does Malgus Cardiac Overdrive do? Let's look it up. Cardiac Overdrive. Healing. It heals you. Also reduces damage. In what circumstance would you guys use cardiac overdrive outside of keeping yourself alive? Does this block cooldowns? Does this block? Is this is this gonna is this gonna be a no? Absolutely nothing. You use it when you're low, and that's it. Even the secondary benefit is the same thing. You heal yourself more. It's the same thing, but more. And giving it to allies. The only nuance is potentially maybe wanting to use it with your teammates. But again, it's the same thing. There's no... Right. Junker Queen Shout could be used aggressively or defensively. In fact, it's often used aggressively. And the other part of her tankiness is her sustain. Right? Roadhog. Vape. What does it do? It heal and damage reduct. Can you use this for the damage reduction? Yes, that's one of the nice nuanced things. But you can't even counterplay it anymore. So, I don't think shields are a bad thing anymore. It, it depends on how the shield is used. Honestly, guys, I would rather, I would rather Arissa to have a shield than Arissa to have Fortify. I think it would kill the character, probably, and I don't want a poke character. But Arissa's shield was more thoughtful mitigation than Fortify. 
But here's the other hot take. You ready for the hot take? I don't think we need Arissa to have shield again. I think if you made Fortify buff up Arissa's damage or buff, or we, we remember the whole Arissa rework where we put all this time into like changing how her weapon worked around Fortify. So there was like actually reasons to use it for offensive purposes. If you did that, we wouldn't need to have this conversation. We can keep Fortify. And you know what? Screw off with brainless mitigation. Let Arissa be headshot. Let Arissa be headshot. Let there's no way you're allowing somebody, you're punishing somebody for trying to headshot an Arissa. It's brainless mitigation. Brainless mitigation. If you made Arissa's fortify actually give her some serious offensive benefit, and then you also uh uh let her be headshot, I'm just telling you guys, we'd actually you'd have to make choices. You know what I'm saying? But right now, there's only one way to use Fortify to keep yourself alive. Heck, that's why I like Javelin Spin, right? I think if anything, Javelin Spin could probably make you go, I mean, okay, you guys know what I think about Javelin Spin, right? You guys remember the, remember the custom game, the vertical Javelin? Oh my gosh, that was so much fun when we played it. Um, but like Javelin Spin is really close to being like a pretty good damage mitigation thing because it does protect you, it eats the projectiles, it allows you to move faster, but you could also, you could use it to close distances and dive stuff, right? Um, Terra would be trash without headshot protection, unfortunately. That is true. So maybe we make it that she's invulnerable during Terra shards or whatever, right? There, there's, there's innumerable things. But the problem with 5v5 tank is, is not that we don't want to give free goodies to tank, right? You, you don't want to do that. Uh, we don't want to just necessarily buff the tank passive indiscriminately. In fact, I think we got to be very careful how and where we want to buff the tank passive. Um, oh, man. Here's a hot take, okay? Here's a hot take. Maybe we don't buff the tank passive until we make tanks less attractive to shoot. Or maybe, you know what I'm saying? There's psychology here, guys. This stuff takes work. This is, this is, why, this is why I get so mad at the whole 6v6 thing, because it's like, oh, it's a 6v6, everything's solved. No, it isn't. No, it isn't. It's not even close to being solved. This was just as much a problem in Overwatch 1. Just as much a problem, maybe not for specifically tanks, but overall, we're wasting time. We need to be thinking about solutions here, real solutions. S tanks should have a smaller headshot critical multiplier. I've always fought that idea because I don't like having the idea of, of um, um, what am I trying to say here? Of punishing skill, right? Could Here's the thing. What, what if we reduced tank hitboxes by a little bit, by a little bit. And then you introduced, maybe you didn't even touch the tank passive. Maybe you didn't touch the tank passive. Maybe the DPS passive, maybe is what you, you reduce that with tank. But maybe you didn't reduce the eff efficacy of sleep dart and nade and discord. Maybe you did, maybe by a little bit, but maybe, maybe you, okay, let's just for the sake of argument, you didn't, you didn't. But you made the, 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 the size a little bit smaller and you gave tanks the ability to counterplay, crowd control. Maybe not indiscriminate. Again, w one count, one, one, right? Like you could have a parry mechanic with Doomfist, right? Our future will be forged in conflict. If tanks were less threatening, no one would want to shoot them. But that's the point, is if we give, when, by giving, love you, be safe. By giving tanks counterplay to... CC, whether it's, you know, some, or, or some form of like damage mitigation that's thoughtful, you are making them more threatening. You are making them more threatening. That's exactly what you're doing. So we have to balance that, right? You, by making them, um, by making them slightly slippery, slipperier, right? And so what we do is we make, let's, let's, let's just go for example. Let's say that there's some way that we can make Malga. Uh, let's do, let's do uh, Ramatra. We gave Ramatra, uh, let's do Malga. This is just magical world here. We gave Malga, actually, yeah, we gave Malga the ability to counterplay CC a little bit. And then we nerfed his, uh, his hitbox a tiny bit. You would, he would be really strong, right? Because he'd be get basically two buffs. And he'd be just as scary as he was before because he would be 
Harder to shoot slightly, but more lethal slightly. Then I think the next change you would need to make is probably nerf, like we talked about, the nerf, the raw HP. So we want to buff indirect survivability. We want to nerf direct raw survivability. And then adjust hitboxes as normal. And I think that's something that you would want to go down the list of tanks. If you're CC'd, you're getting hit anyway. Right, but that's that's why we introduce some form of CC counterplay. Because I, this is something I realized in my my the a couple of weeks ago. I realized that like hitboxes actually do have a very important uh a very important um impact on the attractiveness of which targets to shoot. It's not an accident that the fatter tanks are the ones that everybody shoots. That's just how it goes. Yeah, I, I'm not. I'm not talking about like I, we're not talking about Malgus specifically here. I'm just using him as an example. Some of these tanks, it's not like oh, we, we this would fix the tank. Some of these tanks have systemic problems. Uh, Roadhog Malga coming to Ramatra, or said some of those guys. But I'm thinking like the globally, like we're thinking big picture here, holistically. Okay. So what happens from Overwatch 1 to Overwatch 2 is we increase the raw survivability, but we haven't really increased the functional survivability. And that's very important to do because now we do have one fewer tank. And so there are going to be more things thrown their way. I don't think the role of, the role of the tank is fundamentally flawed. I just think it's tricky to bounce. And this is not a 5v5 problem. This is something that's even a problem. Like, here's the funny thing, chat. This is even a problem. How many of you guys have played MM PvP in MMOs? All right? How many of you guys played PvP in MMOs? How many of you guys have played a tank or played versus a tank in PvP in MMOs? It's usually a big problem, right? Because you have to be like, either I do no damage or survivability. Now, it's a lot. I think it's a lot more doable in the first-person shooter genre, though, because you can control the environment with which you're playing. I, I don't think it's fundamentally flawed. I just think it's trickier to balance. Remember, what, what is a tank? A tank is somebody that is generally more psychologically imposing and can hold your attention longer than a DPS. That's what we need to lean into. We need to ask ourselves, what makes a tank psychologically imposing and what allows them to hold my attention for longer? And we need to lean into that. And that's why we talk about CC counterplay. But there can be, there can be a limit, there can be an extreme. We don't need tanks to be the size of Malga to hold your aggression. A Junker Queen is significantly more imposing than, say, a Tracer. But she's relatively slender compared to other tanks. What do you think about the current high elo counter swap tank meta and how do you fix it? Well, the problem with the high elo tank counter swap meta is I, I think to an extent there's there's like two ways of looking at it. One is that these players are um like at their level, even a slight advantage matters a lot. Right? A slight advantage. So even if the tank counter swap isn't that big of a deal, if it matters enough, they will make the swap. The other thing as well is because um these players have not solved how to adjust their compositional play style. And what, what you'll end up seeing is like the tank rock paper scissors is always exaggerated early in the meta because it's free value. 
as players get better at understanding the meta and what they do, generally the counter swapping tends to slow down just a little bit. I mean, I, I, I have a good example just the other day. Um, we with, oh, I watched a couple of our overwashed matches and we got sucked into the tank rock, paper, scissors a little bit and it did not solve our problems. It felt better, but it did not solve our problems. And in many ways we did worse. We also, before that, were playing a team who I'm pretty sure was stream sniping what tank we were playing and kept trying to counter swap our tank and then they lost. Uh, they did not know how to play the tank into the composition that we were playing. I agree, Caffeined. I agree. You will not find me disagreeing with that statement at all. I think the counter swapping is more of a problem because it's easier to counter swap. The few, it, it's just the nature of, it's not even in the nature of the tank, although he is the loudest and, or she is the loudest, biggest in person on the field. Uh, it, it's the fact that there's just one fewer people. If we, if we, if Overwatch 2 lost a DPS instead of a, uh, a tank, over, counter swapping would have been more in the 5v5 environment. You know what I'm saying? It, it's just the nature of cutting down the number of players. That's how it goes. I don't, I don't disagree. I think what we have to do is I think right now we have tanks that are a little bit too, they're too brawl, brawny, for lack of a better term. They are extremely in your face and extremely unequipped for dealing with that level of attention if the situation isn't right. Makes the game less accessible and enjoyable for lower ELO players. Maybe. Maybe. In that aspect, yes. Maybe. You'd have to understand why, why is tank, tank counter swapping a problem? Like when I go, when it, when I go Winston, so, but, but we also have to be, keep in mind that a lot of these issues are not necessarily happening in a, in a vacuum either, right? So when I go Winston, what do I worry about when I go Winston? What gets, what get, what I, or, or Reinhardt, what do I get counterpicked with? Bastion. Is, is Winston, is, Win, do we have a Winston problem? Do we have a, or do we have a Bastion problem? What about, what about Reaper and Roadhog? You know, I'm, I'm just, I'm just, just, just food for thought. You know what I'm saying? Like, let me put it this way. If the enemy team went Orisa, Roadhog, Bastion, and Overwatch won, it was going to feel just as bad, maybe even worse. But he doesn't force the pick. He doesn't force the pick. You're, so the problem, the problem is, guys, the problem is psychology. The problem is not strategy. The problem is psychology. The problem's not strategy. Let me repeat that one more time. The problem is psychology. The problem is not strategy. 99% of the time. Now, initially after the Bastion rework, Bastion was way too strong, way too strong. But even now, you can play Winston and to assert a great deal number of counters, especially if the map is good. The problem is, is the people don't understand that. And the problem is that the people don't feel like they're getting the value. Chat, a great example of this one is that we know, we know that Reinhardt does very well in lower ranks. Why? Because he's not super hard to play to get the initial value. But if you read, learnt, read thought about everything, that you, you bleed everything that you read, you'd think that Ryan was garbage in low to mid ranks. Why? Because it doesn't feel like you're always doing stuff, even though you are really good at absorbing attention. And that's the problem. You guys have to remember this. You, yes, you, I'm talking to you. You hear me? I'm talking to you. You think I'm talking to something? No, I'm talking to you. You do not have an accurate, accurate feel of how effective you are in your rank game. You don't know how good you are. And the reason I know this is not just because, oh, psychology, whatever, you know, shoot, because I've coached thousands of players in the last two years, just in the last two years, ten, easily more than, like, I've coached almost 9,000 hours, one-on-one. -on -one. But I've coached so many in the last, since I've started, and every single time I will see 
uh, I will coach someone who's counter swapping or being counter swapped. And I go, you just don't know what you're doing. You don't understand. Or you're, you're swapping because you feel bad and they go on to lose. Chat, if I had a dime for every tank review that I have done where somebody swaps into Orissa and then loses the game. If I had a dime for every tank review I did of a Winston or a Diva or a Wrecking Ball, oh yeah, this is where I swapped Orissa and we lost the game anyway. It's a psychology problem. It feels like Orissa, like, hey, I'm not dying. I'm shooting tickies. Something's happening. And they lose the game. You lose the game. This isn't just, oh, it, you know, it's a skill issue. It's not even that. People, you could literally be bad at Winston and probably win more games than Arissa. <laughs> but people don't want to do that. They, they would rather lose and feel like they're doing something than win and feel like they're not. And that is a psychology problem. That is not a fun, the, the, the strat, it is a psychology problem of some, something doesn't feel good. And why? You know? It's the swap the Moira. It's the swap the Moira. You know, you guys, ever, I remember that was so common back today. It's still kind of common nowadays where people will go like, oh, they will trace her. I go off of Zenyatta and I go Moira and they lose the game. You know what I'm saying? So what we have to find out is what, what feels so bad as Winston? What feels so good as Arissa? Maybe two, but okay, this is the thing though. It's not just what feels so good as Arissa. What feels good as Arissa, but actually accomplishes nothing. Do you guys, do you guys you see what I'm saying? It's not just what feels good as Arissa. Let's make that happen with Winston. No, 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 no. Because Arissa's doing nothing. Arissa thinks she's doing something, but she's doing nothing. Why is that? Why is that? Shooting the enemy tank, right? What, what, what is tanking, guys? What, what is, who do, like, we can, see, we can conjecture here. We can think, you know, Arissa has a lot of trash damage, but she's not very good at, she doesn't have the mobility to secure kills, or she has invulnerability, but she can absorb a lot of HP. She doesn't have a really in fight impacting ultimate. She doesn't have the capability of going for squishies. You know, you survive, but you don't put out enough pressure on enemy squishies. You don't create enough space. Um, and so, like, yeah. Now, whether Arissa's strong or not, I think Arissa's probably fine right now in certain situations, right? The problem is that Arissa always feels more effective than she actually is. Always, always feels more effective than she actually is. And Winston always feels less effective than he actually is and, and Reinhardt and so on. And it's not just a skill issue. So, this is where we have to also get into the nuts and bolts of the game. And this is something that had to, again, I want to clarify this, is something that need, would have needed to have happened in 6v6 as well. You have to get into the nuts and bolts of the game and find out what do we need to do to make tanks still effective at controlling HP and abusing their psychology, but not such so that when I go Winston or when I go Roadhog, the entire team is looking at me the entire game. You get what I'm saying? That, why is that the case? Because you can't just buff Winston. You can't just flat out buff. The guy's already strong. He's really effective at what he does. And if the map is halfway decent, he's actually one of the best tanks in the game, especially if you're halfway decent at him. He's really good. He doesn't always feel like that way, but he's really, really freaking good. So we, this is where like, this is where you, you, you know, I've had some ideas here. I think hitboxes is something we need to consider. Audio cues is something that we need to consider. Um, I think shifting more uh, counterplay options to tank and, and, and re yet reducing their overall health pool so they don't just live if the enemy team doesn't have counters. Um, nerfing or adjusting characters that get value just by shooting tank. That's the other thing as well, is like, we don't want Bastion to feel as good as he does right now shooting tank. You get what I'm saying? It feels too good shooting Bastion uh, into a tank. And again, this is for the Bastion's benefit as well. Bastion is good at tank busting, but I've, I've reviewed several mid to low rank Bastions in the past six months. And those players exclusively shoot tank, um, without exception, shoot tank too much. They lose games because they shoot tank too much. Why? Because it's easy and it feels good. And so that's a bastion problem. You see, this isn't just about tank. This, is just, this isn't just about tank. It just so happens that a lot of the sillier, easier characters can dump their value on a tank and feel like they're doing something in the losing games. We just coached, you guys, we just coached a Reaper today, right? So... 
Same thing with Torben, right? Um, you know, and, and things, things, this happens with Anna as well. If I had a dime for every time and Anna just dumped a sleep dart or a nade into a Roadhog across the map and the Roadhog freaking wants to quit the game and then the Anna dies to the tracer and I'm like, ah, right? If I had a dime for every time that happened, right? Or Zenyatta just dumps damage into the enemy tank and ignores the Sombra on the flank and they lose the fight, right? That happens all the time. But that, the Zenyatta feels bad about that, nerf tracer, FYI, right? And, and, and then the tank feels bad about that, even though they won the fight. Do tank busters need to exist in 5v5? Bro, I don't think tank busters need to exist in 6v6. I don't think tank busters need to exist in 6v6. I see no reason. In 6v6, the health pools for tanks were even lower. There was even less of a need to have tank busters in 6v6. There was no reason for Hanzo or Reaper or Bastion in the state that they were to exist in 6v6. There was zero reason. You didn't need that much damage to kill a tank in 6v6. They had, they had lower health pools. So, like, my whole point is that, like, this is what this is exactly what I'm talking about, though, right? Like, this is exactly what I'm talking about. We have, there's, there's two, there, there doesn't need to be a tank buster character. It doesn't need to exist. It, we don't, because the, 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 this is why. This is why you don't need a tank buster character. The psychology of a character that gets in your face is already good enough to motivate you to shoot him. You don't need more motivation to shoot a tank than you already do. And the problem is, is that with the exception of things like boops, what chat, what's the problem with the ult charge, getting reduced ult charge from shooting tank? Think about it. What's the problem about getting reduced ult charge as a tank? And, and it's not that's a bad idea, but why isn't it an incomplete idea? Think about it. Think about it. Why is getting reduced ult charge, what we have currently in the game, why, why is it not good? Right, it it you don't feel the change. You don't miss more shots. I I I coached Lucio players back before they buffed boop, and you could see Lucio players really not going out of their way to boop tanks because they'd learned. They didn't even realize it, but they'd learned that you know it doesn't do all that much, right? But nobody shoots and looks down at their old charge. Oh wait, I'm getting twenty or what is it fifteen or thirty percent less old charge? Wait a second, I'm going to stop shooting tank. You don't feel it, right? You're not missing more shots. You're not noticing that, oh, wow, we lost this fight at 85% ult charge. If I had shot a squishy instead, I would have built my ult. You don't notice those things. So it's like, it's, it's a nerf to shooting tank, but the tank doesn't feel it and you don't feel it. And so it doesn't change anything. It changes the results. So if you, here's the funny thing. This is why lower ranks shoot tanks more because if you don't shoot tank and you duel people with your sleep dart and your nade and your, 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 you're going to win games. You're going you're gonna to rank up. But the low rank players are going to stay stuck in low rank, not knowing why am I not getting out of low rank? Because you're 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 picking Arissa, you're you're picking Malga, because you're sitting in on main and dumping damage into the enemy tank, and they don't know what's wrong because it doesn't like. Remember, the goal is that we have this is this is why tank the tank discussion is so important because this isn't just about tank. This is about Overwatch. Doing the right thing should feel good. Doing the wrong thing should feel bad, and I don't think that's enough of the case right now. We have to ask ourselves, what about the psychology of Overwatch? Can we help control, adjust, improve to make bad things feel bad and good things feel good? And right now, putting attention on the enemy tank feels way too good. Way too good for, do, for, for, not, for, for not being uh, a valid and consistent way of attaining victory. Um, Isn't recognizing this, you don't get value from making it more of a skill issue than a faulty game design choice? No, I, I disagree. Um, it's a good question. Like if you're smart, if you watch spy low videos, you know, or other videos, you will learn and, and you, you know, but the thing is, is the reason why it's dangerous is we don't want the game to be unintuitive. A lot of people make fun of me, not make fun of me, but like, don't like my, I, my rework ideas of like adding some nuance and complexity because they think, oh, spy low just wants to make the game hard and every character to be super complicated. That, that's not true. Um, but the irony is that like we want, the, a lot of my changes are about making the game, trying to make the game more intuitive or doing the right thing is easy. It's natural, right? Yeah, of course shooting the tank is valuable. Like you, you guys understand what I'm saying. Like there's, it's, the, 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 there's obviously nuance there. It's situational, depends. It's less valuable than you think it is.
We want, we want, we want player perception and reality to be as close to 100% accurate. It's, it will never be 100% accurate, right? Um, I mean, look at like the ELO system that we have right now, where everyone's like still gaslighting each other about like the, the current rank system. Um, but like, you, certainly we could do a better job, right? Certainly. Tanks are more effective when DPS supports. See, that's the funny thing is you, I'm not, you're not even necessarily right, Jump Boy. If you want to be an effective tank, make people look at you. Even if you don't even do a lot of damage. If you just if they, if they you look at them and you threaten them, actually making tanks harder to shoot would not as necessarily, would not make tanks more effective. It would make them less effective. They would be ignored slightly more often, right? And, and, you know, now you might have more freedom to make more plays, but you know, it's, it's a double-edged sword. Interesting, Kiba. I'll, I'll try it. Um, so solutions here. We need more dynamics. We need more abilities with more dynamics. We don't want brain dead mitigation. Uh, you want it needs to be smart. It needs to be dynamic where you can use it offensively. You can use it defensively. Uh, we do not want to give free mitigation through the tank passive. It needs to be brainful mitigation. Brainful. Where the player has to utilize strategy or timing to be able to utilize things or the mobility to utilize things well. Um, I think you could argue adding some sort of tank passive value through like the DPS passive strictly because of how easy it is to apply. Um, you know. The question we have is, will tank always be the most valuable piece on the chessboard for his or her attention? You know, will, it all, will tank always be like the most valuable thing uh, to worry about? And I think that the answer might have to, and maybe this goes with what Chris, I think Chris was saying earlier, like where tank is a fundamentally flawed thing. Maybe the answer is yes. Maybe it will always be the most valuable, most important thing. Maybe there is no changing that, but certainly we can leverage that extreme and allow tanks to not be focused as much and have more agency in what they do. And I think that starts with counterplay with the tank. I think that starts with things like hitbox manipulation and I think that starts with reducing the raw survivability of the tank. Tanks can be tanks can be the DPS heroes with bigger hitboxes and more mitigation options. Remember, what is a tank? A tank is a damaging hero that can draw your attention up close to abuse the psychology of proximity and keep it there for a longer period of time. I want to look at my tweet really fast here. Uh, Flat said something a while ago, and I want to actually go through and fact check myself. Tweak the tank passive to account for things. Oh, wait, no. Increase the skill floor of brain to DPS heroes like Bastion Reaper. Yes, I think this is true. I know Flats said something about like, um, Rick, what did he say? So something like, oh, well, we don't want entry-level characters to be too hard. There's no such thing as an entry-level character that's too hard. Um, in terms of, you can, it, th people play Genji from the first thing. They don't need to understand every nuance of Genji. They don't need to understand what makes Winston powerful, the esoteric aspects of space. Simple characters can have high skill floors. On, on paper, Bastion is in many ways harder than a character like a Winston or something, just because there's like, it's not, there's like cooldowns to manage and, and you die quickly and, and it, but it, there's just no reason for these guys to have as much value as they do. Uh, this is the flats thing. Tweak the tank passives to account for things like anti nade Discord, DPS passive. I am not so sure on these. I'm not so sure. I would probably start with number three first and then incorporate number two. I, I'm not sure how I feel about this. I don't think it would be harmful to have things like anti-nate last a little shorter or discord be a little bit weaker, but you couldn't, you would have to probably nerf 
tank HP a little bit as a result, as well as incorporating these things. I think these things cannot happen in a vacuum. They can't happen in a vacuum. This can happen in a vacuum, that's fine. These things cannot happen in a vacuum. It has to happen at the same time. Adjust tanks like a Roadhog Malgar Risk that are over reliant on self-sustained for survival and consuming. Right, so like, there's too many tanks that only have one dimension of survivability, are way too strong on it, and are super vulnerable to others. Remove the extreme mitigation. Don't remove the nuance and interesting aspects of tank survivability, but definitely consider when the tank survive, or not tank survive, but tank, tank play style, but do consider when the tank only has one method of survival and does only one thing. Um, and then Reinhardt, like quality, quality of life stuff, quality of life stuff. Um, where Ryan has too many things that are un- un- uncomfortable with Reinhardt, like the fire strike each damage, the earth shattered damage. I think things like him moving faster while shielding would give him more choice of engagement and disengagement and manage his burst each damage better. You can't universally buff tank Finally, bonus is to consider the dopamine result uh, response of shooting tank hitboxes because they're in better mitigation. That is less satisfying. Because this is the other thing about tank mitigation, guys. We'll, we'll finish our conversation with this. The reason why I'm so uh, such a big proponent of thoughtful tank mitigation is because this is not satisfying to shoot. You get what I'm saying? This is not satisfying to shoot. This is not satisfying to shoot. This is not super satisfying to shoot, although it does make a pretty juicy noise. This is not super satisfying to shoot. You get what I'm saying? This is not super satisfying to shoot, right? Brainful, right? <laughs> so what you have though is when Hog is doing this, admit it, you guys keep shooting. Admit it. Heck, even this. Admit it, right? And also admit this. When this character is a, is is across the map, would you rather shoot this character? Or would you rather shoot this character? Admit it. Also, admit this. When this guy presses cardiac, you keep shooting, don't you? You do, don't you? Even though he's basically invulnerable from death, beyond anti-nade, you keep shooting, don't you? Why? Because it feels good. It's not useful. <laughs> it's not impactful. But just keep doing Whereas a lot of the other mitigation that we demonstrated, it doesn't feel that good. When they, when ja- Riss is javelin spinning, you're not doing anything, right? When Sigma's shifting or shielding, right? And with Junker Queen's hitbox, it's, it's kind of hard, right? And even indirect mitigation, right? No, I don't agree raid boss tank. I think raid boss tank is the opposite direction that we need to go because there's no way to make it balance. Wary that if they make it more individually complex, they'll scare away new players, increase queue time. Seems like a battle on both fronts. Right, which is why you have to make sure that we adjust the noob-stomping, tank-busting characters. Nothing will make a player swap off of playing Winston or Reinhardt than a character like Malga or Bastion. Reflect, absorb, I'm not sure. Maybe a shield, maybe a barrier. This is also where I think hitbox adjustments are really important too. Having a tank that's slightly harder to shoot. I've noticed even in my all my sessions that people generally don't shoot Doomfist um, as much as you'd think, right? Now, Doomfist does get focused a lot, but imagine if Doomfist was even 5% bigger. Oh my days, it would be awful as a Doomfist player, right? Because he's already he's already attracted to shoot as it is. So it's just little hitbox tweaks like that. Um... What if you increase support or hit DPS hitboxes? I mean, they kind of already did that, you know, to an extent with the uh, the projectile changes. I'm curious to see if long term, if that projectile change um, ends up because obviously that did affect tanks, but it was proportionally and on paper a bigger increase in terms of how easy it was to hit squishies. How do you fix the issues of tanks making space that the team won't take advantage of? That you need to play a different game. <laughs> PvP game will never solve that problem. Because the, the, the hilarious part about that is that it is a tank problem and a DPS support problem. 
for every person that I've ever worked with that have, has made that claim, we get into the replay code and you know what we discover? That their teammates are morons and that they're a moron too, that they're going in when the team's in spawn. It, that's just the nature of the game. There's some things that you, there's some psychology you can't fix. Uh, you can't, the ELO system, outside of a few bugs and tweaks here and things like the volatile not being very communicated well is fine. But people are going to continue to complain and I don't really care. I don't, I've, I've learned that it just, it's, I'm not going to let it bother me because people are, people are just dumb. Uh, and that's just how it is. And people not following up off, off of, you know, your, your, your pressure. It's just not going to change. It is what it is. You know? Yeah. Sometimes you just have people that don't do what you want them to do. And that's just how it is. There's just, there's just nothing that there, there is that don't, that's not the tank experience, right? Because I see, I see this like tanks all like pity partying each other, like alcoholics, anonymous, 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 but like for supports, you know what I'm saying? Where it's like, oh, you know, that's not really alcoholics, anonymous, never mind. But whatever, you guys, know what I'm saying, like where it's like this big pity party, like, oh, you know, as tank, you're just at the mercy of your DPS and supports. And that is like the biggest load of garbage I've ever heard in my life. That is the biggest load of garbage. You can literally say that about any role, and it's true. And as we, I'm, I, I would bet, I, in my opinion, Tank has more responsibility and more, uh, more not more carry potential necessarily, but more ability to have imp direct impact on the fight or indirect impact on the fight. It's a freaking team game. You're not at the mercy of your DPS or your supports more so than any other person is. What do you think about EDRA? Um, yeah, I, we talked a little bit about it earlier. It's just like, of course, yes, it's a team game. You're going to have bad teammates. That's just how it goes. And a lot of times, like I said, the, the, the impression of bad teammates is also like usually false as well, where it's usually like way more dynamic than that. Sometimes it really is just a bad game, but I would say a good 80% of the time, bad teammates are just your impression. It's not even true. It's only it's like, it's a team game, guys. Like you are always reliant. And saying that like tank is more gate kept by things is just it's just it's just not true. Um, geez, guys, I feel like we've gone on forever. So I feel like for me, I feel like after discussing this, I don't know. I think like we gotta be really careful about just giving tanks free candy. I think we have to take a look at what does tank need to outplay the worst of the situations. Some tanks need reworks. Some tanks need counterplay options and more than anything else i think we need a psychological adjustment with how attractive it is to always shoot tank that is your 5v5 adjustment everything else i think is just objectively needed to be done even in 6v6 but i think in 5v5 it's definitely something that needs to be considered more and i think that's something that the that the developer team kind of rushed around maybe they didn't fully understand the ramifications of what removing a tank is but it, it 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 meant that it was to it took the already attractive aspect of shooting the big fat target and did it more. Guys, again, I, I want to point out like this is something that happens even in PvP games in MMO, right? Where people will run like a tank class and they'll pull, pop like an invulnerability cooldown and run right in the middle of the enemy team, and everybody in the enemy team shoots them uh, at least for a, a brief period of time. Um, and it, it's it's just there's just psychology here that you're fighting versus you know, um, and you just have to it's it's hard it's hard to break. It's hard to break. Um, I don't think you can. I don't think tank will ever be totally fixed unless they literally just made it a third DPS. But I think a lot of people would be unhappy with that. And I, I think that that's sometimes where you have to make compromise about what's perfectly balanced and what brings character and nuance to the game. You know, and, and I think like, you know, maybe there's not ever a world where like tank is going to have be perfectly problemless. But I do think that that's something that like, that's kind of like we kind of have to live with that, you know. Uh, no, I'm not disappointed with the Wrecking Ball reworks. I want to see it tested. What do you propose the psychological adjustment? We talked about it. We talked about hitbox changes. We talked about maybe, maybe audio cues. We talked about more effective means of mitigation besides just raw healing uh, or damage adjustments because a lot of the tanks that are much better and over, much more healthy for Overwatch 2, uh, like Sigma, for example, are characters that are not as attractive to shoot when they are using their mitigation. For example, the shield, the shift, and so on. A smaller distribution. Yeah, I, I, I am honestly kind of an idiot when it comes to the ELO system specifically, like how it's calculated, so.
Anyway, any questions, guys, specifically to the discussion at, at hand? I feel like we've gone on for a long time. Uh, I guess we could kind of wrap it up here. I'd probably make this into a video. I feel like I could go on and on and on and on and on, but I feel like there's a lot of nuance, a lot of discussion here. But I, I do think like these are the kind of discussions like not even if you don't agree with my ideas, which is totally fine. Like I don't expect everyone to agree with me, obviously. But these are the kind of conversations that we need to be having about tank. We need to stop talking about six v six. Like if you want to keep, be, if you want to be the bug in the ear about like bringing in an open queue or if bringing in experimental mode, or that's fine. I can tell you it's not going to happen. I'm going to tell you it's not going to happen because it's still we still have the queue problem, and I think the developers overall have just completely checked out that whole idea for better or worse but these are the conversations that we need to be having okay 5v5 is worse than 6v6 you're a 6v6 stain you watch a lot of Samito videos you've watched the iron video I, I i watched like two minutes of the jake versus iron debate and i literally had to turn off iron was just unbearably obnoxious um but you know people like Samito they make good arguments right uh okay what are we gonna do what are we gonna do we're in 5v5 devs are idiots ggs okay they don't want to go back to 66 for better or worse, right? That's not my department. That's not my opinion, but that's fine. If that's where you are, what are you going to do? What aspects of 6v6 are you going to be able to bring in to balance the things out? I do think Sumito makes good arguments. I think Sumito is a little, sometimes gets hung up, but I, I do think Sumito brings a lot of good takes on the thing. I think his whole 6v6 thing gets tiresome, but that's his baby. You know, I'm sure people get tired of my counterplay thing. Jake was annoying as well. All right, well, perfect. I'm glad I I'm glad I dodged it. Iron was just sh Iron honestly reminded me of like a 16 year old kid, dude. That guy is way too old to be acting like that. That was obnoxious. There was like no. It was just actually painful to watch. He's like 22. If you want 66 to make a good game, that has it. We're committed to that. We're the most. Is it unhealthy to have a tank that is attracted to shoot like hog? Seems like a plausible hero fantasy. Um, good question. I, I don't know. I mean, you, you know, you, you could make that argument that like, maybe like I do like being the damaged sponge. Maybe I do like abusing the psychology of that. I mean, I, I can't tell you you're wrong. Like, maybe. Um, any other questions? That was a good one. I actually don't I don't have an answer to that question. I, I really don't know. That would be something that you'd have to experiment with and, and like probably need to like study the cycle. I'd have to think about it more. With the little information we have, what are you expecting for the tank hero coming in season 14? I, I don't have any information about the tank hero coming in season 14. And that's not that's not even NDA. I, I actually I don't have any information. I have no information. Some some things I have to kind of play dumb with um because of NDA. And some things I like I mean, I'll tell you guys down the road, you know, like I'll, I always double check to make sure like, hey, but sometimes in the moment I have to kind of play dumb around some stuff, but there are some things I, I legitimately just don't know. How would you change a character like Reaper to being more glued to a tank all the game less attractive? Um, I Reaper's a tough one. You know, shotgun characters in general are tough. I think shotguns and snipers are like the tricky character, the tricky guns. Um, I think the biggest thing with, with Reaper, which I hope they're doing with the rework, is that I hope that they're giving him some more mobility, like some more verticality, so that he can choose targets more. Um, and then if that's the case, I actually think that you could even slightly like nerf his damage and buff his spread. It's gonna that that one's gonna be hard because it's gonna be hard to buff the psychology. But at the very least, like you you give Reapers more options. There's always two things. You always got to be like, can we make the psychology of the character feel better, and then can we give them more options to do more things? Kusuli, I think, for the sub. But that is a good question. Like, how do you make a shotgun character not feel good to shoot? I think that's that probably is a little bit on Reaper side and a little bit on the tank side as well. He brought his life steal down. That's not a bad idea, yeah. Because the life steal is obviously directly. And some stuff just takes time too. Like I, I I, I bet that the season nine changes. Maybe it's the maybe it's the DPS passive being like a count, conflicting goal, but like the projectile changes, I objectively made shooting non-tank better because it was proportionally easier to hit shots and squishies now, hit headshots and things that matter, right? Um, but 
you know, it might take some time before the perception of that is is kind of kicked in, you know? Balling right now, bro. I'm actually murdering these bots right now. It's actually insane. If you nerf Reaper, no, it wouldn't be a nerf to Reaper. It would be, I think if anything, Reaper probably needs a little bit of a buff, but um, you just need to kind of like, I, I'm, I'm fairly confident that, that they're going to, I think they're going to do the right thing with this character. And this, this is not India. I, I, I'm honestly, it's just, a, it's just a hunch. Reaper being a situational, I think is exactly the problem. Like, Niche, niche, heroes, niche, whatever. What are your comments on this take so you CC de debuffs diminishing returns? It's not a bad idea. I don't know how you'd incorporate that into the game exactly, but it's not a bad idea. That would definitely be your, um, it would just, it would just be, it, it, it's not a bad idea. I just question how like intuitive that would feel. It'd feel awkward to be like, Yo, Brig, why did you whip shot the monkey? I was going to sleep him first kind of a question. You know, like, can you imagine like having that conversation? I feel like that might be kind of awkward. How would I, what would it change about Bastion? Uh, we did a DPS hero rework video. You can look it up on my YouTube. We talk a little bit about how like changing his turret um, and such. I think one idea that I didn't like is that I, that I, as I don't like the, the turret on a resource, that was an idea we had. I think it's a bad idea now that I think about it, because it'd be really easy to save your turret. But there's some discussions about like not having self damage from your grenade anymore, bringing back his ultimate, which like the big, um, you know, like that kind of thing. Uh, maybe giving the opportunity to headshot, kind of like what they do with the April Fool's patch, kind of, sort of. Yeah, I, I I agree, Stefano. And I think there's they'd still be big heroes, you know, like like we don't want to, you don't want to totally like there's a nuance with everything. I think this is the this is like I keep you know I I I swear my entire life I'm fighting fighting caricatures whether it's and I, and this is not fair to Samito to lump him in this category, but it's like the six v six thing, the awkward thing, I feels like every I. I you gotta you be all guys always be on the lookout for people that say there's no like just say it's this is it that's that's the only thing that when when you when you find nuance you often find the truth you know right like oh destroying nuance or or or, or um, not destroying nuance but like. We need, it's okay to have full extremes or what, what were you referring to? Like nerfing their hitbox sizes by a little bit. Like tanks can still feel like tanks. Like we don't have to destroy the tank role. Not every role has to be homogenized. That's not at all what we're saying here. You know? Every 5v5 argument you said is brain dead except for yours. I mean, I, I mean, maybe, I don't know. Like I, I Maybe it's the way they're presenting it. Like, it's also brain dead to say that like 5v5 didn't bring in problems. Of course it brought in problems, right? I'm still a 5v5. I think I, I enjoy 5v5 more. I think 5v5 is probably more realistic for the game and more, but but also like, let's, it's stupid to say that 5v5 didn't bring in problems. Of course it brought in problems. You know? So. I don't even like apologist as a term. I, I kind of say it jokingly, but like this says that like my job is to defend 5v5. No, my job is not to defend 5v5. My job is to find out what's wrong with 5v5 and fix it. You know what I'm saying? Like not, not really, but like that's my goal, right? 5v5 has issues. What could we do to fix it? What could we do to make it feel better? 6v6 had issues. What could we have done to make that feel better? I'm sure there's stuff that we could have come up with 6v6 as well, right? Um, it's unfair to blame a lot of the un one dimensional crappy hero designs on 6v6, right? When reality was just Overwatch 1. That's not 6v6. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. I know it was meant as a joke. I was meant as a joke. I, 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 but I think it's a good, it's a good, it's a good discussion point. I'm so I'm stealing your comment, you know? But it, in reality, like both sides can get really like lazy with your arguments, you know? So it's very easy to just be caricatured. The one, the one thing that I, I think that like, I just, I know it's talked about a lot, but I will say that like the Q times things definitely matter. Saying that's the only reason why 5v5 can't work or is the best is lazy. 
like definitely adding more content, making tank heroes more enjoyable to play, uh, definitely would have helped with queue times a lot. But it is true, tank, as long as it anywhere resembles any sort of like the brawler, will always be the least popular rule. Um, and so the queue times will be a problem. Um, I don't agree that, that that's a good argument in of itself, though. But I do... I, I don't even know that queue times is necessarily a symptom. Okay, it, it, it is a symptom, but it's not a symptom that I think we can ever fully fix. In the same way that 5v5 tank, having a solo tank being the only one focused down is not something that we can probably completely fix either. You just choose your poison. You want to focus more on addressing queue times and making tank really attractive in 6v6, or do you want to make some more time designing tanks with more counterplay options? You just pick your poison. Overwatch 2 picked their poison. We got to live it. problem with the the whole like people like the, the thing is is like if you if you're a 5e fire here, here's where's my thought if you're a 5e fiver you have to admit that having one tank fewer causes tank focus problems it's psychologically true like you can't deny that you have to admit that you have to deny and you have to find some way oh no i'm getting shut down like you have to find a solution to that or something to alleviate that stress if you were a 66er you cannot say that q times weren't a problem they are absolutely a problem were they exacerbated by the content drop? Of course. Is it something that could have been made by more interesting and more dynamic tank heroes? Of course. But you can't sit there and pretend that's not a problem. Like you have to, again, choose your poison and choose which one you're fixing. So, I don't know. Uh... What was the question there? Do you think tuning down the visual and audio dopamine of a tank would have adverse effects where now it could create a problem where now with those changes, dive tanks will feel less certain and won't do the job it needs to do? Right, which is why, well, the thing is, it's like, it's a double-edged sword. Remember, we're not looking to tune down the effect. By tuning down the attractiveness of dive tanks or the threat of dive tanks, the, ob the psychological threat of dive tanks. What you do is you tune down the indirect threat, but you tune up the direct threat. So as a Winston, you would do more damage, but you'd bait less attention, right? So it would feel better. Your impact would be about the same because part of your job is to bait resources, but it'd feel, it, you'd feel better. You kind of see what I'm saying? That's the goal. Like the goal is to have about the same level of impact, but more of the impact is direct and less of the impact is indirect. You know what I'm saying? How do you make tanks bank less attention? That's what we talked about. That's what we talked about. That's where we started to talk about hitboxes. That's where we talked about more satisfying means of um, damage mitigation. Uh, and that's where we talked about, like, the brain deadness of some of the tank counter heroes and the skill floor of tanks countering tanks. Like, here's the thing is, like, if I'm playing Winston and and there's no Bastion, there's no Reaper, there's no Malga, I, I'm limited by my own skill at that point to an extent, right? Like, in terms of, like, the amount of damage that I can get, you know? It, it discourages people from shooting you by a little bit, but there's also availability for me to be able to outplay the thing. Like, if I can look a silver gold player in the eye playing versus a Malga Bastion and say, it's a skill issue that you're not getting damage in, then I'm confident. And I don't always feel confident that I can say that right now. Kinder Vader. Yeah, we talked a little bit about that. I, I won't re rehash it, but we definitely talked about a lot of the newer tank mitigation abilities are very one-dimensional. Very one-dimensional. And I think that's why Sigma has felt so good in Overwatch 2 is the fact that all of his mitigations are dynamic. Like they can do any, you can even, like even the shift is not exclusively, you can use that to absorb HP while you're walking forward before you even need it. You can just use it to get some extra HP. If Blizzard offered you a job in hero design, you want to take it? I, I don't know. 
I, I hope that my ideas are, maybe not my exact ideas because I think I'm relatively inexperienced coming up with good solutions, but I hope that, that at least the psychological aspect of things, because I, I, do, I do believe that I am correct with these kind of things. Maybe not my exact solutions, but my stance. I hope that I'm inspiring ideas. Um, I don't know that I would take a job. And that's frankly uh, more of a fragility in my end. I don't think I'd be able to... I think I'd, I think it would it would like the nature of the job is you just have to sustain criticism constantly, you know, um, and a lot of it's unfair, and that would be you know that that would, that would that would be tough. And I like what I'm doing too much right now. I like the fact that we can talk about these things, and I still deal with criticisms, of course, but I can actually interact with you guys. I don't know that the Blizzard developers have that luxury, and that is always awkward. A little interaction. A little interaction, right. A little interaction. Listen, Gavin, I don't, I don't, I don't envy you at all, especially the systems that you're working in. I, 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 the whole ELO system is, honestly, ELO systems might even be just as bad as the, um, the hero design thing because there's so much conspiracy behind the ELO systems. I don't, I don't envy your job at all. Especially because some of it's, I'm sure, justified. Like there is some, there are bugs that you need to sort out. Um, but I, man, I, I, I was a, way back in the day, I was, I was one of the Blizzard forum frequenters. And I wasn't, I wasn't like paranoid or anything, but there was so much inform, misinformation. Back, thank you for the raid. There was so much misinformation back then, bro. Like people were super like paranoid and conspiracy theoried about it. And like Elo Hell was like a big deal. We dropping babies? I'm not telling you. So I don't envy your job at all. But I appreciate your work as always. Yeah, no, no, no. I, I think I think the community has matured a little bit. I mean, there'll always be like some conspiracy for sure, but at least it's it's matured a little bit. Like Newton's apple. There's been a lot of problems with the US. I'm glad the most of those are fixed now. So it takes a long time to build trust. I think we're on a good path. I think so too. I think a lot of it is that like the communication has been really, really good. But I think that's kind of tired. Like, like I, th I think for just a split second, and I know and people are going to make fun of me for sucking up here, but I'm consistent at least in my communication. I don't think it's just the communication. I think, especially the last several months, I do think then there's been a trend of competence. <laughs> I hope that doesn't come across as patronizing. Um, but like, there's just, there's been good stuff. Like, so like, I think it's honestly more patronizing to say, oh, it's been good communication when like it's, it's also just been some good changes. Like there's been some good work done, you know, because you can communicate all you like, but if, if it sucks, it sucks. You know what I'm saying? Like let, you could be a nice guy, but people don't think you're a good coach unless you coach well. So I think I think also credit goes where credit's due. Like it's the communication has been great. Yeah. But it's also been like the changes have actually made a lot of sense. So. I believe Kodak had a large impact in that feeling of competence. Yeah, that, may, that may be something that I, I certainly, I don't think Gavin would be able to answer. Um, I, I think, I, I, my opinion from a psych, from like a, a leadership standpoint is I think changes like Bobby Kodak leaving are things that take a long time to really notice. I think in general, leadership is setting a culture and developing a culture for better or worse. Um, and I think like, I don't think that there's going to be, unless there's like some super toxic policy that obviously you can't, I don't think they're going to be like, you know, that does, that stuff doesn't happen. Right. It doesn't really, it takes time. It's just like coaching, you know, like you, you, you jump on a team. It takes a long time to kind of set that culture. Oh gosh. Now we have a dev Q and a, <laughs> uh, yeah, 
Yeah, but we also don't know we don't know what micromanaging he was doing. You know, like a lot of it is is conjecture from from things that we don't know. <sighs> oh, gosh, uh, my mouth my mouth literally hurts. <laughs> my mouth hurts. <laughs> The tank distribution thing. You you asked Stefano. Caught it, killed my rhythm games by flooding the market. It's true. Thing. <laughs> Check the rock. Oh, gosh, I'm bad. File for CU, no way. I don't have the chops for it. Mm. How many of you guys are going to DreamHack? You guys going to Dallas for the OWCS tournament in, uh, what, May? If you, if you guys, by the way, I, I made a post about this on Discord. Um, I do have a discount code if you are going. Let me know if you guys are going. It's, it, the discount code is just SPILO in all caps. Because I got invited as a content creator to go, so I got free passes, which is super cool. But I also have a discount code for anybody that wants to go. So if you got anybody that you know is going or you're going to the OWCS tournament, 15% uh, off. Dallas, it's it's for an OWCS tournament, Pro Overwatch tournament. I, I'm not sure, right? I I want to go to Stockholm. I want to go to Stockholm. Not 100 sure though. What if swapping would cost resources to limited heroes? Like you need to take 50 percent charge. I'm not sure. It's an interesting idea where like swapping would cost resource. Yeah. I bought my non-refundable tickets. Why do you think I waited? There's certain people that just need to be screwed over. And also, I didn't find out till like two days ago. Am I going to break down the Korean Grand Finals at some point? Maybe. I, I, it's awkward because I just did WAC versus Falcons. You know what I'm saying? Should I, should I do Korean Grand Finals anyway? Maybe I'll do it like Thursday. May, maybe. I don't know. It's like I just did the same teams and it was four maps as well. Like, I don't know. Maybe, I, I don't know. I'm not smart enough. I'm not a smart enough content creator to know if I should do that or not. When is Stockholm? I don't know, like October or The highest level play. Well, I mean, the WAC versus Falcon, the first game was really good as well. I reviewed that. That'll probably be up on YouTube this week. Great for at debate. What? Great for great format debate win. Oh, great format debate. I, I, I think SVB is done. And I, I'm honestly done as well. There's a reason that like I'm not interested in the 5v5, 6v6 debate. I'd be interested in maybe like Maybe I could stomach something with like Samito alone, but like it's just such a tiresome debate at this point. Like we already know it's not happening. So like, and, and the thing is, it's like, we know it's not happening. I agree that having some sort of open queue. Yes, I agree. We've had the same points over and over again. Um, I feel like I could represent 5v5 better because I'm more open to like the flaws of 5v5, you know, I guess. I think I, I think it's good to have debaters that are like, but I think that's that's the problem. Like, Samito has too much of his brand built into the 6v6. So he's not in a good position to debate 6v6. That's the problem. Right? That's the problem. When your brand is built into the target, you can't really defend them because there, you have, there's too much personal, there's too much to lose personally. You know what I'm, getting, get what I'm saying? And it's tough because I, I respect Samito more than anybody else when it comes to the 6v6 opinions. That's the problem. This is so satisfying, guys. No. Hey, can I rock this? Oh, yeah. Yeah, Ralph's a smart guy. Who do you think would be a good advocate for 66? I don't know. I don't. I, I haven't seen Ralph enough conversation with 66. Um, I don't know. Like, I feel like... Every 6v6er is like, there's no like nuance with it, you know? Like, they're very much like all on that. And the problem is, is that like the, the, smart, the smartest people that I would be interested in debating in 6v6 would be Jake and Hawk, 100%. Or not Jake and Hawk, Hawk, um, Hawk and Sumito. 
But Hawk and Samita are very much like strict 6v6, you know. I've never ever heard, like there's like, there's like full out, you know what I'm saying? And so I think that that would be like a hard conversation to have. Try making the Sigma rock jump. Bro, I don't even know how to do the tech, much less this one. You'll represent 6v6? Fair enough. <laughs> is it this one? Is this the one I have to make here? Or is it, no, it's this one, right? It's this one right here, right? Oh. Oh, wait, the bottom ones? One more down? Frick, how do I get over there? Can I get over this way? No. Dude, I'm stuck. I'm stuck. I'm stuck. Ah! Ah! Wait. Ah! <laughs> Dang it! Yeah, I guess I could have made the jump back here. Frick. Watch me get it my second try. Watch me get it my second try. You guys going to be so embarrassed. Night, Drashi. No. No, 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 no. All right. Okay. I, uh, okay. <laughs> um, let's do some. Don't cry. Don't cry. Don't make fun of me. Do you guys want to do some ass Philo? Let's do some ass Philo. Let's do some ass Philo. I'm gonna get some water. Be right back. All right, <clears throat> I walk around, bro. Grinding for that new punter clip. All right, yeah, you're killing me. Um, the chat, the Spiral React, the awkward punching bag exhibition. I mean, all right, here, here's the thing. His punching form wasn't really all that great. It was okay. It wasn't bad. Um, and obviously like the vast majority of the people in the comments would not do any better, but you guys are just getting reaction farmed at this point. You know what I'm saying? It's just kind of like, I'm more disappointed in the people responding. You know what I'm saying? Cause like, come on guys. Like his form wasn't as bad as people were saying. People just hate him because he's awkward. Fair enough. And then people were giving him reactions. Like they, like they gave him what? Like, I don't even know. I mean, I'm, I saw so many th responses. Like you're literally in, like giving him new students. To the, so. But yeah, his, his form was not terrible. It wasn't that good. Um, he might've been working on his footwork, which was okay. But like, again, it was just like, you guys are getting like, not you guys, but they're getting like, people are just, it was just, it, overall, it was just cringe. The amount of people, like the amount of neck beards commenting on it, like they would do any better. The, and then feeding awkward attention when that's the last thing he needs to that kind of stuff right there. 
And then, I mean, the whole thing was cringe. Whole thing was cringe. It's just typical Overwatch community. Like we're not, we we want we want to beat on. It's not the Overwatch community. It's just typical humanity. <laughs> they want to beat on awkward, but they won't. Act, they won't. Don't actually want to like fix the problem. They just want somebody to like make fun of. Right? They're not gonna, you know. Hey, let's not give this guy more attention than he already has because he's clearly like. But uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, it wasn't. It's what it was objectively not terrible striking form for somebody that may not be like a trained fighter, um, but you know, pretending that you're like the Sigma male is also cringe. Um, but again, you know, whatever. It is what it is. It's the internet. People live and die by either awkward is literally King Kong or. Awkward is literally Hitler or awkward. And, and, and meanwhile, awkward is just getting more and more and more reactions. So people are kind of, people are dumb. It's predictable. It is what it is. Uh, let's do our ask follow. So priority is checking Patreons here. Um, you, thank you, Joker Joy. Uh, do I follow boxing? No, I, I I don't follow mixed martial arts or boxing much at all, not as much. Um, boxing I find incredibly boring, uh, and MMA I find incredibly annoying with the ego. The it building a brand in MMA, that whole like concept for me is like really turns me off. I don't blame the fighters necessarily. Also, the other thing that kills me about UFC as well is I've trained with like a lot of like tier two and tier three UFC fighters. It's been a long time. Um, but they were, and I say this with the utmost respect, all like weird people, really weird people. It makes sense, right? For you to, to pursue that as a career, weird people, really strange. Like think about like esports professionals that instead of sitting all day playing video games, spend all day getting their head punched. I don't know. Maybe it's just the ones that I talked with a qualify. <laughs> but yeah. Anybody that like fully applies themselves to something always is going to be a little weird. Uh, Joe Kajoe, I'm not sure what the plan is with Elo Mastery. I've, I decided to step down from Elo Mastery a few weeks ago and pursue other things. Yeah, sadly. No, I'm not even into the butt scooting there. Draxon or Draken, thank you for the sub, mate. Um I don't I can't stand gi jujitsu. I freaking hate gi jujitsu. I don't and I don't hate it. I just am so bored. Well, it, it, I'm not as interested in gi jujitsu. I'm a no gi guy. But which is why I don't really train BJJ. Okay. Cheers, mate. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. A gi is really strategic, like, gi, gi, but it's just, I like the athleticism of the no gi. What sports do I actively watch? Not that many, actually. I really enjoy playing sports, but I occasionally, I watch a little bit of NFL. Like, I'll watch like the weekly highlights and I'll watch like the Super Bowl, but I, I don't even, I don't watch many sports. Muay Thai is, Muay Thai is really good. I don't watch it much. I don't watch any fight sports, but yeah, Muay Thai is really good. Muay Thai is really good for stand-up. Um, not as familiar with Wing Chun. Yeah, Wing Chun, Wing Chun is a little bit of that, yeah. But yeah. Uh, okay. Why does playing for distraction work so amazingly well in high rank, but in low ranks, it doesn't work at all? That is not true at all. <laughs> that is not true at all. Uh, it's not true. It's not even close to true. No offense, Orb. That is not true. Uh, I'll ask it here because I don't know what other channel would be appropriate. I, I guess I should probably elaborate. Indirect value is always value. If it's not working, Orb, it's because your distraction is at a point in time when there's no follow-up. That's all. That's all there is to it. 
even bad players accidentally will get value out of distraction. Rugby is cool, yeah. I'll ask it because I don't know what other channel would be appropriate. How long does it typically take for Patreon and Discord to sync up? Okay, there you go. If that is obviously synced up, uh, I guess we will delete that and delete that because it's not as interesting. Uh, could I get a Junker King crash course? I'm playing a poke comps like Ash Hanzo. I get poked out so quickly and feel useless. Yeah, you have to be super proactive with your with your off angles. You have to be super sneaky. You might even need to use shout to rotate from like cover to cover, from like moving from point A to point B. The key thing with using Junker Queen and poke comps is that these poke comps will not punish you for using your shout to flank them. So you take either deeper flanks, you move from cover to cover to cover, eventually closing the distance, hitting a knife and being able to pull them in and shoot them. But yeah, you can't sit there and poke and fish. You actually have to like rotate into them. But the good news is that if you take these super deep flanks, you're not going to get like you or your backline aren't going to get rushed on while you're flanking uh, because they're slow. They're ash or They don't have the mobility to punish that. And again, don't, don't be scared to use junk or green shot to rotate if you need to. Do you still consider a far off soft counter to get you with the rework? Yeah, maybe sort of, kind of. Maybe sort of, kind of. Still, still can be a tough matchup, but maybe not as much. I also think the projectile changes helped Genji a teeny bit as well. Because obviously it's easier to hit your rockets, but it's a lot, a lot easier to hit your shurikens. So pharmacy is still going to be tough to play into as Genji, but less so for sure. What situation do you want your trace to go deep uh, within your tank follow up on that space? And which your trace go deep after your tank goes deep? Whenever the tracer has more responsibility to secure the kills, then the tracer should go second. Whenever the tracer has more responsibility to help the tank set up, the tracer needs to go first. Let me give you an example. Let's say you're playing into an on a brig. Uh, not a lot of damage punished on tracer there, but whip shot, very difficult for a Winston to deal with when the brig is good. So you could set your tracer up as a little bit of distraction, and then that creates that split, that distraction that allows your Winston to get a good engage. Um, oh, Gabe, I missed your answer. Give me, give me one second. I didn't, I didn't even realize that blue, you know? But like, let's say you have pulse bomb, right? You're you're more you're, you are more of the kill threat, or they're on like a really squishy backline that a tracer can assassinate really really easily, but you get poked out really really easily. Uh, so it, you kind of need to look at the situation and, and be like, okay, more often than that, tracer should go second. But if your Winston or da dive tank is not able to close the distance safely due to heavy CC, it might be a little bit helpful for you to take a little bit first. Um, when the enemy gets the first pick, what situations do you try to flip the fight, anyways? Like they use all their cooldowns to kill one person. Yes, there you go. They use all their cooldowns. If you're able to track things like Winston Bubble, uh, Malga, Cardiac, anything that's very, very obvious, then it's pretty easy to be able to understand that they're at a disadvantage. Also, if they got a kill, but they didn't control off angles, if they just ran it down main, that's another situation that you can kind of look to leverage. Uh, if you have a lot of ultimates and they've used their last one, uh, that's another situation that you can look to leverage. Um, map control is a big deal. If you, if you commit, cooldowns and they get a kill, but they killing people isn't sometimes getting a kill is less important than getting space. Sometimes. Sometimes. Like let's say that you, the enemy team does three, two, ones group ups and chase down your Ana in the way in the back line, but doesn't clear any high grounds, doesn't clear any off angles. They will lose that fight a lot of time. So being aware of space control and, and cooldown cycling is, is, I think, really important. And while that can be a big thing to chew off, you could start with simple things like, you know, the Rissa used Fortify and Javelin Spin. Even though she got a kill on my tank, she can now die. You know, stuff like that. Uh, Gabe, thoughts on deaths relative to tank as a stat? Uh, when I think about the scoreboard, I see one of my supports is 1.5. The number of deaths is my tank. It means they're feeding a bit, whereas my tank has one of the deaths. It means that they're feeding a bit. I think Desmond is more about the team. I don't. Th I think it's too hard to do that though, because if you think about it, if your tank has more deaths, your that might have been what allowed your team to have fewer deaths, because your tank was baiting, forcing CDs, baiting attention that took a lot of pressure off of your team, and vice versa. Like let's say that your support is playing more proactively, dying more often, but a lot, taking a lot of the pressure. The problem is, is that deaths, especially first deaths, are not objectively bad. They're nuanced topics where a first death can be what allows other people to not die, either by allowing them to disengage or more often than not being the attention, look at me, that allows other people to do things, right? Um, you know, death is obviously like something you want to avoid as like an end all be all if you can. But I, I don't think that there's ever a world where you could really look at death as like giving you anything other than a question that you need to answer. Right, Doomfist is objectively a tank that dies a lot more. 
but he also gets back to fights more. And he also gets a lot more value out of that risk, right? Whereas a character like Arissa dies less often, but also doesn't get as much bang for her buck. Vermillion, you guys are using in the, uh, the Patreon motivation. I love it. All right. I treat with DPS and tank a lot. The DPS is a 76 OTP and the tank is mostly Arissa. Uh, our win rate is probably like 20% when we play against Farah. My tank says it's a 76 job to deal with the Farah. I say they think it's the Farah is a big issue. You should swap Diva. He thinks a tank trade for tank to DPS is not worth it. It, it. Nuanced, it could be. It could be if your 76 is struggling versus Farah, it's probably because your 76 is not very smart at taking off angles. Um, any, any time that Soldier 76 is struggling versus any pokey hero, Hanzo, Farah, Widow, it's probably because they're not creative enough with the angles they're taking. If you're predictable with your positioning, then you're really easy to deal with as Farah. Uh, and then I don't think necessarily you should counter swap Farah unless there's a Farmer C, then maybe it becomes more attractive. But even then, if your guy is playing Orisa and he's beating up on the enemy tank, then that's fine. Like your job is to maximize value and enemy swaps definitely matter, but Farah is only 20% of the enemy comp. If they're Farmer C, that's 40%, which opens them up more to being counter swapped, right? Uh, but even then, like let's say, they're on Arissa, they're on, I don't know, Moira, Roadhog, um, uh, I don't know, Reaper. Going Arissa versus that's probably going to feel pretty good, right? As long as you don't get hooked. So you could be shutting down that three core without bleeding a lot of resources and allowing four members of your team to deal with the Soldier Series 6. Yeah, Diva is a pretty tricky character as well. That's the other thing too. Like Diva is not a super, super easy swap. Uh, so you got to know what you're doing. How do you break I can volley the first point choke? For example, what if the enemy team plays a spam comp for occupant? The biggest thing with breaking the I can volley first point choke, um, let me actually pull up Overwatch here really fast, is utilizing the left room as soon as you possibly can. One of the most common mistakes that I see in lower ranks is like not utilizing that left room as quickly as they can. And so they get stuck in a choke. Like you have to sequentially close space in I can well be first point. And that does usually mean at least taking a little bit of risk. So by the way, talk about chokes, talk about reasons why 5v5 might in some ways is better than 6v6. Choke points is immediately one of those reasons. Now you could argue that that doesn't mean that we couldn't have fixed those choke points. Absolutely could have, but it is one of the cheat ways of dealing with choke points. I can Valdi in Overwatch 1 was miserable, even with the second tank, because the second defensive tank always had the advantage because of positioning. The more people that have superior positioning, the harder it is to break. The way to think about it is like, how important is a choke in a 1v1 versus how important is a choke in a 5v5 or 10v10 or 100v100? You got to see what I'm saying? So yeah, long story short, biggest thing I can say here is utilizing this here and then either looking for pressure here, but a lot of it's just going through here. If you get the opportunity to rotate here with a defensive cooldown as DPS, Tracer, uh, support, tank, anything, if you have mobility, you're D.Va. First thing I'm doing most of the time is flying up here, matrixing, and getting up close, pulling attention my way, and then wrapping this way, and using cover, a natural cover, and you get to here, and then you get to here. This is how you break the choke. So many people just sit here and AFK and AFK and AFK and wait for something to happen. You need to take, the, you need to take action. Unless you're playing like Widow Zen, you have to kind of proactively rotate. You have to rotate. I got <laughs> Tips for first point attack on Blizzard World as Genji. Last question before we go back to... Uh, before we go back to Ask Spilo here. Congratulations on your new badge, by the way, Vitamin C. Yep, that shop off. And the thing is, is that sometimes people hold that shop off angle. But the good news is if they're holding that shop off angle on the left, then the right is more open, right? They can't control both. Like that's the 5v5 advantage is that they can't shut down every flank. They can't shut down every flank. Okay, first things first. If they're close holding, this angle is really good. If they're close holding, this angle is really good. If they're holding high ground, then this rotation here, bam, 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 is really good. And you can kind of harass and distract from here. If you're allowed to get through here, you can actually utilize this here, wrap all the way through here, 
and start to harass from under here. This is really good as Genji up here, okay? From here, if you're rotating to here, you can get to here and pressure from here while off angling from here. And then if they're all the way back here, you can flank, flank, flank here and hold with the mini pressure from here, as well as also looking for pressure from here. It's the same thing. It's the same thing as any character. Like Genji does not want to be standing here doing this. Genji does not want to be standing here doing this. Genji really does not want to be standing here doing this. So you need to find short off angle, preferably with some sort of verticality um, and, and figure it out. Yeah. The best thing you can ever do for yourself as any hero, uh, as Genji, whatever, is to know what your character is looking for generally and practice different off angles. <laughs> what is Genji movement text? <laughs> I, I can't tell you guys. There's certain mechanical things that co only coaches can do. I know something interesting at 620. My question is just the hypothetical because I'm curious where since the enemy team has ultimates and the ashes on an off angle on the stairs and Overwatch only has Katsune, would you say it's good at Katsune main before the enemy gauges in order to bait their ult and gauge? Okay. Take a look at this really fast. So enemy team has ultimates. Ash and off angle on the stairs. Why does it, dude, YouTube does this to me sometimes? Maps and their critical angles? No, not possible. There's too many of them. And they're all hero situational as well. It's a good, it's a good idea if it could work, but it wouldn't work. Right there. You caused a problem right there. Of just yeah, my see, rush. You, yeah, you're seeing it again. This is an unwinnable fight. Yeah, because oh, this is because this is the fight right. So Techie's asking, uh, since the Indian team has ultimates and the Ash is on an off angle and Overwatch only has Kitsune. Would you say it's a good idea to Kitsune main before the enemy engages in order to, like, just Kitsune main here? They respond with ults. Everyone just goes in Ash and possibly kills her. So, like, we use Kitsune to bait their ults and then rush on an off angle? Yes, that would be, be a good plan. Good plan. I'll answer this one because it's Biggie Cheese. No, I hate it. I do not like it. But honestly, every Reddit format is something I don't like. But a part of that is just unfamiliarity. I honestly don't know if it's objectively better or not. It have to give me a few weeks. Um, gotta delete this. If you guys ever want to respond to stuff, just respond to it in threads so we can keep track of it. All right. Patreon priority. Now we do a few more just normal ones. What are my three favorite movies? Ooh, 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 ooh. Ooh, I don't know. I had this list not too long ago. Let me, uh... Let me find out. I honestly don't know. Hmm. Uh, 12 Angry Man is a good shout. Uh, Bahubali, unironically. I think I like the second one a little bit better. Uh, uh, I mean, Dark Knight is always good, but that one's pretty good without saying. Uh, um, mm, not dad list of movies. <clears throat> I just have a broad list of movies. You're, you're not capable of that. Um, Lawrence of Arabia. That one grew on me. I mean, Lord of the Rings is always fine, just broadly, although I've seen it so many times. It's kind of hard because, like, what movies would I enjoy watching right now? Probably not Lord of the Rings. I've seen it too many times, but it, I've, it's because I've seen it so many times. The Prestige.
I've seen Doctor Strange Love. Yep, that's pretty good. A little overrated, but it, it's it's very unique. And I think I think it's hard to call a movie overrated when it's unique. It's just more of a uh, taste, you know. Yeah, I've seen Paths of Glory. I like Paths of Glory a lot. I'm more of a uh, all quiet in the Western Front for uh, Princess Mononoke. Yeah, seen it. It was good. Again, taste weird. You know, if, if it's if it's your taste. Um, I really like The Searchers as well. Probably my favorite Western. Uh, maybe The Good and the Bad and the Ugly as well. That one would be close up there as well. Um, I know this is a lot longer than three, but it, it's, it's so hard to <clears throat> shrink it to three. Obviously, Star Wars, Empire Strikes Back is great. The Thin Man, I think, is a good one. I think that's an underrated one. Maybe not my top three, but probably my top ten, the first one. Vertigo. Vertigo is great. And I really like Whiplash as well. A lot of language. Be cautious. But very, very, very good movie. I like To Kill a Mockingbird as well, yes. I think Gregory Peck, I think. Yeah. Yeah, Gla- Gladiator's on the list. I think. Yeah, I saw Dune too. I liked it. But I'd say these are my chunk of my top ones. I saw everything everywhere all at once, and I liked it, but not quite. I appreciated it. I enjoyed it. Didn't quite make the list. I would say the same thing went for uh, um, Parasite as well. Appreciated it, enjoyed it, probably won't watch it again. Gone with the Wind fan? Yes. Fascinating drama. Yes, exactly, Dylan. It's always hard to know because the list always changes. I try to be a little bit as objective about it as possible. Uh, Blade Runner movies. I have not seen the newest one. I saw the old one. I thought it was fine. Again, not my cup of tea. Not my cup of tea. It was weird. But again, it, it, it was. if it's your cup of tea, I get it kind of a thing. Godzilla minus one. I haven't seen it yet. And I'm, I, I wanted to see it badly, but I missed it. I missed it. Oh, uh, there's a couple others. Actually, you know what? There's a couple of these that we're missing. Because I I have I'm we're cranking through, and I've there's a couple of movies that are not on the list that I haven't added a list yet. Let's see here. Um Okay, you guys I'm gonna look like such a nerd. Um so here's what you do is there's a website called Just Watch, and you can find out where stuff is streaming. And because I'm trying to be frugal with my money as best as I possibly can. I find out where it's streaming and then we will get a streaming service for like a month or two, watch everything that that streaming service has that we have to watch and then cancel the streaming service. Thus all the crappy things on the thing here. Um, no, it's, 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 it's just, it's, it's min-maxing, right? Uh, we're still paying for it, you know, but I'm, I'm trying to not have like seven different subscriptions because I don't have money to blow. Um, I thought Take Shelter was really unique. Its ending was odd. I won't spoil it, but uh, if you are a moody, I'm a, I'm a big, I like intense movies, not necessarily action movies, but I don't, I actually am not a huge fan of action movies personally. I don't like them, but intense drama, psychological drama. Take Shelter was uh, such a unique feel. Um, I had not really, the, the intensity of that movie was like, it's just like, it basically think the surface is just trembling. And you don't really know what's underneath it. It's hard to describe. Uh, the soundtrack I thought was excellent as well. The, the lead actor did an excellent job. Uh, I think uh, it very interesting film. Very interesting film. If you haven't seen it, I recommend it. If, especially if you like psychological drama. Uh, it, it, a lot of tension in that movie. Um, police story, maybe. Uh, and had Hun, that's an, uh, a Bollywood film. I like that. We, I like, I watch not a lot of Bollywood, but probably more than the average person. 
Although I have to set the bar higher because the Indian community tends to go on IMDb and then rev- and review bomb stuff to bump it up to like absurd heights. Uh, so you have to like you have to do your extra research. Yep, I've seen RRR. I liked it. I like I like it. I've seen Train to Busan. Not a huge fan of zombie movies, but it was all right. Uh, but yeah, RRR was was good. Um, Memento is good as well. This one isn't quite on my top 10 list, but it definitely would have made my list of liked movies. All the bold ones here make my list. Maybe not my top, top list, but make my list. Uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, I thought was actually okay. Maybe a little bit self-serving, um, you know, but I I, I, I was expecting a much more weird movie and I, I thought it was entertaining. No, I don't watch anime. I, I will, I will, I am planning on watching the best of the best of anime at some point, maybe. Scary movies. Um, it depends on how much your tolerance for scare is. My, I, I can handle pretty much anything. I don't like gore, but I can handle anything scare level. Um, but a lot of horror movies are really, really bad. Like just not good movies. But if you're looking for actually good horror movies, then I can give you a full list. Sicario really liked the whole trilogy. I forget what the director and the producers, but Sicario was really good. Um, Hell or High Water was the other one on that list, and it was Wind River. Really liked Wind River. Man, that was it. That was a emotional movie, an intense movie. I'm not scared of blood. I just I don't like horror as a form. I don't like gore as a form of horror. Really liked Sicario. Uh, really liked Hell or High Water, really liked uh, Wind River. All three of those movies were, were, were good movies. They're like uh, intelligent action movies. Um, and Wind River made me cry. The ending of that movie made me tear up. That's the first, I was, I don't, I, usually kids being in trouble makes me tear up. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but man, that movie made me tear up. The Departed, a uh, lot of language in this one. Be cautious. Uh, I know you guys are making fun of me for that, but I'm just telling you. But I really liked The Departed. Very intense. Uh, gangster movies, not a big fan of the genre of gangster movies, but the best of the best of gangster movies are really good. Fierce cuss words. <laughs> I just, if I, it, it depends on the cuss word. Some cuss words don't really bother me, but some of them I just prefer not to hear. The Irishman is a great example of a, a gangster film, which I really liked. I really liked Irishman. Edge of Tomorrow is, is fun. Oppenheimer was fun. I think Oppenheimer, okay. I think Oppenheimer was overrated. Uh, it was a good talkie. Um, I don't necessarily need action. I, I like more of this, but I don't, it didn't, I was not as intrigued in the characters as I was. And I don't think the dialogue was as interesting as it could have been. Um, it was a great film, but it wasn't as good as I thought it was going to be. It was a good film. Jaws, I had not seen Jaws until a year ago. Good movie. It's pretty good. Pretty intense still. Diabolique, pretty scary movie. Talking about horror movies, Diabolique is pretty good. Experiment in Terror, uh, a little corny, but it's a good 60s tense. It's tense. It's good. No, I haven't seen Mad God. Dives Out is is good. Yeah, Dives Out is good. Um, Watched Twin Peaks recently. Went into that show without any knowledge of what was going on. And I was like, what am I watching? Is this for real? Um, not realizing that it's self-aware. Um, and I enjoyed it. Although I haven't watched the third season because the third season has some content that I don't really want to watch and there isn't any current filter for it. So maybe down the road. I uh, liked Arcane. Yeah, Arcane was good. Um, that should actually be bold. I didn't actually like the... the I thought the ending kind of lost a little bit of momentum. I think it hit its peak halfway through. House MD is fine. I thought... Saturday Night Light, Friday Night Lights was awful. I thought Supernatural was also awful. I've never heard of two more overrated shows. I think Stranger Things really was interesting first season, but totally coasted off of self-aware and fan service. Uh, Stranger Things just completely lost momentum. It became, it it Disney-fied, it Disney-fied or Marvel-fied, where it became like bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger stakes without actually telling an interesting story and way too many characters. So I think think Stranger Things really lost momentum quickly. Cobra Kai was mildly entertaining at the beginning and then became total cornball. Um, uh, 
Breaking Bad is obviously great. I mean, that goes without saying. Uh, Better Call Saul is obviously great. That goes without saying. Severance, I just finished last week. Wow, that was good. I thought that was so, so interesting. No spoilers, but uh, not not long. Just finished it last week. Very, very clever. Very unique. If you like it, it, it it's not into everyone's taste. It's like I said earlier, it, you may not like it, but it is very unique. Uh, and we're currently working through, I'm going through Mr. Robot right now. Uh, Andor, yeah, Andor is phenomenal. Phenomenal. It's on my permanent list. I'll pull back up my permanent list in a second. Andor is the best thing that Star Wars has done since The Empire Strikes Back. Yeah, no spoilers for Mr. Robot, please. I'm, I'm only in season two right now. We're going through it. Um, a Bronx Tale? Okay. ADLA? No. Uh, Shutter Island. Boy, that movie was overrated. I, I went to that movie with really high expectations and was massively disappointed. It had a really good environment at the start and then completely crapped the bed. Um, I think I'm more bitter about it because of my expectations and the execution. It wasn't a bad movie by any means, um, but for what it could have been, given the environment that it created, was just disappointing. Um, yeah. Uh, Act of Violence is good. All Quiet on the Western Front, obviously. The artist we thought was pretty good. <laughs> the Room. It's sad that I know what you're talking about. Birdman of Alcatraz was pretty good. Breaker Morant was a bit of a niche one, but that one was good as well. Canterbury Tale, very weird movie, but pretty good. Uh, Ice Cold and Alex, again, weird movie. A lot of these are older movies. Dodsworth was good. Double Indemnity is good. El Dorado is good. Um, Great Expectations, the old one was good. Uh, enjoy that. By the way, that's Alec Guinness's, I think, first movie, who is the Obi-Wan. We'll get back to Ask File Hell Tight. Gunfighter was good. The Help, I thought was pretty good. Hotel Rwanda was good. Hobson's Choice was pretty good. Invasion of the Body Snatchers, the old one, was good. KJF, total Bollywood cornball, but fun. Um, the Killers, it's good. Um, Leon the Professional was uncomfortable and okay, but eh. Um... Um, Naked City was good. Pursuit of Happiness, yes, was okay. Was good. Very creative. Again, not my my. I liked it. I appreciated it. Don't know if I watched again. Naked City, The Nanny, uh, on the waterfront's fine. The Nanny is another pretty 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 spooky one. Paranorman was okay. Patterns, hard to find that one. Pretty good. Picture Dorian Gray, pretty good. The Thing is peak. The Thing is good. Safety Last is fun. Sitting pretty is fun. Uh, Spaceballs was, I don't know, like Mel, what's his name? Mel Brooks is really hit or miss for me. Sometimes it's funny. Sometimes it's just, uh, it just, it's just not that funny. Um, The train, good. Whiplash, good. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Mel, Mel Brooks is just, your mileage may vary. Even from, from movie to movie, that's the thing with tough thing with Mel Brooks, you know? But horror movies, let's let's talk about horror movies. Um, if the priest is still here. More psychological horror, but uh, 10 Cloverfield Lane is really good. You don't have to know anything about the Cloverfield movies. It's good. It's intense. Um, Quiet Place, if you haven't seen it, the first one's good. It's clever. It's creative. Again, a little bit, not necessarily horror, horror, but it's, it's pretty, pretty spooky. Um, definitely some intent. It's tense. I don't remember all of these. Um, Conjuring, pretty darn scary. Pretty darn scary. And a good, a pretty good movie too. It, it, it's not as corny as a lot of other horror movies. Uh, and it is completely appropriate, pretty much. It's just really, really scary. Really, really scary. Turn off the lights, turn up the volume, and make sure you're wearing a, a Depends. Um, I, if you enjoyed this first one, the second one is also pretty scary. It's not as good of a movie, it's a little, but it is also quite scary. Um, in fact, the second movie has one of the, I won't spoil it, but I think the second Conjuring has one of the scariest, most eerie scenes of any movie I've ever seen. Um, 
No, I haven't seen Talk to Me. Coraline is eerie. It's a kid's movie, but it's pretty spooky for a kid's movie. Um, if I miss any chat, let me know. Uh, the Haunting, 61. Very eerie, very atmospheric. Um, won't spoil anything beyond that. Hush Hush Sweet Charlotte, a little bit corny. It's an older movie, but it's pretty spooky. The Shining. Uh, yeah, there's, there's too much in The Shining. I, basically, I've kind of ruined The Shining for myself because I, I know enough in it and there's stuff in it that I also wouldn't want to see. So, yeah. Um, the Innocence, weird movie. Very unsettling. Very unsettling. Um, Jurassic Park, I mean, I, 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 that isn't really, it's not really a horror movie, but it, it, it's, it'll make you jump. Um, uh, the others is another eerie one, not super scary, but it's definitely different. Pan's Labyrinth is pretty spooky. There's some scary scenes in that one. Um, I will warn you, it is a very whimsical movie in a good way but has one of the most violent scenes that I've ever seen. And it really comes out of nowhere. Um, so you, uh, you know, it's, it's like, Oh oh my gosh, what just happened on my screen? Kind of a moment. Great movie, but it was like, that is disgusting. Um, it's a blink and you miss it, but yeah, it's, it's pretty spooky, uh, in a different way. Um, the Orphan is also pretty good as well. Or Orphan, it's the, it's the guy, Leonardo del Toro does another one, which is pretty spooky as well. Yeah. Um, um, Spiral Staircase is an older one. It's spooky. I, I'm way more into the atmosphere of, of scary movies. Like I want to feel unsettled more than I want to be jump scared every two seconds. Oh, Insidious. I don't know if I talked about that one. That one is, that one, Insidious is like, I think Insidious is kind of underrated by a lot of the critics. I think it's actually pretty good. I, I don't think it's too silly of a movie. I think it, it earns its scares pretty well. It's not just jump scare, jump scare, jump scare, jump scare. You know, it's relatively creative with how it approaches things. If you haven't seen Insidious, um, that's like, I would say Insidious and Conjuring are like the best of the good old fashioned, clean, scary uh, ones. Um, yeah, the orphanage, yeah. Yeah, uh, I, I get tired of jump scares after a while. It becomes to where it's not really scary, it's just my jump reflex. You know what I'm saying? It's like, okay, I, it, you haven't really unsettled me. And I also don't like gore either. So my niche is there. I have not seen Alien or Aliens, but it is on my to watch list. Exactly, Caduceus. I like being creeped out or unsettled. Um, the House on Haunted Hill, or house, the Haunting of Hill House, rather, uh, I thought was pretty, I watched that full series. I was really sick over Christmas and I watched every episode back to back to back to back. A couple of things I had to filter out. Um, but I thought that was first half good, but really lost momentum second half, I would say. It, it's to the point where its conclusion was relatively unsatisfying and a little bit silly. But I will say The Haunting of Hill House, maybe, maybe for who have seen it, has the one jump scare which has scared me more than any jump scare ever. <laughs> um, I, I, it scared me so bad. I like was like, oh my gosh, what the heck? Um, but yeah. Um, them is an old school, just sci-fi fifties one. It's not particularly scary. It's kind of eerie. It's kind of fun. It is what it is. Uh, if you're into that, there's a lot of movies back there, old times that are pretty good. Um, do, 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 do. I think that's mostly it. Yeah. Do I like sci-fi? I don't like any genre in particular. I would say I like psychological drama if I were to choose any genre more film noirs, film noirs, mysteries and psychological drama. I'm a little bit more attent to, but even then I I I don't I don't really have a genre that I like. Comedies? Oh, I don't know. 
I have to go through the list. I, I, you, you, you can go scroll through the, the, the list there, you know. Um, I've not seen Hereditary. There's probably too much there that's I would have to filter out. I think it's a little too much. I would be down for some of the, the good old fashioned, the, some of the good scares there. But yeah. Oh, I, I saw um, uh, Get Out. I thought Get Out was good. I thought Get Out was pretty good. That was a good example of one which doesn't have to like do anything super crazy, but just leaves you uneasy, which I, I like. Uh, where's the list at? I just scroll through it. You can go back in the Twitch mod if you like. <laughs> yeah, Get Out was good. I thought it was good. I think psychological horror is the best horror. Yeah, I agree. Definitely, definitely agree with that one. Sombra like almost work and lowering because everyone's clumped together on cart. No, when people are clumped, it's easier to distract more people, Rag. Just keep that in mind. It's harder to get isolated kills, but it's easier to distract people from a deep flank. The wailing, no. Just link it. Bro, it's a it's a word document. <laughs> I mean, I guess I could link it. You guys are killing me. I could also go through my shows as well. All right, fine, fine. Here. We'll do that and then we'll call it. Um Um, uh, Avatar, The Office is good. Like it, I, The Office is just, I mean, it's, it's the most Caucasian thing ever, but it, it's fun. It's fun. I would, I've, I wouldn't binge, wa I wouldn't binge watch anything. Same thing with Psych. It's just fun. Riff Tracks and Mystery Science Theater is fun. The Simpsons first eight seasons or so is good. Doctor Who, Doctor Who, you have to episode jump. And I don't know anything beyond Peter Capaldi, around Peter Capaldi on. You have to episode jump. There's so much garbage in Doctor Who that's just like so boring and so dumb. But you can episode jump and there's some genuinely really good standalone episodes. Um, yeah. You're black and you thought, well, okay, good here. Pushing Days is, was pretty clever. The original Twilight Zone. Talk about like good horror. I, the, if you go through like some of the original Twilight Zones, really, really eerie. I think really good. Uh, they, there's a lot of Twilight Zone episodes that have aged really well, even without the, all the special effects. They're just eerie. They're just unsettling. Um, and I could probably go down a list of the episodes there, but we'd be here uh, quite a while. Um, elementary, weird Sherlock Holmes show was okay. Had its moments. Already done. I'll have to check it out. Thanks, Rag. Clone Wars is One good. Most Again, you got to episode sp skip a little bit because it takes a little bit to get moving and there's Parks and Rec is fine. Police Squad, super funny. Mentalist, the main character is really good. The show itself is eh. Jeremy Brett, Sherlock Holmes is good. I got to sneeze. <coughs> um, Batman TV show, The Last Dance, Gravity Falls, House MD. Again, episode skip with some of these. Attack on Titan's on the list. If I were to watch an anime, it'd probably be Attack on Titan. Watching Suits is probably the worst show I've ever seen. <laughs> yeah. 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 Death Note first. All right, good to know. Hey, Alexa. Have I seen Hannibal? No, I have not. I, I don't think I would, Aunt Hannibal would be a movie a show I'd be interested in watching just based off of the the, the topic probably be a, a little bit outside of my taste. You do not recommend Attack on Titan? Do girls just watch nonstop trash? <laughs> oh. Suits is carried by its main actors charisma. Yeah, I feel like the same thing with the Mentalist. The main the main storyline of the Mentalist and the main actor of the Mentalist is really good. But the side actors are so tiresome. They're, they're, not, they're not all that enjoyable. But the whole Red John thing is good. Um, yeah, fair enough. Okay, we're gonna, we're gonna go back in. Oh, I forgot, I have to link it. I'll link it in Ask Spilo. You guys want my my list of current approved movies? 
here. I'll do to watch and I'll do movies and shows. The DOC document, FYI. So yeah, that was a, the segue of all time. Thoughts on Drinker Tons rework. I think it's fine. I think it's fine. Yeah, I think it's fine. I still think second point can be a little bit hard to retake on. I would have liked to have seen maybe some small details to that. I don't know what exactly what I'd be looking for, but I'd have to think about it. But yeah, I think, I think it's fine. Should we give Roadhog armor? I, I, I think, yeah, maybe. Yeah, maybe. I, I think with Roadhog, it's going to be more about more than just this. But so in a vacuum, would I do this? Probably not. Probably not. But I, I, I appreciate you doing the math, and I think you're probably on to something, giving Roadhog some more damage mitigation beyond just self-heal and hitbox or healing. Yeah. How do I make my aim and tracer better? Play competitive, play unranked deathmatch, and that's all. Yes, we solved tank. In fact, the whole Blizzard development team was in my Twitch chat and everybody clapped. And right now, Bobby Kotick unretired and is literally shipping himself in a big box over. And he's going to give me a big kiss right in the cheek and give me a $500,000 check. And then he's going to climb into uh, a pinata and on stream, we're going to beat him with a pinata, uh, with a with a with a with a, uh, uh, a wiffle ball bat, and then he's gonna go, ah, gosh darn, that hurts, and then everyone's gonna laugh. Yeah, it's great. We did it, guys. How did I get into coaching? Ah, that question is is multi layered. Um, I got into coaching when I was a child. <laughs> I coached stuff since I've been a kid. I got into Overwatch coaching since I basically since I hit like gold and I got into Overwatch coaching through doing free VOD reviews at Overwatch University. And I got into team coaching just by digging around in other discords and offering plat diamond teams to do team coaching. So yeah. Guide in Genji. There are guides in Genji on my YouTube. Look up Genji guide. Swilo here. Here. Here's what you're going to do. You ready? Genji guide Spilo. Bam, 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 bam. There you go. I've been wondering this for years. <laughs> Why do pro tracers go for a pulse when the fight is clearly lost? I'm assuming there is a reason. Yeah, it, it, part, part of it's because pros are stupid. <laughs> I'm not going to lie with you. But also part of it is because if you if you pulse is like one of those ults that's kind of hard to hit, whether it's Suzu or you know the situation, right? So if you see an opportunity to hit it, even in a lost fight, there's value out of like messing up the enemy team's respawn so you guys can re can take and retake space faster. Um, so I'd say 50% is calculated to have an easier recontest. You don't get an opportunity to get pulse more often, you take what you get. 50% is pros are just dumb. Pros are just dumb. Yep, plat players have teams. I've coached bronze teams before. Not many of them. They generally don't scrimmage very often, but I've coached bronze teams. <laughs> Spelio duo. Yes, sure, of course, surely. I have a question about plateaus. I was master two before the reset. I'm starting on diamond one, diamond two now. I get daily coaching. I feel like I don't improve anymore. I feel like I've hit my plateau. I know what to work on. I feel like I'm getting worse. It's been going for quite a time. Two months, I'm going to hit my race. I'm going to uh, remember, work harder, not smarter. I mean, smarter, not harder. <laughs> so you're getting daily coaching, probably too much. Probably too much. I, I don't know anybody that needs daily coaching. Do you guys remember Sunshine Bread? Of course you guys remember Sunshine Bread. When I VOD reviewed Sunshine Bread, oh man, it must have been a year ago, maybe more. She was getting coaching every day, playing ranked for four or five hours a day, I think, and then also scrimmaging for three or four hours. And I told her this because I didn't, I didn't know her as well. So I didn't want to, you know, beat on her. But I was like, you know, hey, you got you to gotta scale back a little bit here. You know, you don't need this much feedback, right? She was also half the time during the VOD reviews, she was like talking with her chat and like fumbling around, you know, 
trying the ADD thing, right? And I was like, listen, you, you got too much feedback going on here. You just need to like take a little feedback, apply it on your own, grind at it, think about it, self-review a little bit, manage your time a little bit better. And I, and I knew, and you know, sure enough, she plateaued pretty hard. And I love Sunshine Bread. She's a really, really good streamer. She's really nice. She's really kind. And she's really pretty good at the game, but she's plateaued. Um, and, 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 and it was not hard to see coming because of how she was trained. You have to be intelligent in how you train. And I think for you here, you got to ask what's wrong with the way I'm playing? What's wrong with my mentality? Am I giving myself time to implement my feedback? Am I sleeping well? Am I stressing too much? Um, am I overthinking things? It sounds like right now that you're, you're getting too much feedback. You're not having time to work it out yourself. And it definitely sounds like you're stressed out about it. That's probably why you're plateauing a little bit. Take a chill pill, self-evaluate, find what aspects of your review, that, uh, your, your gameplay you can be improving and, and just let, let it happen. I know it's hard, easier said than done, but that has to be the goal. Well, balancing lectures and homework, yep. Can you break a plateau? Of course you can. Of course you can. But I, you shouldn't even necessarily think about breaking a plateau in terms of rank. You should just be asking myself, what do I need to be practicing and let the plateau break itself? <clears throat> I'm dumb and I can't figure this out. It's bought an individual stream review. For, oh, okay, there you are. We talked about this already. Did you ever have to cancel a coaching session but so disrespectfully unless we're constantly or that it makes sense to continue? No. No, 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 no. I mean, that's that's the luxury of having people buy my coaching is that that is really Im almost impossible to happen. So they paid money. They know me. They know I have credentials, right? So I, I have the advantage of going into a VOD review already having the player's trust. Now, if it's interesting, some of you guys may have watched me coach Overwashed, right? The, the OWCS team with all these guys. And I, I, I know of those guys. You know, I've, I've talked with Custa a few times. Um, I've talked with CarQ a little bit, but I, don't, I didn't really know Apply. I didn't really know Emong. And I didn't really know J3, although I met him in person. I got to hang out with them recently. Uh, and this is more of a content thing, right? Like they're not paying me, you know, whatever. They're not like desperately asking for my help. So you probably have seen me coach Overwatch and I'm a little lightweight, a little bit, a little bit firm here and there, but I'm not going in there cracking the whip and getting these VOD reviews and just hundred percent like laying down the law. Why? I don't have that level of trust yet, right? So we'll talk, we'll converse, we'll get to know each other better and we'll give feedback here and there and I'll, I'll ask them for ideas and I'll try to use where they are at in terms of understanding the game and use that as a springboard. Uh, and, you know, we'll go from there. Uh, we'll go from there. You know, I think even, in, in, and they will get better. Like they have gotten better. I mean, even this last tournament, this last past weekend from the few games that I was able to catch, I saw a lot more off angling. I saw a lot more space control. I saw us layering at times. And that was a huge evolution, you know? So, you know, I think the key thing is like, you just have your amount of trust and respect that you have with a player is the amount of coaching and leadership that you can do. Uh, no, not really, Alexa, not really. Because even then they were asking for feedback. I'd want to see you whip, J3. <laughs> the only thing about console tournaments, I don't really know. Uh, how do I link Patreon to Discord? Uh, just YouTube it, just YouTube it. And if you still can't do it, let me know. How do you improve mental? Like getting boomed after losing close games and playing worse, not enjoying the game as much. Um, I have two. So this is a, a good, a pretty broad question and I'll give you a pretty broad answer. I have two projects that are in the works right now and will be released soon, either this week or next week that will talk about this uh, mental tilt, improving, getting over things, all that kind of stuff. Um, in fact, I just got a message from somebody who is uh, involved in one of them, professionals. So stay tuned. And if you are a patron, you get early release, but you, know, you don't have to pay for that. I'll release it for free, just wait. And Lexa, this is why Lexa is here. <laughs> right, Lexa, where are you? Come on, Lexa, come out of the woodwork. Come here, girl. Lexa. There it is. Okay. How do you come out? <laughs> you know, I still on Lexa. Lexa and Ask Spilo. Name a more iconic duo. <laughs> How do you come up with goals to work on as a team? 
Um, I find it. You know what this reminds me of? There was a video of Kellex. Okay, I, 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 every time I see this video, I posted this on Twitter like two years ago, but every time I see this, it kills me, dude. Hey, I got to show it to you. This is the funniest thing, man. Where is it? No, Brasse, that's not an angle you want to take. Brasse, that's not a silly cat. No, Brasse, that's not an angle you want to take. Brasse, that's not a silly cat. So, this was, this was London no, Spitfire 2021. Brasse, that's not a and this is London Spitfire 2021, and we were in scrims. And as tragic as that team was, that this was Kellex talking to Blase, and Blase somehow found a way to like rocket jump on the drum, rocket jump on the drum to get on top of the drum. And Kellex's job was to kind of like to kind of control the offing, all right? With and he's like, "You want to take Blase? Get down here!" <laughs> nope. I I just I could not I uh, it was just the funniest thing man um yeah jeez anyway that just reminded me anyway thank you Lexi for dialing it back uh how do you come up with goals to work on as a team I find it much harder to do than individual things but as a part of a gameplay is lacking we're bad at teaching and diving I don't know exactly what's wrong when we look at replays we say what we did wrong but we seem to split this very time with some different episode how we're just playing the first of first dive taking us between the current players. The question is, is, are you forcing dives elsewhere? Are you struggling to take angles elsewhere? Are we forgetting to put our tracer and cart elsewhere? You're right. It is. It, it can be hard. Cat Slapper, thank you for the sub. Um, but you need to be looking for, like, that's a pretty general thing. Are we forcing dives instead of setting up dives? Right? You know? Are we forgetting about the value of tracer on cart and escort? We were able to break it down to when playing payload or hybrid, street phases dive, tracer forces cart, the other side becomes someone goes cart, they made we die fight. That, that's not bad. That's not bad. But that still wasn't enough for it to tangibly work on for most of the scrim. But that's still a pretty decent amount for, that's a, that's a good, that's a decent amount. So then when you're playing, I get it doesn't apply to cough or maybe maps that don't have that situation, but then you have another goal. I, I agree with you. I, I, one of the, you know, it's funny. There's a funny story here. I had, one of the first things I struggled with as a coach is, Finding things to work on that was always applicable. And that is a very challenging skill to not find the situational feedback that never applies outside of like twice per scrim, but you got to try. And that in of itself is a skill that is going to be your ability as a team to improve is to be able to recognize and work on those skills. So the answer is I can help you with that. But also if you're having a hard time, that's not because you're stupid. That's not because you're stupid. Um, I feel like when I'm doing something for myself, I usually have 20 things in my soul that I've broken down so much I can work pretty much every game matters to. Well, my goals of the team actually help us improve. Yeah. But you could also look at like, how are you communicating? How are we using ultimates? How are we playing the compositional matchup? Uh, but yeah, you, you do want to try to avoid too many map specific stuff uh, unless you're scrimmaging like twice per day. But yeah, keep, keep working at it. Keep working at it. I think map specific stuff, it can be pretty difficult. Escort specific stuff, maybe it's a little bit better because there's more maps where it applies to. But unless you're the London Spitfire scrimmaging three times a day, playing only one comp, like you really can't do that. Spyro, do please please do more soldier. How much soldier stuff do I have? I feel like I have maybe a decent amount. I don't. You might be right. I might not have that much soldier stuff. Two CP map specific stuff feels strong, man. Yes, naturally. Naturally, sorry, YouTube is taking me forever. Ever played spike ball? Maybe. I don't know. Uh, soldiers. 76. Oh my gosh. Soldier. 76. Spilo. There's one, two, three, four, five, six. Come on. Seven. Eight. Oh, come on. There's, there's plenty of soldier stuff. Y'all just need to take what's already given. That, that's easily my favorite thing ever, which I get. Not everything is perfectly visible, but people are like, you need to do more of this. I'm like, bro, I've already done that. <laughs> it's there. You just have to type it in the YouTube search. Uh, you know, it is what it is. Reinhardt coaching. Don't make me do it. Don't make me do it. Don't make me do it. Ay, 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 
And also, if you're smart, you've already watched them all. Have you? All right, wait a second. N Coaching Vod Compendium, Ryan Art. 27 results. Gold, no way. Gold, Grandmaster, Platinum, Gold, Diamond, Grandmaster, Masters, Platinum, Gold, Platinum, Platinum. Yeah, I don't have any venture coaching. You guys have to stay tuned. Come on. And if you've seen all of these, then you have you don't need more feedback. You don't need more ideas. You guys are just addicted to content. You know what I'm saying? You guys are just addicted to content. You guys need to go out there and touch some grass or something. More is not better. More is sometimes worse because you get too much information in your brain. You don't know how to apply it. Paralysis by analysis. You know what I'm saying? How do you break the mercy player? It's my team's fault because they don't about shoot mentality. You don't. I mean, you could talk with them about it, but like, you know, they, I mean, I don't know, like fact, like teaching them. Sometimes people just have been bad mentalities about stuff and there's nothing you can do about it. You know, kind of goes like with that trust situation. You can't fix people's mentalities necessarily. Okay. Do more grass reviews, please. Dude, I got freaking terrible grass. I don't know who people like who built this house before we moved in like three or four years ago. Bro, freaking this is like weed city, man. It's awful. Like no grass at all. How do I cope when your supports run Mercy Life Fever? It's not that bad. It's not that bad. You have DPS pocket on the off angle. You have a pretty good HBS outputter on main. You just don't like the characters that much. It's all right. They don't off angle. Mercy helps off angles. Mercy helps off angles. And having lack of support on off angle is not enough of an excuse. They won't leave. <laughs> From the pro level coach team perspective, are we tired of Tracer being so integral to the game to roster building or does everyone pro level just like Tracer? Over here? I, I think that most players are probably fine with Tracer being meta, at least the pro level. I think here, here's my thing is like, instead of thinking about like, what are we tired of Tracer? Let's make more Tracers. Like, let's try and make more Tracers and more Winstons and more Reinhardts and more Lucios and more Genjis. You know what I'm saying? And more Junker Queens, you know? More Divas and stuff like that. I know that's a little bit uh, unrealistic to ask. Like, I think I know that stuff takes time, but like, you know, we can get there. How do I stop myself from diving the Widow as Lucio? You don't embrace it. Sojourn's okay, Sojourn's problem is that like Sojourn, the one shot was too much of her identity for too long. She's a little bit better now. She's still popular now because her shift is really strong. But I still think that if they leaned a little bit more into her primary fire and a little bit less away from her alt fire, she'd be better. But I think the reason why Sojourn has such a high pick rate is nowadays it's not even necessarily because of the rail. It's, it's more to do with uh, the fact that uh, she just has a slide. Like you can push, pull, you can, you can play her and dive, you can do anything. I don't get that joke. Am I dumb? Man goes to a doctor, says he's depressed, says life seems harsh and cruel, says he feels all alone in a threatening world with what lies ahead is vague and uncertain. Doctor says treatment is simple. Great clown Pagliacci is in town tonight. Go and see him. That should pick you up. Man bursts into tears, says, but doctor, I am Pagliacci. I don't get it. <laughs> I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't understand. What am I missing, guys? What am I missing? What am I missing? Is it a, who is Pagliacci? Is that like a philosopher or something? Is that a philosopher? I know he's a clown. He can't make himself happy, but that's not funny. That's just like, well, duh. Yeah. Like I don't, it's, it's not, it's not that funny. It's just like, oh, that's. What would be better if says, okay, this is a better version of the joke. Man goes to the doctor, says he's depressed, says life seems harsh and cruel. 
says that everywhere he goes, people just point and laugh at him all the time. And he's constantly being mocked. Doctor says, treatment is simple. Great crown, Pagliacci, and Tana. Go and see him. That should pick you up. Man bursts into tears. Says, but doctor, I am Pagliacci. You get it? That's a better joke because people are pointing and laughing at him, right? Oh, but wait, he is the guy that the doctor's sitting to laugh at. You get it? That's a better joke. That's funny. Yeah, I, you're, yeah, she, shame on you. No, it's not, don't, but stop booing me. I made the joke better. You guys are idiots. How does a DPS roll passive effect when and how a tension engage? Just cleaner, just cleaner. It's not somewhat when, it's just better use of cover, more discipline, less pokey pokey. The best joke, is, is this Rick Roll? This is Rick Roll, right? Rick Roll, Rick Roll, go ahead. When I was young, there was a fella. Uh... Oh, okay. Well, I, I, I'm impressed. I, I, you know what? Just because I didn't get Rick rolled, I will listen to the joke. By, went by the name of... Uh, yes, I read the blog. Jacques de Gautier. <laughs> and he was from uh, Tamiskaming, Quebec. <laughs> and Jacques de Gautier, he was a fella that really thought. And he was smart, you know. He was our hope, I guess. And he, uh, he was... Uh, while I was scrambling to get out of high school, <laughs> Jacques de Gatineau had already... <laughs> I think he just changed his last name. <laughs> well, you know, a man grows. He, he, uh... <laughs> <laughs> but this is the point. Yeah. Dr. Gatineau, you know, he went to McGill University and he got three degrees, by golly. And he went to, to the, over across the pond to the fellers with Cambridge and he even stood up to them. Mm -hmm. And we thought, boy, he's gonna be the next. We had uh, Jean Marchand, Gérald Tertier, uh, Pierre Trudeau, the three wise men of Quebec. By God, Jacques de Gatineau was going to be the next. You give me the next gun. Yeah, but he vanished. And uh, I met him, uh, I started to do stand up and, and travel from here to there and, and to here again. And uh, one, uh, one time I was in uh, Niagara Falls, and uh, by uh, gosh, I went over to the uh, uh, Sea World there. You know how they have the Sea World? You know, with the different fish. You know. The I didn't know that, but okay, yeah. yeah. Yes. Beluga. The Sea World, I've sure. been there many a time. Okay, so I was checking out the beluga whales and stuff, and I look over, and who do you think I see? I hope it's that guy. No, it was, uh, uh, it was just an attendant, but... Uh, <laughs> But he showed me to the place I wanted to see, which is where they feed the, the little baby dolphins, because I love dolphins, you know? And uh, who do I see there but Jacques de Gatineau? And here he is, he's feeding the baby dolphins. And I go up to him and I go, Jacques de Gatineau, I, I feel shame for you. You were our hope. You were to go to Canada, uh, uh, Canada's nation's capital of uh, Ottawa. <laughs> And you, you were to be a great man, Jacques de Gatineau. And we were all, you know, we pinned our, all of, all of Temistikamin, Quebec, pinned our hopes on you. Now that's a, that's a hell of a burden for a man to have a town's hope pinned on them, isn't it, Conan? It is a lot, big burden. So he was feeding these baby uh, dolphins, you know, and I said, I'm ashamed of you, Jacques de Gatineau. You could have done so many great things. And he said, well, he said, I think I'm serving a youthful porpoise. Now, I believe that... Uh... No! No! I knew that was going to happen. I knew that was going to happen. You don't encourage that! Uh, it's like... That was a 40-minute story! It's like somebody... Youthful porpoise? Youthful purpose. Yes. Not purpose. I don't know. Good God. I know. That was, that was way out of line. No, that was way out of line. Who are like you to criticize saying, Oscar Pistorius? <laughs> it's like somebody saying, I got to show you something. They take on a four-mile hike to show you a dog turd. <laughs> <laughs> Look at it. Okay. 
<laughs> well, there's your reel for CBS. <laughs> We're getting, this, Les we're getting this right to Les Moon. Yeah. I gotta have him. You wanna see that every night, Les? <laughs> this guy's got the goods. More Quebecois humor. <laughs> I love you. I really uh, do. You know that, right? Well. <laughs> Chips to stock to stockpile for the next five five months. Prioritize your sleep. Be efficient with your time. F the biggest thing with college is to find what things that you really don't need to do and then don't do them. And that's not sleep. That sleep is definitely one of those things you do. I don't know if it's social media. I don't know if it's screwing around. I'm not saying don't you know chill, but like I think yeah. Coach the ball rework? I'll be able to coach the ball rework immediately. Do you think there are any stupid questions of what do they look like? That's just a really stupid question. Will I cast TD and M80? Uh, no. Not likely. What's a good tank into Winston counters? Sigma, probably. Probably Sigma. Um, Arista's all okay versus theirs as well. Yeah. Nice, Lexa. Nice, Lexa. I think the ball rework was, we'll have to wait and see, Turlins. Do you have any favorite Kovac scenarios? No, I, I don't know anything about Kovacs outside of that, uh, the usefulness of it when it's appropriate. Shut up, Winter Duck. Um, let's do a couple more here. Any advice for someone who's new to coaching to Overwatch? Practice. Practice. Overwatch University. Dig around in r slash competitive Overwatch for teams looking for uh, help. You can also go on my channel here. There is VOD review submissions. People, you can do VOD reviews for free there. Just get started. Put yourself out there. Isn't Vaxa a better Kovacs? No. Vaxa is better for Overwatch specifics, but Kovacs is way more fun. So I recommend Kovacs for somebody who's new to mouse and keyboard because it's more fun. But once you're not new to mouse and keyboard, play Vaxa because it's more efficient, but you just use it for a warm up. Hi, girl. Um, nice, Rad Dad. Nice. Is Mr. Coach a GTA player? No. I, I, I watched some of the, I used to watch a little bit of the old XUC stuff. What is it, like three years ago? When he was doing some of the GTA role play. That was kind of fun. There were there some moments there that were fun. Um, but no, I, I've never played and not really follow up much. Where's the original clip for the subscription audio you have on Twitch? It sounds hilarious. Uh, I do this about every six months. I pull it out. Let me see if I can find it really fast. Um, got it. The attack tour. In fact, this is the irony. This is me watching the sub clip from like a year before. So I'm watching myself watch myself with the sub clip. It was an open division game. You guys remember open division back in 2018. And I was subbing to help. I didn't know what open division was. I thought it was just a random tournament. So... I, they asked me to help sub and I said, sure, but we were playing versus like a gold team and I was like plat. So I was like, oh, that's not fair. I had no idea of what open division was. So I was like, I'm going to do Torp hammer only because otherwise it won't be fair. So we did Torp hammer only and I killed a tracer. Attack tor Torp throw during OD. Mean mercy on my spike, mean mercy on my spike. Yeah. I got it! <laughs> Overwatch coach, by the way. Check it out, boys. I got it! So that's what it's from. I killed some poor random gold tracer. I have no idea where she is, what she's doing. And yeah, I hammer killed her in an OD game. Uh, yeah. Yeah. How does Tracer's change uh, role change from ranked competitive? It doesn't really change. I got it. 
<laughs> thank, you, thank you for the sub, gifted subs, oat milk, Cubano. That's great. Perfect timing. Perfect timing. Thanks, Techie. Perfect timing. Thanks for the gifted subs. Um, in ranked, I see traders constantly playing off angles and flanking often. They're really at the front of their teams. And the comp appears that traders are more conventional and spending use of violence to shoot the tank a lot. Um, yeah, the, the difference between ranked tracers and like tracers and pro play is just the compositions they're playing. They're still playing off angles, but they're going for fewer deeper flanks because they're not playing tracer into pokey comps. They're playing tracer as more of a soft off angler, poking pressure versus. Uh, Hoping this triggers the message. <laughs> yeah, it did. <laughs> Thanks to the sub hitting fall. Uh, and they're playing more for tanks uh, and, and compositions that they don't necessarily need to assassinate. Like, you don't flank assassinate of Moira Kiriko Lucio. You hold an off angle and put pressure and control the DPS. More punch levels versus a scrim team? Maybe. That, it's, it's more the fact that you just don't take deeper flanks because of the comps that they're running versus. Because there's nothing to one clip when they're running Sojourn or Kiriko or Lucio or Tracer, right? So you just more play more for uptime on a soft off angle. You never, you almost never play main, but you do play soft off angles. Also keep in mind the off angle is never one spot. An off angle can be main if your team is on the flank. So if you're running Kiriko Lucio, your, your DPS might be on, an, on, a diff, on a flank and main is an off angle, if that makes sense, right? If you ever had an overhead, you would see Tracer's never stacked on top of her tank and supports. It's, it's, there's split. Uh, what do you say about my question for control item in Kovacs? Kovacs. Kovacs, Vaxta, ranked. And then you generally wean yourself off of Kovacs and use the Vaxta code only as a warm up. I have a question V A X T A workshop code. I have a question. If you have used recall as Tracer mid duel, should you continue to duel or back out? Depends on, on the situation. If she's low and she's not going to get a full recall, uh, if she doesn't have help and you do have help, depends on the situation. Use your sense. Use your sense. The, the sensible answer is the correct answer here, I promise you. Uh, let's do two more. Should you elaborate in Signet Echo's identity improving Overwatch 2? Um, Stow GWS, or Stow, Stow GS, excuse me. <laughs> Thanks for the sub. I appreciate it. Um, yeah, I think Sig is just healthier because he wasn't the guy that permanently shut down off angles. He also now has to think about main control as well, which added dynamics and difficulty towards Sig Sigma's positioning and decision. Where Sigma was more of the double shield enabler where he just shut down on any off angle 24 seven. Now he also has the responsibility of a main tank, which made him a much healthier kit design. Um, whereas Echo was just basically burn tank, was really good at burning tank. And now tanks HP pool is a lot higher. So it's a harder to just burn tank, right? So you can't just stick and beam a tank anymore. Yeah. Have you ever watched Peaky Blinders? No. Uh, I've heard good things about it. I've heard good things about it, but I, I have not seen it. Okay, how are we doing? Um, we'll call it there. We're, we're catching up eventually. Eventually. <laughs> it, it just might take some time. Um. Can't wait to see mine answered. Oh, wait a second, Techie, you're I did answer yours. You're uh don't forget, you're um I, I answered yours, Techie. You're you got the uh, Patreon bonus, don't forget. I did yours. Go back and find it. Oh yeah, you get Patreon. Remember to ask Spilo priority, bro. Yeah, I'm way ahead of you. Yeah, that's okay. Just go back in the Twitch VOD. No worries, no worries, no worries. I'm just proud of myself for not forgetting <laughs> about the Patreon priority. I thought for sure I was gonna forget. I remember them. You were the next one? Oh, man. So close. Got to get them next time. Um, is there anything here worth watching here that's short? Your team sucks, not you. Is this going to be short? The way that you remove metas is you take the stuff that's falling behind, that's not in meta, and you buff it. You don't take the things that are working, you nerf the shit out of them doesn't work that way. The moment you do that, you've created a worse meta. You've created a toxic meta because people are upset and now they have to look for something that actually works. It's a bad direction in terms of development. The way that you... Huh. That is... Uh, 
That is a take of all time. That's power creep, bro. Power creep is something that inevitably ends up breaking the game because the game was designed around a specific power level for most characters. And if you do that, eventually it snowballs. The answer, like everything, is nuanced. Sometimes you need to nerf characters. Sometimes you need to buff characters. But you try to still keep the equilibrium approximately the same. Otherwise, you break you break fundamental systems in the game. Yeah, this is... Maybe it's different in single-player games. I, I don't feel like it should be different in single-player games, but that is, that, is a, that is a take of all time. That is a take of all time. That is objectively not true. Um, this is all... Okay, I'm interested in any of these two. Hammer time. I've seen the Marbler video. I'm not as interested in Marbler videos. They're more about the theory. There's nothing really to Hammer time. So Venture is not a DPS. Let's set up a poll, y'all. Uh, Venture, Grandmaster Secrets, your team sucks. Let's set up a poll. La -la -la. Venture, team sucks, Grandmaster Secrets. Which ones do you guys want to see? I'll start a poll. All right, poll's life. Poll is life. Poll is life! Um, we might do two, depending on how fast we go. Yeah, Marble does a good job editing. I think Marble is a good one when it comes to like finding game bugs or potential issues that need to be rooted out. Yeah, we might we might watch a, a few of them. We'll see how fast they go. These are all relatively short, so that's good. Um, Are, why are games evolving backwards? I don't know if that's the case at all. It's clickbaity because Overwatch 2, but... Okay. Uh, team sucks. Where was that one? Yeah, I see, I see, Alexa. I won't do this one. This is a pretty interesting video, but I actually VOD reviewed Commando X on that one a long time ago. Because in Toronto, he told me that he was going to get into content and he sent me some of his early stuff and I gave some feedback about how to improve the quality. So I hammer time this stuff like a year and a half ago. Oops. Gosh. Recently, I recorded a little short video on my YouTube channel that was kind of joking about uninstalling Overwatch 2, but I accidentally did click the uninstall button and did not stop the process of uninstalling the game. Um, totally by accident, by the way. And that's why I was forced to play any other game than Overwatch for the past Trigonus, month. Trigonus, look at this time, mate. You know, I went back to my favorites. One like month away from the new, uh, some tribes badge. some as well, gave it a shot. I played some Garden Warfare 2 as well. And you know what? I enjoyed those games. It was quite fun. But then some updates dropped for Overwatch 2. And I was kind of thinking, well, I should make a video about some topics that are dropping left and right. They're kind of interesting, kind of important. So might as well go back and record some footage because I don't like stealing footage from anyone else. So I installed it back and... Honestly, it was one of the most miserable experiences I had in a while. Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Disgusting Discussions. Today I am going to try and find out why is Overwatch such a miserable experience. Last video I was talking about Overwatch. Uh, was and to be very clear, this is a, 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 sm a smaller YouTuber, so we don't want to like beat up on somebody like this. So we're going to be we're going to be respectful. Of course, something positive because the season 10 changes that are about to drop are truly, in my opinion, and I still stand by this opinion, are truly something special. And I believe the game is going to be a little bit better after those changes, especially for free to play players and basically any new player. But still, the game right now is in a very questionable state. I played competitive back in, like, I don't know, 2019, 18 or something like that. And I, and, and I was decent, you know, hitting Grandmaster and all that stuff. Don't want to brag. But I played competitive and it was a, an enjoyable experience, right? But Overwatch 1 and Overwatch 2 are two separate entities. They are not the same. There are many differences that I will not be going through in this video. I want to talk about why Overwatch 2 specifically feels awful to play. You see, I like playing tanks. I know, kind of an oddball over <laughs> here, but I like them because they are unable to die quickly. That's that's like the simplest way I can put it. And I just like disrupting the enemies and like causing chaos. That's why I play characters like Doomfist. That's why I play characters like Reinhardt, like Ball. All of these characters are all. Awesome. It's kind of funny because the statement that they don't die quickly is like kind of a misnomer of tanks. This isn't critiquing his thought process of like when you select a character. But remember, what's the problem of a tank? The job of a tank is to generally put themselves at a higher risk and hold the enemy team's attention for longer. But it also comes at the higher risk of a chance of dying. 
I, I would not pick tank if you were trying to avoid deaths. I, I, I don't think that. Also, not doing their job, which is just going in, doing chaos, doing damage left and right. CC. Yeah, the, the enemies, tank talk us earlier in the video. Which is don't worry though, we'll have it. Uh, I'll have it up on YouTube probably later this week. And the games that you are probably seeing in the background, has background footage for this video, this voiceover. They got me thinking. Like, there is this one specific rule in Overwatch. There is well, no. Well, it's it's not just it's not just Overwatch two tank either. I, 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 any. MMO, anything where there is a tank, a tank is generally a very high chance of dying. Honestly, more higher than any other role because it's the whole job of the tank, right? For this video, this voiceover, they got me thinking, like, there is this one specific rule in Overwatch. There is no individual effort that you can do to make your gameplay peak. And that's a very weird statement to say. And let me explain. As a tank, your job is to do what I just said, which is disrupting the enemy, making space for your team and being the frontline, basically, right? But you cannot do that if you don't have the proper support from your team, aka healing. This job is way more harder as well if your team that is responsible for doing actual damage, which is bursting the enemy down, diving the backline of the enemy team, or just, you know, completing your dive with some nice damage from, for example, Farah rockets or Junkrat spam, any of the, any kind of damage like that. And, and let's just say that all of those people fail to do their job. They are significantly worse than you and you are just forced to play with them the whole match. Every single dive of yours will fail. Everything that you will try to accomplish will feel useless. Like you just wasted your time, you just wasted your life, you just wasted your opportunity by diving deep and not accomplishing anything at all. So then you think, okay, I was lacking some healing, I was lacking some damage, maybe tank isn't for me. I go swap to a different role and I go play support because, you know, you cannot screw up playing support. If you're doing a good job on a support, then surely your team will succeed as well, right? But then you run into an issue. As a support, most of the times, you lack some damage. And usually, when the enemy team is kind of not stupid, they will walk forward on you and they will try their best to kill you because you are that precious support backline that is keeping the entire team alive. So then what happens if your tank fails at their job? There is no health pool that will be shielding you or, you know, keeping the enemies away. And what happens if the DPSs of your team are kind of sleeping at their job? Well, nobody is dying from the enemy team either. So you're left alone to face the enemy team's wrath and just bend over, basically. <laughs> Especially as some squishy heroes like Ana or Mercy, for example. So then you think to yourself, wow, screw this. I don't want to heal people. I want to get matters into my own hands. I want to be the damage dealer. I want to carry my team. So then you play damage and then all of a sudden you start to notice, wow, as a damage hero, there is a significant I'm waiting for the conclusion here. Disposal. There is no healing, there is no frontline, and you are just left there doing basically nothing. It's basically just tickling the enemy team with your rifle or barely getting a peek or two if you're somewhat lucky or something. I don't know. And all of that combined is packaged in a nice one experience called Overwatch 2, which is just wonderful. I came to a conclusion that your experience, no matter what you are doing, will always depend on the enemies or your own teammates, or even more exactly on your teammates, because the enemies don't actually cause that, oh my god, you're failing at your job. No, when the enemies are doing their job, you will notice that, but when your teammates are not doing their job, you will notice it even more. So it comes full circle. You're playing tank, you're lacking healing, you're playing healer, you're lacking damage, you're playing damage, you're lacking the space needed to do your damage, to do your job. So this heavy reliance on your team is something that is really pushing me away from this game because usually when I want to play video games, I just want to hop in casually, just shoot the enemy bad guys, help my team get to the objective, you know, help some virtual buddies with their adventures by keeping them alive, even if they aren't supposed to be alive because they're overextending like idiots. These kinds of things are what I enjoy. And I need to admit, I have been brainwashed by Team Fortress too heavily with this because I've been playing that game a lot recently and it's just a lot of fun. It's just a lot of fun because you are not locked back. You are not held back, should I say, by your teammates. All of that experience that you're getting while playing Team Fortress 2. Why? What's the difference between Team Fortress 2 in this? Are the characters more self-sufficient? Honest question. I think I played Team Fortress 2 like three times. I honestly can't remember is on you. You don't need to rely on some pesky support to keep you alive because otherwise you cannot literally pick anything or you cannot even go forward because the enemy team has access to this kind of healing. Yeah, it's just the impression that you're... It, 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 team Force is true. Is, I got the impression Team Force is true is where you could kind of just do your own thing and you just had... Yeah, you had, like, like, like Matt was saying, you have even less carry potential, but you, you could just take a... It's like playing Team Deathmatch, essentially, and, and Call of Duty, right? You could pop off this kind of support you cannot right. play tank because usually your team doesn't follow up because they're not esport experts they're not they're not your friends they are just random gaming people who are just thrown in the same lobby with you by accident but in team fortress 2 you have health max you have weapons that can heal yourself that all right well, well we'll call it there i think that this obviously kind of goes without saying this is somebody who's i'm not sure what they're expecting like this is it's a team game this it's actually more solo carryable than it was in overwatch 2 just by the nature of you know five is fewer than six so um, you know, it is what it is. We'll, we'll move on. I was I was hoping there to be some sort of like a clickbait, like, oh, this is a cool way of thinking about it, something that Overwatch can improve, and it just sounds like somebody that doesn't know what they're talking about at all. It is what it is. The advice that got me to Grandmaster. I will go over all the actions you need to take, the beliefs you need to have, and every piece of advice that helped me rank up to the highest rank possible.
First of all, I want to show you proof. This is me, a clip of getting Grandmaster and flexing it to my friend. I actually sent this to my friend. And now let's get into it. First fundamental belief that you- So is this, this is probably not an actual Grandmaster player. Uh, just somebody who hit Grandmaster and using their advice, which doesn't mean their advice is bad. It, it might be their advice is very good. In fact, I generally like the advice of people that have grinded their way to Grandmaster rather than people that have been Grandmaster since like season one of Overwatch and can't even remember what the process was like. You need to have is that you are your rank because of your skill. There's no other reason. Like it's not your teammates. There's not some conspiracy theory going against you. It's just you. And to prove this, you can go to Google and Google unranked to GM and then your hero. And you will see a GM player because of his skill getting to GM through all your ranks. So it's your fault and your skill level that you are your rank. No teammates, nothing else. I will give you a checklist. And you don't check everything, then you're probably some sort of low rank or hard stock for a really long time. First thing is you need to play at least two hours a day. Playing less than two hours a day is way too little time to actually rank up. Like it just takes time, guys. There's nothing like fancy about it. You need to take more time in order to improve the best time to actually play is around four hours all right number two playing with your friends your friends are keeping you hard stuck and here's why your friends doesn't care as much about the game as you and because they don't care about it they will never improve and they will hold your lobbies down because imagine your friend is like gold and you actually improve 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 and you get plat now you'll get gold games when your skill levels plat and you'll get all these bad habits because you play with your friends also you will get their mindset which is not optimal for improving at all so keep it separate improving at the game and playing with your friends you can play other games with your friends you can play other game modes with your friends but just don't play ranked just play solo queue and that's it all right, practice one hero at a time. Dude, this is literally just an IOSTEX video. <laughs> this is literally like IOSTEX like university, you know, you know what I'm saying? This is so important. Like I see all these people getting like a full rainbow color profile and never improving. Imagine I've like- Yeah, this is good advice. My time is limited. I only have like two to three hours a day. If I spend that time mixed between like 10 heroes, then I get 10% good on every single hero. And I could be getting 100% on one or 50-50 on two heroes, which is way better than just playing all the possible heroes that you can. Because many people say, I can play every single hero, but no, you can't. Like you're you are not good at all the heroes. You are bad at all of them. It's better to be good <laughs> at one hero than be bad at like five. Don't swap what you I, mean, I think I think the obvious thing thing is that there's obviously like some nuance missing here with the play time. There's obviously nuance here missing with the hero pool. But for a short video, this has been fine. Practice, keep playing that hero. First of all, you need to go through. This is an IOSX video, bro. This is an IOSX video. Why you get countered? This is an IOSX video. Better something else. Like you need to find a way to actually deal with the problem. When you just swap, you will not improve. Imagine I play Zen and I get against a dive team. I need to learn how to deal against a tracer, and the only way I can do that is by playing against a tracer. Yes, you will lose, but it is super good to get that practice in because you will improve your aim, you will improve your positioning, and you will understand way more than if you And I'm not saying that as a criticism. It's just, it's literally like, these are like the pillars of like Iostux coaching. You know what I'm saying? Brick. Because with Brick, you don't learn anything with the aim. You don't learn anything in terms of Zen and you will never improve. And not that he has a monopoly on these points. It's just, there are definitely big things that Iostux is always prioritized. Thing, your hardware settings. If you play with a, like a 2001 Apple Pro laptop, you need to get like a good PC. Like there's a bare minimum of 144 hertz, a good mouse, a normal sensitivity that is within the Pro range. And like if you have any of those really weird, super high settings that doesn't make any sense, swap them. You can go to Google and you can find- This is an ISX video, man. Like, <laughs> setting, it's pretty boring for you guys to watch. Mm. Right, cycle. The number one thing that people don't do is reflect. Like most people just play the game, they do, they do, they fail, they do, they fail, and they do the same thing over and over again for years and years and years. And after that, they will never rank up. No, 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 no. Uh, awkward, awkward. This is this is stuff that Iostex and I have been saying since 2018. I think Iostex gets a lot of credit for this, and I'm going to give myself some credit for this. Awkward isn't the first person to come to this, and I don't have a monopoly on this. This isn't like people don't. You don't have a monopoly on good game principles, you know. I, I think I yeah because they're never changing, and the only way you can get better is by reflecting, and this is what you do. You play the game, you fail, and then you reflect. What could I have done better? What is what, what happened over here? Like you need to reflect, and then after you reflect it, you're gonna play some more. That's all you do. Like every time you die, why did I die? This little process of reflecting will actually rank up so much. Like most people don't even do this. And if you just try by doing this, you will instantly get better way faster than anybody else. Well, how do you reflect? Well, it's pretty easy. You just ask questions. <laughs> there are different kinds of questions that you need to ask. Like, why did I not win? Why did I not use my nade right here? Why did I miss? Why did I die? There's like many questions that you can ask. Yeah, the re reason I say it's IO6 is because IO6 is like the first guy that was like the first actually good Overwatch coach out there on YouTube and so on. But the most important part is just asking the questions itself. Because without a question- Because ISX was before even Jane. ISX preceded Jane get by a pretty answers, long period of time. One more thing, don't swap roles. I see so many people spending like multiple heroes, but also on different roles. Like imagine you are improving on DPS, don't play tank. Like if you play tank, just play tank. That's it. Because if you spread your time out against <laughs> multiple heroes, you will not improve as fast as possible, which will actually hinder your growth.
I gotta give you some fundamental beliefs. Number one, this is gonna take a really long time. Like the average win rate of somebody improving is 51%. So yeah. I calculated back in the days when there was actual SR. So if I went to plat to Grandmaster with like a 51% win rate, it would though. take me around <laughs> 1500 uh. games in order to just rank up a tier. Think about it, 1500 games to just rank up a tier. Like that's, that's a lot of games and that takes multiple months. And there's you, you guys ready for something funny? Iostux is most well known for the GOATS Bible, but that's probably one of the weakest forms of content that he put out there. His GOATS Bible was not good. His Goat's Bible was not good. Uh, it was. It had some good advice, but overall, the general playstyle was not good. That's the irony. Iostex's like fundamental approach to the game and like his mentality and stuff was like really good, but his his, his actually like strategic stuff wasn't like wasn't that good. Yeah, yeah. I, I've read though. I read the whole Goat's Bible. I would. I read the Goat's Bible on the plane to Sydney um, for a contenders tournament. No faster way to do it. Maybe you have some sort of talent. You are so like Iostex is most famous for his weakest form of content, which I think is kind of a shame. I think there's a lot of his other stuff that was really good. Well, that no, Iostex is retired. You already have thousands and thousands and thousands of games under your belt. And if you don't have that like me, then it's just going to take a long ass time. And you just need to put in the hours and the work in order to improve. The next belief, when you hit the rank, you are always capable of getting it again. Think about it. Like you already had at some point the skill level of reaching, I don't know, plat one. Then you don't need to worry about reaching it again because you know you can. And this will save you a lot of mental baggage whenever you're on a big losing streak. Because every time you get on a losing streak, there will come a winning streak eventually, as long as you keep getting better. Now I said the in-game stuff with the checklist, I gave you some fundamental beliefs. Now I'm going to go for out-of-game stuff. You must love the game. If you don't love the game, you will just quit. All right. And this is really important. Mm -hmm. I hear so many people saying, I quit when I get Grandmaster or I quit when I get X rank. Just quit right now. You won't get any pleasure from getting mm. to the rank. You'll just get a miserable, miserable time. Just quit that's, right now. That, that's a good point. Mental baggage. Like, there's so much mental stuff that could be wrong. You can have, like, insecurities. You can have stress. You can be heartbroken. Your physical location could be really bad. And you need to get those <laughs> before you go in game. Like, imagine you're in a war and every there are bombs <laughs> dropping all around you. You will not. Improve. I love the energy of this guy. The same way you're going through a heartbreak. You're thinking about your need. Fix that problem first. Like, do Google. If, if you have like really mental bags or any like super annoying insecurity, go and Google shadow work. That's one of the best things you could do. Another point is to exercise. If you are really lazy, if you are out of shape, then no, it's no, so no, bad. I sped it up Just a little walking bit. half an hour a day will boost your brain activity and it's really good for your health. Please exercise. So important. The same is with eating really well. Like if you eat McDonald's every day, your brain will become worse. It's so bad for you. Just don't do it. Just go and eat some fruit and you'll already feel <laughs> way better. And because if you're way better, you'll improve way more. Next point, <laughs> sleep really well. Like I talk about eating, I talk about exercise. Uh, and now you also need to sleep well. Get eight hours of sleep a day. Like the moment uh, you work is in your sleep. So if you don't sleep, then you will not improve as fast as possible. <laughs> Please just sleep eight hours a day. Trust me, when you have that extra energy to just put in more work of, of ranked games to get more improvement, that will help you so much. All right, next thing, talk to people. Social interaction <laughs> is really good. You don't have social He's popping you off, bro! Like, I don't know He's about popping you, off! I, people, I feel horrible. And this is directly He's popping off, when bro! Really bad, that's when I talk the least to like people around you. Get a job, get some hobbies, and just talk to people. That's so healthy for you. And just, like, I feel weird saying all these basic stuff, but it's really important in order to improve. All right, here are some beliefs that will stop you from getting Grandmaster. Uh, the first one is there is one secret that gets people to Grandmaster. One tip that's fixing it all. Well, buddy, I'm here to break the news to you. There is no one tip that will fix all of your problems. I am giving you like a thousand points right now because there are like tens of thousands of things that you could be working on. There's no one tip. There's nothing you could immediately do to become Grandmaster. There are a lot of things. Like you, when you watch a guide, you can watch a guide on game stamps. You can watch a guide on aim. Fine God, no, that, that would be my the list. Thing you do is just work on your mistakes <laughs> one by one. And that is how you actually improve. And then you will rank up. Just play the game. When you have two hours, play the game for two hours. Don't watch YouTube and waste your time because the only way this you get better is by playing the game. Sorry to break it to you. Like you need to have like 90% playtime and 10% inspiration from like YouTube guides, pro player vods, and you then need to test it out in game. Next belief, new season, new main. When you swap your main every single season, you will not improve because it will take a long ass time to get better. I'm repeating the same point over because it's really important May to know. Maybe, I'm, I'm okay with dynamic hero pools. In the next season, none of the skills will translate over. You need to stay on one hero for multiple seasons and you can go to the top 500 leaderboard and you can see that most people just- One season for one hero, for one hero is a good amount of time to learn that character. Three characters. Number three, meta is super important. No, it isn't. Like when you're gold, meta doesn't matter. When you're plat, meta doesn't matter. The only time when it really starts to matter is around like high masters, and even then you can push through it if you just are skilled enough. Don't believe those tier lists. Don't watch those. Those are really bad. You can get so many weird beliefs. Like my character is not that's, that's true. So no, like your character is not <laughs> no. the reason why you want your, rank. It's your skill level. So don't watch those tier lists. Don't watch meta breakdowns. Don't believe in the meta. Meta comes later. We are like grandmaster itself. The next belief is he is ranking up way faster than me. And he doesn't believe any of the stuff. 
First of all, there are multiple races of Rome. And second of all, there are many people that have a different gaming background. Imagine you are playing for years and years and years your whole life. You will learn some skills like aiming, no. positioning, while you are shouting no. the games. And all the skills will translate over. No. When you're new, when you have no skills at all, and you don't have that luxury of just sheer amount of talent, you need to just improve yourself over and over and over again. They did that as well, but on a different game when they were younger, and you just need to put in the hours and the work. Most people that are Grandmaster have tens of thousands of hours in different other games, and that's why they instantly rank up before you. This character is absolutely broken, so I cannot play it. This goes back to the meta point. Like, imagine Genji's hard meta. Well, like, unlucky to you, Blizzard is gonna nerf it eventually. And when your character is <laughs> bad, they're gonna buff it eventually. So just trust Blizzard for balancing the game, and you just keep getting better and better and better, and your meta will come. Don't swap your heroes because it's good in the meta, because it doesn't gonna help you. Eventually, you will swap back to the hero that you play, and all the time is gonna be wasted. My teammates are holding me back. No, your teammates are not holding you back. You are your rank because of your skill. Period. There's absolutely nothing I could have done here. This is the worst belief to have. Imagine you want to improve. The whole point of improving is just getting reflection and then trying out something no. new. If you think about your the game and you said, yeah, I could have done nothing right here. Well, good luck actually doing something different and improving. You will not. And then you will stay hard stuck forever. I need to win every single game and I can't afford to lose. Well, I have good news for you. Because you don't need to have a 100% win rate. You don't need to carry every single game. The only thing you need to do is just get uh, above 50% win rate and no. you get Grandmaster eventually. So aim for that 51-52% win rate, which is completely <laughs> average. Like, there's nothing new I'm saying right here. There's all like old information. And if it's your first time it will just take a really long time in order to improve so as long as you keep getting better your average win rate will be 51 percent and it will take thousands of games to get to grandmaster i am too afraid to play ranked well buddy nobody cares about your rank everybody <laughs> ranks, cares about themselves not about your rank if you're insecure about your rank just hide your profile you don't need to do anything special just play ranked and ranked is the best way to practice and this immediately leads to my next point is that most people believe they can only practice in quick play well buddy nobody is trying a quick play so just practice in ranked well and buddy <laughs> nobody fine. everybody is taking a hit when they learn something new but because they're coming better faster because they're playing with harder opponents they will rank up way faster than if you need to translate that skill into ranked because eventually you need to try out the new skill in ranked anyway so you better be doing it sooner than later all right now you have all the beliefs that i have now i can give you some normal things to be expecting from your gameplay first of all you will have throwers in your game that is completely normal everybody has them you will get smurfs you will get levers you will get like a 10 row losing streak you will feel helpless at times you will be flamed called bad trash you'll get racist and get shit talked in chat you will be avoided and you will rage you will get a feeling that you don't deserve the next rank or you will get the feeling that you deserve the next rank those are all completely normal things to have so just just know that you can expect like getting throwers, getting like people really mad at you, and that is perfectly fine. You're good. Like people hey, man. You, and nobody cares about it's you. It's been good, y'all. It's, it's been really good. Anyway. Well, that's it. Uh, it's all been nice having a job. The end, actually, I could probably the young upstarts. I, I never fresh. thought it would that's happen to me. So I thought that. I would always be the, the top hey, yo, dog. Hey, you know what? See you later. It was inevitable. I was gonna be replaced. It was only a matter of when, not if. It's been guy. It's been good, guys. I it was good. Obviously, it's good. Uh, it was good. It was good. Uh, it was a good video. I mean, obviously, like, you know, there's a little, some nuance lacking here with some of the hero pools and playtime and so on. But, I mean, really, that's part of making a YouTube video is you lose a little bit of the nuance. And I don't think there was any crucial nuance. Um, yeah, it was a good video. Give it a, give it a good like. That was good. I liked it. A good job. Oh, nice job, Anton. It's good. And uh, the new, like I said, the nuance lacking was was generally not the most important stuff ever. So I'm not I'm not crying over it. All right, let's look at Ralph's video really quickly here. The game is really in a healthy state, there should be actually lots of counterfeiting. It's currently three hours after Venture's early access release, and the Overwatch community are doing the best impression of a cheeky owl by sitting on the fence. How could anyone know anything? Let's wait to see what the pros do. But we ain't no- <laughs> <laughs> why, am I, why am I always being violated in Ralph videos, man? Best impression of a cheeky owl I hate this guy. Fence. How could anyone know anything? Let's wait to see what the pros do. But we ain't no fences. <laughs> why did he say you will die alone? Here, my star is more, proudly manning the town bell and screaming while I smell gas like a canary in a coal mine. Here at number 40 and the newest DPS hero, Venture, is a tank. Very sneaky, Blizzard. I see what you're doing. You can't fool me. Don't want to talk about 6v6, but- Now, 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 here, here, here's, here's the thing, guys. Here's the thing. Why is Venture not a tank? Why is Venture not a tank? Remember, what was our definition of an Overwatch tank? Not, 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 an, not a subjective definition, objective. How long can Venture maintain pressure? without being forced out. Right. Can't stay. If there's not enough length of pressure to be able to maintain. Can't hold space near long enough or consistently enough. I, the HP is part of the reason, right? But they're just, they're just not able to hold space. <clears throat> now, they do have that 
range limitation, which is something that we look for in a tank as well. But yeah, I'm not able to hold aggro for long enough. Start bringing in the synergies through the back door. I don't mind. You can keep doing it. That's okay by me. Oh, oh god, they buffed. Yeah, they. Thank you, Winter Deck. The they, they know, right? They they know they did this, right? To bring people up to speed, Adventure has a lead plate which deals 80 direct damage, 16 minimum AOE damage with 45 maximum, a dash whose first hit does 70 damage and hits repeatedly afterwards for up to a max of 100 damage total, a quick melee which does the normal 40 damage. Now they do have the extra HP and such, but I, I don't, I don't, I don't think it's enough. Run and a burrow ability which takes a hot second to get started and allows you to jump out of the ground into the. The funny thing here is that like. This is where if you wanted to start like playing like semantics about whether May is a tank or, or, or old DPS Doomfist was a tank, how long could old DPS Doomfist stay in? Well, if you got big abilities and you had ultimate and you, there were times where you could definitely put DPS Doomfist in Overwatch 1 as a tank, you know? And, and you could, maybe a May with more HP, Maybe it could be a tankish because you could you can wall and I like there's, there's aspects right with a minimum of 80 damage and a max of 110 when you're right on top of the enemy. That's pretty much it. They can dash wall underground for more movement and a shorter cooldown. Their ultimate does four shot base that deal 125 per piece of damage for 180 damage. And over gives you any impression that Blizzard actually knows what tank is or does. Okay, so what is a tank? This oh, is types of tanks. This is timely. 66 format. Firstly, there was a poke enabling or poking tank. These guys take space at range by poking out the enemy team's poking angles. Burning. Well, the reason why Tracer is good at making space is because she could take any angle that she wants. Tracer is generally not very good at continually holding attention. It's more cyclical, like very briefly and then out, and briefly and out. She's not able to hold as much attention for a long period of time, right? <clears throat> now, if Tracer had a stronger form of self-sustain uh, and maybe slightly more HP, like let's say you had Tracer had 250 HP and Tracer had a stem pack, you could you could argue that Tracer has would would have like tank like qualities because Tracer would be able to hold and shoot and shoot and shoot and shoot and shoot and shoot and shoot, shoot an angle for a long time. Um, but I don't. Yeah, exactly. She's not quite wrecking ball in terms of how much attention she can manage as much. <clears throat> their resources and generally staying by cover without having big incentives in their kit to press W towards the enemy. These are your sigmas. Then there's what I call off tanks. These characters can be pre okay. by poking out the enemy team's poking angles, burning their resources and generally staying by cover without having big incentives in their kit to press W towards the enemy. These are your sigmas. Then there's what I call off tanks. These characters can be pretty much anything in terms of the rest of their kit, but are defined really sharply by the fact that they give big bursts of resources to other characters on their team. These are your Zarya's and Divas. Then there's initiators. These characters are I look at uh, off tanks as more as heroes that are not are able to do more direct damage, but are <sighs> I know the Overwatch one definition of an off tank was very simple. It it covered the weaknesses of the main tank. It controlled off angles. In Overwatch two, it's a lot harder to define. I would say off tanks generally have more supportive or more indirect methods of controlling space. Uh, like you know, Zarya's ability to support people from range. Divas never like the ability to front, like holding space on main is divas, not always super good. Um, but then Sigma is pretty main tanky. He's just not quite as quick at controlling space. So yeah, it doesn't really matter. ...by their large pressure cycles they do through pressing buttons and purposely burning resources in order to force space through damage potential. Initiators are defined, in part, by the fact that their pressure is localized, cleaving, and close range. This means that in order to output the maximum pressure they can, they have to be given extra resources to allow them to cleave further and deeper into the enemy team. These are your Reinhardt's, Winston Rams, Junker Queens, etc, etc. When these characters are given more stuff, they don't just do additively more pressure, they do multiplicatively more pressure. Just say that four so in Overwatch 1, they were by and large paired with off tanks who can give big bursts of resource in things like bubble and DM. This this lines up with this other 6v6 video where he was talking about like how it's fundamentally flawed to have one fewer tank because these initiative tanks need more resources and yet are struggling because of the lack of off tank support, um, if I remember correctly. But I don't necessarily agree with that. To either allow them to force more space or stop them dying when they screw up by burning too many resources while forcing space. These characters are conduits for resources. Reinhardt Diva was a thing for a reason. Brian Zarya was a thing for a reason. Winston Diva is the same, and Winston Zarya is exactly the same. This is by and large the majority. The problem is, I will say this really quick. One, one thing: Reinhardt isn't necessarily a resource hog. He just plays like he enjoys playing like a resource hog. Reinhardt's actually really good at controlling space for a long period of time without necessarily taking any action. It just depends where you control that space. You understand what I'm saying? 
pinning onto a flank and holding shield and not taking any damage is really, really good as Reinhardt. You can hold a lot of attention for a long time, but it doesn't. it's not very fun. <clears throat> you guys know what I'm saying? Techie knows exactly what I'm talking about, right? <clears throat> so, yeah. Majority of the discussion as to why 5v5 has been a bit of a disaster on the tank front. The game has a lot less depth when only two people on the support line can funnel resources into the initiator compared to the depth possible in the game when you add another bursty resource into the mix. The coordination that you can have with three people funneling resources up the pipeline in order to do more just has a higher skill cap and is kind of just more interesting. But if you give like Reinhardt... That's that, but see, that's the thing is like, we've already seen that, that, that that's an opinion. And this is where me and Ralph, I think just disagrees because... Pipeline in order to do more. But pumping resources into a tank being seen as a skillful expression instead of actually thinking more about controlling off angles in space and being more selfish with your resources and, and still function. See, the problem is that people confuse selfish with no team play. You still have to do your, you have to know how to use my resources as a support in the best way to complement my team. That's still team play. You get know what I'm saying? It's like saying, Tracer is not a very difficult character because you don't buff your teammates. You know what I'm saying? And that, that's, that's not what it's about. Tracer, if to get the maximum amount of value that Tracer gets selfishly takes a large amount of team play and a large amount of skill. Team play in terms of the timing and when to go and where to go and how to control space. And the problem with over 66, this is why, this is the main reason why I like 5 5 better is that it opens up so much more space making opportunity for divas, uh, for tanks, uh, D, DPS and supports. Whereas in 6v6, the, the other off tank was just basically allowed teams to cheat when it came to map control too often. Goats is extremely dynamic in the mirror. In the non mirror, not so dynamic. Just has a higher skill cap and is kind of just more interesting. But if you give like Reinhardt more health instead of a Zarya bubble, it's kind of boring. If you give Winston more health instead of the DM, it's still kind of boring. So you might kind of see where I'm going with this. There's a combo. I don't How's know that an hard. opinion though? Well, the, the opinion is that there is more strategical complexity because there's one more hero on the battlefield, but there's nothing like specific about 6v6 inherently that made it higher skill cap outside of the fact that there was one more character to coordinate. Right? Kind of just more interesting. But if you give like Reinhardt more health instead of a Zarya bubble, it's kind of boring. If you give Winston more health instead of the DM, it's still kind of boring. So you might kind of see where I'm going with this. But see, he's looking at it from the perspective of the tank matchup only and not what, not having a bubble, an off tank controlling a lane does instead and how it opens up more responsibility. That's why we had such a support problem in Overwatch 2 is because Overwatch 1 supports did not know how to duel and they did not know how to take space. And so now supports and DPS had a lot more responsibility to do things other than shoot the enemy tank. And so that's where a lot of people struggled. There's a combo. I don't know if you've heard of it yet. Left click, right click, left click, melee. 340 damage and it's pretty much guaranteed because drill dash is very consistent. And left click melee afterwards is easy as anything because you're going to be in melee range. The hardest part of the combo would be the first left click. But even when completely missing it, the combo still deals 260 damage. This could be followed up if you survive enough time to burrow, which is a guaranteed escape once you're inside. But not only that, the combo has a massive amount of AOE damage associated with it in the area it's used up. 70 damage guaranteed from the first hit of drill dash, plus 40 from melee, 60 minimum per primary fire. With everything added up, you're doing a good 130 damage splash to pretty much everyone near the combo, even if you aren't aiming at them. Alternatively, you could commit all of your stuff, and you could use the burrow exit, nobody even knows what it's called at the moment, at the same time, which does... What, what are you doing, Blizzard? 430 damage. This isn't even hard to land. What the hell? Like, even the minimum damage this combo can do with, like, 80 damage from burrowing nearest the enemy, 16 from the left-click splash, 40 from the melee, 70 guaranteed with the dash. If you literally go out your way to miss everything, the combo still does 226 damage. Yeah. But I don't care about this being very interestingly tuned in terms of numbers. That doesn't matter to me. Blizzard have plenty of time to fix that, and it isn't even a worry in general. Don't get your pitchforks out just yet and go through the assumption that this is a half baked reaction based on training room numbers. What's worrying to me is that all of this is a cleaving, piercing pressure cycle defined by its close range and therefore by the fact that you must put yourself at risk to use it. So you necessarily need a funnel of bursty resources from other players on your team to put out your maximum pressure. Venture is a tank. And I don't know if Blizzard is screwing with me, because they said they don't want to talk about 6v6. They said they have no desire whatsoever to even visit the discussion. They've made no signs ever of even knowing this flow of resources between off tanks and main tanks was a thing. And then they're putting an initiating tank into the DPS category so we can pick them with the donators of Zarya and Diva at the same time. Like, you know, right? This this can't be by accident, right? You know. Because if you don't know, like, if you don't know, 
So that's a thing that happened when we went from 6v6 to 5v5. Tanks find the hole were brought a bit closer to the middle. Reinhardt got an extra fire strike and charge cancel to help with range. Winston got um yeah, does anyone even use this anymore? Blizzard have, have, have Blizzard just forgot about this? The resource donators, the off tanks Zarya and Diva, especially were drastically hit in terms of the value they can get, because the specific types of resources they have had nobody guaranteed to use them. They were resource donators with no conduit. There were supports with nobody to support. The only real use for these resources is cancelling out the enemy team's pressure cycles, putting them on DPS jewels, stuff that isn't really as impactful as using them on an initiator. If you're a smart cookie at this point, you might have realized that quite a lot of the abilities in the game are actually similar to DM and Bubble in that they're time bound over a really short period of time and they're really bursty, like Suzu, Life Grip, Lamp. Part of the reason why the game get so much about denial especially when you've got preemptive good staging for a poking angle is because the poking angle doesn't need these abilities to be used aggressively in order to actually go into the enemy backline and make space so they can exclusively be used as denial and that's essentially where we've ended up with Zarya and Diva. so when these characters made the transition to being brawlers and bruisers or as i would like to call it very damn boring compared to what they were before they had to be compensated for the nerfs and compensate them they did Zarya now has an eight second projected bubble cooldown instead of 10 and can use both bubbles on herself or on an ally with a short cooldown Diva now has a three second defense matrix instead of the old two seconds which provides functional immunity to anyone in range, as well as shed loads of additional health buff because she now at mid ranks needed to be the person on the front lines going toe to toe with the enemy tank. I'm, I'm just like, I feel like I'm, I'm, I feel like this is, I don't, I don't get it. I don't get it. This, I felt like this with this, his other video as well. Like I, I, I didn't get it. This, this this feels like this always bleeds into like the five v five six v six discussion, and and he's and he kind of like uses it as a springboard. And I respect Ralph. I think he's a good coach. He's a smart guy. It just I have, I have a hard time following his logic sometimes. You know. Ah, don't be rude. Yes, there. Because those people aren't really smart enough to know about shooting the backlines. Both of these characters had to have been made much, much better because their types of resources, large bursts, which should normally be used on someone as a conduit to create amazing amounts of space, could no longer be used in that way in 5v5. So we we buffed DM. Oh god. You can just kind of DM Venture for three seconds and allow them to murder anyone they want. If you do the Diva Venture combo, there's nothing on God's Green Earth that can kind of stop them hunting down and murdering anyone if they're in range for Drill Dash. I mean, yeah. I mean, they can though, because there's there's severe range limitations. I mean, you could use a Zarya bubble and totally shut down the entire combo. And then now Venture has to cycle out. Like, it, it, the, the problem is, it's like, I don't know, like you could phrase anything any way you want and make it sound bad. You know what I'm saying? The community at large, as I've already stated, are fence sitting. Some people are saying Venture might not even be that good at this point. I kind of agree. Tracer and Sojourn have been so criminally overpowered since Overwatch 2's launch that it's a bit hard to justify running anything else. But if Venture does see play, this won't be just a problem for balance. This will be a problem for hero design. It's very simple. When you make your resource donators good enough to see play without a consistent resource conduit to funnel their stuff into and make space, they necessarily are going to be overtuned when you finally give them that conduit. So when people finally realize this pairing after so he's saying that because we don't really have a use for, because, okay, there's one viewer tank. So heroes that buff other heroes to have one fewer person to give those resources to, AKA Zarya. So now that we actually have a target to give bubble to now, that bubble, because we had to buff Zarya for not having something else to bubble, now that she has somebody to bubble, it's going to be a broken combo because now Zarya has something to support plus the buffs that she needed to be relevant in 5v5. I feel like that was such a roundabout way of getting there. And, and the way, the solution for me is really simple. Like the solution is just the problem with Diva and Zarya is that they lack initiate to initiation skills. Right, there needs to be more initiation. Like, and honestly, it's not even as much as Zarya. I think Zarya is as more mo like bubble is not necessarily a problem with Zarya. It's more about the mobility, you know. So I think the Diva and Zarya definitely have issues in the transition to Overwatch One in terms of their self sufficiency. Uh, and, and I've already talked about solutions with those. I think the simplest one was giving Zarya some a better form of mobility. I think something like re changing some of the, uh, definitely nerfing the length of Matrix and and moving more into how fast Diva moves while she's shooting, making Diva bomb a functional ultimate. Giving there's lots of things that that can do okay. Um, I 
It just, uh, it's odd. I don't know, like, how long is it going to take for the Overwatch community to realize this? Like, maybe a month after release? What the hell genuinely are we going to do? Blizzard's options are going to be simple. Like, either they nerf engines that are not overtuned when played with their enablers, and they'll be terrible in comparison when played without the synergy. This probably isn't happening. I mean, here release is kind of the best time for Blizzard to get people. The, the, the solution is just to make the tanks that are enablers less enably and more selfish. I mean, I, that is the 5v5 way. Zarya and Diva I, I, were definitely something that functioned more in the tank mirror. Their role was more important in the tank mirror. So you just, you don't need a nerf venture. You don't even necessarily need to globally nerf the effectiveness or efficacy of Zarya Diva. You just would need to adjust the enabling aspect of Zarya Diva's kit, which to be frank, is something that should already have happened anyway. Because Zarya is basically, anytime that she's been relevant pro meta, has always been as just basically enable something else to do something. But no, that's not more similar. More similar in the fact that you are able to do things yourself, yes. More self-sufficient, yes. But in terms of how the kit functions, how the character feels, completely different. And I could not disagree more. Winston, Wrecking Ball, Sigma, Reinhardt, totally different. Junker Queen, totally different. But their kits aren't relying off of it. Like a Junker Queen doesn't need to shout other people to get value. You know? Or I take initiating away from the tanks. I'm not, that, that's not at all what I'm saying. I'm saying give them more initiation and less supportive role in that aspect. In the same aspect that we don't need as much healing for supports anymore because there's one fewer tank. So they could be more self-sufficient in what they do. Diva, we've talked about solutions with Diva. The easiest thing is she doesn't need as much matrix as she, she has. She doesn't need as much matrix as she does. She needs to be able to move faster while she's shooting. She needs a functional ultimate. She needs more, uh, uh, more ability to kind of do things on her own. Yeah, yeah, no problem, no problem. Hog, Hog is an entirely different issue. Hog, Hog wasn't even an off tank in terms of this support. The only reason, Hog was just another punching bag on the flank. Hog was, Hog was, Hog has never been a healthy. Diva and Zarya were the more, in Sigma, were the more healthy enablers of tank. Sigma's been fine because he had enough initiation on his own. Diva and Zarya have not been so fine because Diva Matrix is mostly used for your tank. Zarya Bubble is mostly used for your tank. And so we have to adjust that. People to come back to the game to buy skin. See, I mean, they make them overpowered because of course they do. I did have the thought immediately when Blizzard said the um, heroes aren't going to be paid to win anymore that, oh, we can just buff them as much as we want. And don't worry, you, you can't pay for power, so it's fine. Sometimes I do think I'm a little too cynical. Alternatively, instead of nerf adventure, you could nerf DM and buff in order to reduce the specific synergy inherent to the pairing, meaning that both of the bursty resource giving tanks would be significantly weaker when not paired with venture. I don't know, or we could all admit that there was some beauty and joy in playing with an initiator off tank pairing and enjoy venture while we got them because, mark my words, venture diva is going to be fun and terrible and. Yeah. So why have I got this out so fast? Why am I making predictions after three hours of hands-on time of a hero when my videos normally take like three weeks to come out? It's pretty simple. Like, if I'm going to make theories about the game, I'm just kind of a coward if I don't test them by publicly stating what the theory suggests will happen. If you can't make predictions with your theory, your theory may as well not exist. So as a result, you better like and subscribe so you can tell me in two months if I was... <laughs> so freaking Ralph is saying that the reason, the reason why I'm making this video so early is because I'm ballsy. <laughs> <laughs> this son of a gun just found a virtue in the early clickbait. Man, this guy, I got to learn from this guy. This guy, this guy is killing me, man. He's like, I didn't even research it because that would take the risk away. Okay, <laughs> this guy freaking Ralph. Oh, that's freaking Ralph. Yeah, let's see what the comment is. Let's feel this through. Um... Yeah, see, so to me, re, it, I, yeah, this video isn't really about venture. It's more about any sort of aggressive DPS that could be enabled. How is that going to function in Overwatch 2? So, the, yes, obviously, Reaper Genji Mei doesn't account. Mei is too slow. But Reaper Genji, uh, definitely, yeah, it's the same problem. But Alt Reaper, like, it's, it doesn't necessarily mean that he's wrong, though, with Reaper Genji being very bubble reliant. You know, I, 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 I would agree with that. So, there's some good points here. I don't necessarily agree with the solution, but I do agree that, like, the, it, it brings the question, this is more a video about off tanks. This is why we started talking about it early, right? Because I, I knew where this, I didn't know where this was going to go, but he clearly hinted at it. It's the, it's the nature of off tanks. This is what this video is about. It's about off tanks. <clears throat> it's, it's about off tanks. <clears throat> and how off tanks have lost their identity without somebody to enable. And so when somebody does come around to enable, 
then how do you balance that? Um, honestly, I should probably call it there. I should probably call it there. I'm sorry, Flo Sunset. We we we've we've been we've been live for a little while. Um, I will. We'll, it's at the top of the list, though. So if we if we look at something again, um, yeah. But yeah, I mean, it was it was a good video. I mean, Ralph is always tongue in cheek, and I don't always agree with his you know opinions. But I I think he has good different I different ideas. It's good to have different ideas. You know what I'm saying? I don't think it's good to be echo chamber. And and obviously, like I I love the you know the theory of balance. Like I find that very appealing. And I think it's good to have the theory of balancing because I don't think you can balance the game without a without a vision. You know. <clears throat> You can't just tweak numbers. You have to have like, what, what are we going there? Nice video, mate. Which one? Thanks. Amari Pepper came up. Amari's not here and neither is Pepper. I owe you one, Trigonus. Remind me. Next stream. Oh, yeah, the, the love letter Overwatch 2. Thanks. That was just kind of something I've been wanting to do for a while. So I'm, I'm glad we actually got it out there. Any thoughts on Perpetual Soul Adventure and all the Soul Heroes? I think it'll be tweaked. I think I think it'll be tweaked. I think it'll be tweaked. I would not expect that to stay. Is Grim there? No. I don't know where they are, actually. Grim! Grimby! Come here. Come here. I don't know where he is. I owe you one, though. Actual shill for Blizzard? I mean, you guys saw Gavin in, in chat here. You know, I'm compromised. I told you. Even the last... Uh, Video I made was tongue in cheek. That was super negative. You think playing Overwatch is a waste of time? Should I end stream with an answer to this question? I'll end stream with an answer. Do I think Overwatch is a waste of time? Well, that's a really great, great question, actually. Um, and I'm going to give you an answer that I think might be a little bit unusual, but may completely change not only the way that you look at Overwatch, but the way that you look at life. So is Overwatch a waste of time? Well, okay, so 